Ja. Yeah, the real story is starting to come out now. You know, all you got to do is wait, really. And you'll see how things really are. It's a lot of people switching sides this year. It's a lot of people jumping around. People don't like that I'm pointing out all the jumping around going on right now. I was wondering why they was only bothering my live uh, lately. You know, every other boss and challenge up on, they don't be having it to except mine. So I see why. They know everybody else capping right now in boxing. Jerron Ennis, he just exposed everybody. Earl Spence, he's exposed everybody already. Terrence Crawford, he doesn't have to really do anything at this point. Um, I'm just going to lay this video down so I can put this down in history. So everybody else that talks about boxing and everything else, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? But. Um, in this situation right here, yeah, it's over with, man. It really is. It's over. It's over. It's not even, it's no discussion no more. It's no discussion. All these narratives and all these little uh, fake stories dudes been pushing, it's it's destroyed now. Jerron Ennis finna expose all his own fans. Spence exposing everybody. Crawford exposing everybody. People don't know the plans of boxing. They don't know the business of boxing right now. It's it's exposure time. It's exposure time. Definitely exposure time. Deuce is getting exposed. I hear everybody saying now, oh, yeah, this is a good deal for Jerron Ennis to go to Matchroom. This is a good deal. How is a good deal for Jerron Ennis to go to Matchroom, but everybody else who end up trying to go to Matchroom, it's a bad deal for? How'd that work? Lately, for everybody else, when everybody else tried to go to Matchroom, it's a bad deal. But now everybody want to say, you see how dudes be switching sides? See, they don't want certain people to go to the match room, but for other people, it's okay. Oh, why would this guy be at top rank? He needs to leave top rank. Never heard people say that, but now we have boxers. They have to leave companies to get a fight. Then guys leaving PVC. So why he why Jerron Ennis ain't get a fight at PVC? Everybody, everybody and their mama been saying Terrence Crawford need to sign the PVC. Jerron Ennis over there doing business. And now why everybody, well, you know, let me not say that because they might start messing with my life. Because they're not today. I'm talking about three Americans. So we're going to find out they're going to mess with the lie today. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see who behind that. Because I'm, I'm going to figure that out. I'm going to figure that out ASAP. I got a couple of clues already. That means I'm doing something right. Please believe it. Yeah, everybody talking about Jerron, uh, Terrence Crawford ducking Jerron Ennis. And he went, he ain't even had no deal to go nowhere. He looking for a deal. And y'all talking about Jerron Ennis looking for a fight. How he looking for a fight when he looking for a deal just now? He just signed a deal. So he's been looking for a deal these last couple of months, like I've been saying. I said I dropped the video in January, February, saying Jerron Ennis is in a situation where he got to go to court and get out of his deal. So if he's getting out of a deal, that means he's going to get in another deal. I said that months ago. Let me repost that video. I got to repost old news because the mainstream media then drops some new news for other people, but they saying match rooms a bad deal. I'm telling you, bro, a lot of this stuff coming to a head now. It's getting exposed. A lot of people are not going to like it because 
uh they've been pushing certain narratives it is what it is it is what it is when you say certain words you got to live with it that's the that's the repercussions of boxing when you put certain narratives you got to live with it i see a lot of dudes yesterday i was like man let me see if everybody gonna drop lives and talk about this fight like that ain't nobody saying nothing for real i saw i know why Dudes is leaving PBC, but y'all telling Terrence Crawford to come to PBC and get a fight? How he gonna do that? Oh, but y'all, I don't know the business. Okay. Jerron Ennis, I, I'm gonna be real with y'all, man. I'm not, I was one of the only one, one of the first ones to report that Jerron Ennis was in court. And that's on everything. Dudes was talking about, yeah, man, Jerron Ennis need to fight this guy. They don't even know what the setup was. And I'm glad I ain't put that story out. I got some story, news about Jerron Ennis that came out a couple of months ago that ain't nobody even talked about. I didn't put out so much news. It's like, why would I put that out? They ain't hear the last story. People don't even know what's going on. Man, that ducking stuff, bro, in America, that's so capped. Ain't no Americans running around ducking nobody. I don't know what who be saying all this stuff when dudes be pushing narratives. But then when they favor fighter signs, the match room, at least PBC, it's a good move. When you just say everybody else who does the same thing is a terrible move. I just heard dudes say my favorite fighters did the same thing and they said it was a bad deal. But now it's Jerron Ennis and it's cool. And I like Jerron Ennis. I'm a huge Jerron Ennis fan. I'm going to push Jerron Ennis harder than you'll ever see when when uh these next couple of years but why are we now saying uh and it's going to uh match room makes sense but when Devin haney does it it's a problem uh boo boo andre does it oh he don't want to fight charlo these guys why that narrative ain't getting pushed with boots he's doing the same thing and y'all the ones who push that narrative if somebody signed the match room a top rank they don't want to fight the pvc guys now all of a sudden it's the move what nah we ain't finna do that y'all been pushing narrative too long on uh certain fighters dudes be missing out on millions messing with y'all missing out on millions dudes be missing out on millions of dollars messing with these guys you don't never hear nobody else running around calling these fighters now nah, we got a whole bunch of fighters right now who ain't had ko's We have a lot of fighters who ain't got KOs in their fights recently. But you only got certain people that you'll call, you know, who ain't who ain't got knockout potential or anything like that. But I've already noticed that certain thing. But when it comes down to Crawford, Spence, and Jerron Ennis, Jerron Ennis just exposed his fans, uh, American fans. They don't really rock with the channel because I tell truth over here. And they like, ah, he talking about my favorite fighter. So uh, even though I've known the fighter longer than they have, times two three four five but they'll sit up here and be like oh he's talking about this guy so man i ain't finna pick no side homie this ain't no jerron and it just proved that y'all picking sides he ain't thinking about what side y'all on or nothing like that the side jerron in his own is how big the bag of money is that's what side he on who i'm gonna fight that's what side he on he on a whole different side than what y'all on yeah i know they don't want to hear that yeah yeah, you don't want to hear that. Of course you don't. Of course, absolutely. It be like that sometimes. They don't want to hear the truth. It is what it is, though. But that truth, I'm going to be pushing that, though, the next couple of months. So Terrence Crawford left top rank, came to PBC. Now Boots going to match room. So what's the point of Terrence Crawford even leaving top rank? What was the point of that? Because I heard if you come to PVC, you Gucci. And what I've been saying the last couple of months, ain't nobody been mentioning Tim Zhu and Jerron Ennis. Ain't nobody been mentioning Jerron Ennis and Spence. Period. Fans exposed. Nobody wanted to mention Jerron Ennis' name with anybody except a guy who just showed up at PVC last year. And not even on a, a contract with them. Just a fight deal. Yeah, these dudes is clowns in America, bro. We got some weak we got some weak fans out here. The fans out here, 
they too moist out here. These dudes was weak. They don't like telling the truth in boxing. These dudes is moist out here. These dudes is weak. Yeah, this this boxing thing is coming to a head now. It's getting exposed. It's getting exposed. Yeah, Boo Boo Andre on it. Yeah, man, I'm going to match room. You know, they got Canelo on the, and Triple G and Danny Jacobs over there. So let me see what they're doing. Well, that was before Canelo and all those guys got over there. You know, people don't realize that, but Danny Jacobs and uh, <coughs> Boo Boo Andre was one of the first guys to do match room and his own deals. Now it's Canelo. Triple G. Look at all these deals getting done now. Oh, now it's the move. Oh, because it's co-promotion? Get out of here, dog. Come on, man. Come on, man. Because it's co-promotion. These dudes do not know the business of boxing. Hey, just stay out of the business of boxing from now on. When people start talking about the business of boxing and, oh, this person should do this and all that, just stay out of it, man. From now on, dudes need to stay out of the business of boxing. Don't bring up Jerron in his name because you don't even know how far he is into his career, what point he is at his career. Just stay out of the business of boxing. I thought people learned that from the uh, Earl Smith situation, but they just can't help themselves. You know, I thought they learned from the Earl Smith situation, but they can't help themselves. So who so who ducking between Spence and uh Jerron Ennis? Cause you know, they always gotta say somebody ducking. If the fight don't happen, you know, like all these years they said Terrence Crawford been ducking, so who everybody else who go to match room, you know, they say they ducking. But now with Jerron Ennis, everybody's saying it's a good move. He the only fight ever I've heard people say this is a good move. He's the only fighter. When Devin Haney first did it, people was kind of like, ah, uh, uh, he could have been better at PVC. Now he's been jumping back and forth from top rank to the zone. Now everybody like, oh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Nah, you don't understand. Nah, you don't. You don't. You don't understand. Jerron, Jerron Ennis looking for a new deal. And because Jerron Ennis looking for a new deal, we got to say a two-time undisputed fighter been ducking. That's why I don't be showing nobody. I don't be. I don't, I don't got time to be going back and forth with grown men about another grown man who got kids. And <laughs> and got a job to do like Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford kids. Man, he got kids as teenagers. Almost grown. And we sit here talking about some, he ducking. And now when dudes look back, man, how can I think that? Because, man, you, you, you enamored with some other stuff that's going on. Enamored. First of all, when dudes talking talking about the streets in Boston, I know you ain't, I know you ain't never threw no gloves on if you're talking about that. Most of the boxers come from the streets. And I, up uh, from Ali, Joe Lewis, all these dudes, was from the streets. I ain't never heard about them, they parents having any kind of uh, uh, extravagant upbringings. So all these dudes been from the streets because people don't get punched in the face for free because it's fun. You don't get paid to get punched in the face until later on in your life. So you're getting punched in the face for free and you're going to have another human being come to you talking about you ducking. Come on, man. These dudes don't even know common sense, man. I know, I know how, I know how many people actually been in a real fight. That's a real thing. People don't understand that. That is a real thing. That is a real, real thing. Human beings don't get into fights like that. And when they talk about the business of boxing, they don't know the business. For for the past five years, everything PVC. That's why I said. The promotional company, like, game-banging thing, it's becoming lame in Boston. You're exposing yourself, your expertise when you do stuff like that. You're limiting yourself. People are like, oh, no, you 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 limit yourself when you talk about other countries. No, you limit yourself when you talk about promotional companies. You expose yourself all the way. 
when when that when that when that comes up and becomes a topic, like guys been trying to push, that's that's gonna ruin a lot of people. I heard yesterday when I didn't hear a lot of people bringing up the drum, anything. Oh, it's a good move. It's a great move. Great move. You know how many American fighters have done matchroom, the zone deals. When when matchroom and the zone wasn't really popular to have, where everybody was laughing. Oh, they on the app. <laughs> uh, they're on the app. Uh, they're on the app. It's not gonna work. They're on the app. I remember when everybody was laughing at the zone app. I remember when everybody said, if you're an American fighter, you don't go to PVC, you're done. Now, yesterday, all of a sudden, it's a great move. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, who, who who's changing the permissions on boxing? Why are these fans and YouTubers and media people changing the permissions on boxing? Because it's not like, I'm going to tell y'all something else, too. It's not like the uh me, the YouTubers and media saying two different things. They use they mostly agree on certain things. I don't know if y'all know it. They trying to slow me down. They ain't slowing these other dudes down. They don't be crackling these other dudes' voice, talking about little boxing. They trying to slow me down. They know I got the sauce. They know I know what's up. They trying to slow me down. These dudes be having 50 people on their live talking at one time. And you can hear all these dudes clear, but they be trying to crack on me up. I, they know I got the sauce. Talking about Jerron Ennis and Terrence Crawford. That's what I said, too. I'm going to say something else, too. American fans who say uh, a black American who grew up with nothing and another black American don't want to fight each other over millions of dollars. You're not a boxing fan. You're not a real fan of sports. Uh, you don't know anything about money. You won't leave your wallet around nobody, but you're going to try to convince me that black Americans is turning down millions of dollars to fight for 30 minutes. Get off the drugs. Yeah, like I was saying, been telling dudes that. I be trying to be nice to my fellow Americans, but come on, dog. Get off the drugs, homie. Please. This ain't no video game. Dudes ain't had their mama driving them to the gym for 15, 20 years, 10 years. So they can sit up here and be like, yeah, I'm going to turn down this 10 million because I don't like so-and-so and he worked with this person and that. And get out of here, man. Like, the dudes y'all listen to, man, they ain't never been in a fight for real. We ain't even got to talk about the gym. We talking about fist fights because that's 80% of the people. Yeah, man, I had to cook this morning, man. Like, bro, bro, PD, PD. Now I got stuff to do for real. I be up at 7 every morning. I get up at seven six every morning yeah i'll be up for the sun but uh the way that people are actually talking about jerron ennis now great move great move when danny jacobs and boo boo andre was going to match room in the zone it was a joke now oh okay okay bet 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 okay all right that's all i gotta say how terrence crawford ducking I know you got something to do. I'm going to holler at you, bro. Have a safe day, bro. Hey, how Terrence Crawford ducking and dudes is getting deals? How Terrence Crawford ducking and dudes is getting deals? Dudes is negotiating deals with death row. And they they talking about something. You need to come over here and make a song with Bad Boy or something. Come on, man. What are we talking about? Terrence Crawford need to leave top rank. Terrence Crawford did everything these little YouTubers and everybody else that asked him to do. If I was Terrence Crawford, I wouldn't do nothing. I done did everything y'all asked me to do. Ask your favorite fighter to do that. Your favorite fighter ain't doing what I'm doing. I'm doing more for you than your favorite fighter. Hang it up, homie. Man, look. He technically wasn't signed. He technically wasn't signed. He was signed, but it wasn't. I mean, he was signed, but he got out the deal recently. You know what I'm saying? Because of the situation with the promoter passing away, but it ain't even that, man. I'm just talking about the overall aspect. You know what I'm saying, PD? Because people act like people act like Danny Jacobs and Boo Boo Andre ain't signed at the zone before Canelo and Triple G did. Like I've been talking about this for months. This is getting old now. This old news to me. This ain't no surprise. I've seen this before. 
I've seen this before. Eddie Hearn been getting most of the American talent. He got Devin Haney. And people say, I don't think Devin Haney, he ain't that good. Man, his name pop up in every video I put up. Every video I put up, uh, Devin Haney name pop up. They don't have no 47 we care about. None. 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 No, sir. No, they're not, they're not gonna build you up. They'll they'll catch you. You know, they'll catch you at home plate, but they ain't gonna build you up. They'll catch you at home plate though. At home plate, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll catch you. Yeah. They'll definitely catch you at home plate, but building you up, nah. No, sir. Can't do that. Never did that. What is that? We well, don't know how to do that. We ain't from over here. The closest thing they got came to building up is probably Richardson Hitches. Richard hit Richardson Hitches is uh the first build up. And I ain't supposed to be saying that, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. That's that first build up though. What like they say, any press is good press. So bad press. Yeah, he did. Floyd with a Floyd did with a lot of people. Floyd did with a lot of people. I was I was watching Floyd fighters before it was a TMT. You know what I'm saying? I know how TMT got man. Come on, man. I ain't finna say too much because you know they be already messing with my life. Yeah, yeah, they be already tripping, doing too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It be a, it be a hold on, hold on, real quick. Yeah, it'd be a little worse than that. Yeah, it'd be a little worse than that, man. That up my fault. Yeah, it'd be a little worse than that. That Mickey Bay stuff. But at the end of the day, bro, like I'm gonna say this right here, and I've been saying this all week. Hey, PD, I've been getting. A, hey, people been mad at me this week, PD, because every every live I've been I I didn't made this week. It all come down to this Jerron Ennis thing. I'm glad Jerron Ennis did this. It's going to expose all these clowns. Great move. Y'all don't even know this, but um, Demetrius Andre and Danny Jacobs, they were the ones who made Canelo them come to the zone. Canelo signed right after Boo Boo did. Why would Canelo follow Boo Boo Andre to the zone? And people still don't question that. He followed uh, Danny Jacobs and Boo Boo Andre. People still don't understand that. They still don't question none of this going on. Why is Americans going to match room? And then why is Canelo and Jerron Ennis and Devin Haney and all these guys going to match room instead of to BBC? They still don't question that. Yeah. No, I ain't going in today. I was just telling the truth. I, w I wasn't going in too hard. I was just telling the truth, man. I, I ain't even been going in hard. The reason I've been saying all this because people been saying Terrence Crawford ducking, Terrence Crawford ducking, Terrence Crawford ducking. He need to fight Boots. He need to fight Tim Zoo. Why Terrence Crawford got to fight everybody else mandatory? Y'all ain't noticed that? They want Terrence Crawford to fight Charlo and Earl Spence mandatories? Y'all ain't noticed that? Or am I a clown? Do I got to change my uh logo to a Joker logo now or something? Am I the clown? Because y'all the ones who got tricked into these guys telling y'all that Terrence Crawford need to fight Charlo and Earl Spence mandatory. Y'all ain't know that the past year? Y'all ain't know the past year and two years they've been saying that? That's your boys mandatory. That ain't, that ain't Terrence Crawford mandatory. That's y'all partner mandatory. Man, maybe I should put that up, man. Maybe I should type that up so people realize that. What the Charlos at? Waiting on Terrence Crawford to fight their mandatory. Waiting on Terrence Crawford to fight their mandatory. That's what it is. Waiting on Terrence Crawford to fight Tim Zoo. Who was Charlo mandatory for two years? 
And everybody talking about, oh, Tim Zoo, Tim Zoo, Tim Zoo. You heard how everybody talking about Tim Zoo last week? Everybody fanned out about Tim Zoo, but they thought Tim Zoo, but them same guy didn't think Tim, Tim Zoo can go 12 rounds with, with Charlo. I'm telling you, these dudes, is, bro, they flip flopping like a fish. They be flopping like a fish, bro. They be flopping like a fish. I know how these dudes talk about boxing. I grew up around people like this. I know. I know better than anybody. I mean, the fact that we even got to ask that question, PD, it really don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. Tim Zoo ain't got a belt right now. Nobody cares. Eastside Cruz ain't had a belt until, until a couple weeks ago. Ain't nobody care about no belts no more, man. Them days over with. Everybody got a belt now. Nobody care about belts. Because you know why I say that? You know why I say that, PD? Because pay-per-view sales ain't adding up. Some of the some of the fights with no belts is bigger than the ones with a belt. So the pay-per-view sales, just because the belt involved, they don't equal up to a bigger bag or more sales. You know, these guys don't even know that uh they want Terrence Crawford to fight Charlo and Spence mandatories. Jerron Ennis been the guy mandatory for years. He signs the match room, now it's the move. Now match room the move now. Man, uh, you know what I be hearing people say, and I hate to bring this man up, but they starting to remind me of uh, what they be saying about, uh, you know how fans be saying about uh, any any uh, celebrity, somebody, oh, they always flip-flopping around. We, we just, you just don't know what they going to say. No, nah, that's what y'all doing. Now it's match. Now it's match room over PVC. Okay. Yeah, exactly. 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 Come take it from me, man. Come on. That's so weak to me. I was like, man, come on, dog. That's what everybody ain't want to tell y'all yesterday. Now it's match room over PVC. It ain't my deal. Why well, I gotta like the deal? I don't think nothing about the deal. I I don't like it or don't like it. That's what people don't realize. I watch I watch when I was watching boxing it ten years ago. I ain't give a damn about nobody signing no deal. Why would I care about the deal? Explain to me why should I care about match uh, boost in and signing the match room. Why would that why would that make sense? Why would I care about Boots in the match room? Can anybody explain to you why they why why would why would they, why they care about Boots in the match room? Yeah, I, I don't understand that. I asked the question. I don't think people be understanding what I'm saying, so that kind of exposes where they at in boxing as far as the knowledge because I'm saying basic stuff. This is, I mean, at least, maybe people have a, I don't know, an educational problem. That's, it's kind of simple. It's just match room over PVC. I wouldn't give a damn about no who he signed with or nothing like that. Who cares? Like, why would I care? Why does anybody care who he signed with? He, why would they care? He was just been with PVC the whole time. The way he been fighting, does it look like he been with PVC? Oh man, I got, I got, a, I got an idea who the next fight is. That's gonna be the situation. Why? Why does anybody care about his his deal when he don't have no? He has less talent to fight now than he did last week. So why would I celebrate the deal he has? 
why if Terrence Crawford took the same deal and y'all would say it's a bad deal, why would I say it's a good deal for Jerron Ennis? Bro, I'm telling you, like some of these people should be like one like Hulk Hogan used to slap people. Why would I why would I say if it's not a good deal for Terrence Crawford, why is it a good deal for Jerron Ennis? Like people can't even under explain that. People, yeah, man. Hey, PD, I'm gonna be real, man. A lot of these dudes, they be scared of my boxing knowledge. They don't even want to have a boxing conversation. They don't even want to have a boxing conversation. It's match room on PVC now. That's crazy. But yeah, anybody else? That's why. That's how you know it's all about relationships. Cause that's how you know, PD. A lot of these guys, all they care about is um certain fighters. They don't care about they don't care about nothing about business or nothing like that. It's cap. All up cap. All these YouTubers, they didn't cap themselves out. Everybody exposed themselves these days. I'm not trying to expose nobody. I'm just saying the way people been talking about Terrence Crawford making videos like that. Uh, I haven't even done what they did. I'm only doing a couple of videos. The people getting all got their panties in a bunch. I only did a couple of videos. That why PD, I told you, bro. I'm seeing I'm seeing a whole different turn in boxing now. It's a whole different way of turning now. It's a whole different way. Jerron is exposing these dudes. Terrence Crawford got a lead top rank, but Jerron Ennis, he can do what he wants and go to match room, but if Terrence Crawford go to match room, oh, that'll be bad, you know. Why would he do that? Why would he do a deal with them when he got all these people over at PBC he can fight? Now they're saying they ain't got nobody at PBC at 47 or – come on. We know what time it is. Definitely know what time it is. Everybody else is a bad – People, dudes, been doing matchroom deals for for years, man. Guys, been doing matchroom deals for years. This ain't nothing new. This is old. This is old. I ain't seen. When? Let me tell you something. I'm keeping the same narratives. Uh, the only thing I'm doing it, I'm repeating your favorite uh YouTubers narratives. When they sat up here and said, "Oh, these guys signing to matchroom. Oh, that's horrible." You'll never get a fight like that. Now with Jerron in his great move. Man, y'all dudes are clowns, man. This dude signed an extent. He signed an extension. So what he signed? 2018. Cause I'm fine, this boy. I got to. We had we had Danny Jacobs sign the match room a long time ago. Ain't nobody said nothing. Why would I not like a deal though? Join the zone. This man to join the zone. Yeah, I'm I'm just looking up something real quick. Um oh here it goes. What year was this? Okay, let me save this real quick. All right. Just trying to do some exposing real quick. This is me right here. This for me. This live for me right here. Everybody sitting up here talking about the deals, certain deals for people. I'm going to show y'all. 
how these YouTubers been affecting my, some of my favorite fighters' career. And then when it's their favorite fighter, they want to sit up here and say it's a great deal. Yeah, it's a great deal for anybody who's getting paid. I've been saying that for years. Show y'all, man. It's time, it's time for the real to come out. So somebody please please. Oh yeah, appreciate that, PD. Yeah, for sure, for sure. For sure, for sure, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Oh, for real? Dang, that was up. Yeah, I definitely gotta pull up on you one day. Yeah, man. I just I just uh finished making my Discord, bro. I don't know how to work it at all, bro. I just finished making my Discord. I got mods and everything like set up, but I ain't got nobody on there. I just finished my Discord. Maybe have my little videos pop up and stuff when I be going, so I gotta like set up, but I just don't know. I know how to set it up, but I don't know how to use it. Hey, what year is this? Y'all see what year that is? Oh, bet. Hey, bet. I'm gonna. Uh, hey, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna send you a link, man. I'm gonna figure out how to do it. I don't know how to do that, John. I'm gonna hit you on Instagram. I got you on Instagram. Oh, yeah. I'm going to hit you up on Instagram about that. Probably hit you up later on the day. Yeah, man. Und hey, hey, PD, you remember when Boo Boo and um, uh, Danny Jacobs signed into the zone? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Oh, yeah. That ain't going to be a problem. Oh, that ain't going to be a problem. Yes, sir. I'm going I'm to I'm gonna try to pull up in Atlanta soon. Yeah, I be in Atlanta all, often. So you already know that my Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, when um Danny Jacobs had signed to uh the zone, him and um Demetrius Andre, everybody said this was a big a bad deal. Demetrius Andre signed to the zone. And Matron, uh, why is he doing that? They don't got no fighters over there. This is bad. Uh, he's not making any money. Remember when everybody said that? He ain't having no money fights. He ain't fighting nobody. He ain't making no money. He ain't doing this. He ain't doing that. Why we pay attention to him? He ducking the Charlos by signing with Matron. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, Peter. You already know, big dog. For sure, that's a guarantee. Sign with Matchroom. That's what I'm saying. Like it's good. It's good for everybody else's favorite fighter, but when it comes to certain people, it ain't good no more. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man. I see it too, bro. A lot of these dudes, bro, they stuck in their way. They don't even care about the boxing no more. They just stuck in their way. It's nasty too. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? That's really, it's really clown behavior at this point. It's for the kids though. They got the younger people who see this, they gonna know, okay, man, this is these dudes be fraud these days. Oh, absolutely they fraud. Absolutely. They are frauding in boxing. They don't know what they be talking about. I'ma show you they don't know what they talking about. These dudes, be not, they do not know what they be talking about.
They do not know what they be talking about. You had Danny Jacobs sign with these guys. That's what I'm saying. Danny Jacobs assigned the uh match room in the zone. And then Canelo, these guys do it right after. These dudes are such horrible reporters in boxing. They don't know nothing about boxing business. Stay out the boxing business forever. These dudes don't know nothing about boxing business. They'll sit up there and have Danny Jacobs and all these guys signed to the zone. Be with match room. But for some reason, ain't nobody paying attention to it, though. This dude signed with Matchroom 2018. Now, six years later, it's the move? Now, six years later, signing to the zone is the move now. Matchroom and the zone is the move now. See, where everybody, when I was saying it's okay, and you know things is working itself out. Oh no, nah, you know. Now what's the move? Now you got Andre to eighteen. Danny Jacobs, what nineteen? I think he was on there before that. Or oh, you had dealings with uh, him. That's just a uh, fight deal. A three fight deal. I think he signed in probably eighteen, nineteen, probably. I may be wrong. Look how long ago that was. These dudes signed six years ago. Now your favorite guys on YouTube, they're going to say six years later. Yeah. Jerron Ennis taking that deal like Danny Jacobs and Andre and Devin Haney. Yeah, that makes sense. Terrence Crawford, he ain't deserved that deal last year. But Jerron Ennis this year? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, all these dudes be running out the chat. I don't know why they're running here. I think I'm finna... Uh, sell out over some boxing sit up here and live with some boxing for some reason it's a whole nother different channel and i'm gonna be real with you bro american fans they don't keep it real about boxing they don't keep it real about boxing that's why they be wanting to argue about own. i ain't trying to argue about no facts what am i arguing about some facts for The fact is, y'all don't know nothing about boxing. The boxing business, if your favorite fighter signs somewhere, you're going to co-sign it because you ain't got no backbone. And you're you you you're just going to switch up. Like, no accountability at all. It, hey, hey, they own, they don't be keep it real about their own lives. Facts. And I'm going to leave this up. The rest of the, the, rest of the live, this going to be up. The rest of the live, this going to be up. It ain't coming down. Rest of the live, this is this going to be up. It ain't coming live. It ain't coming down. That's the point about it. The dudes who don't like, who come in here and be like, man, I don't like how, I don't like, I don't agree with what he's saying. I don't like what he's saying. I'm saying facts. So if you don't like facts, you like lies. You like lies. That's what it is. It ain't that you don't like the facts. You, you like lies. You know what I'm saying? You want me to go to hell over boxing. I'm not going to hell over no boxing so I can tell a lie. Dude's like, yeah, I'm thorough, man. I'm, I'm a real one. Man, y'all, I'm not finna go to hell over no boxing. I ain't pick, I ain't pick up no gloves. Yeah, they want to be cosigned. Yeah. I'm not finna go to hell over no boxing. <laughs> no, sir. Over boxing? Yeah, you find out who real when you're talking about Boston. You'll find out who real real quick. Real quick. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. PD, you already know. Bro, PD, I talk to you the same way I talk to everybody else. PD, when have I ever said, hey, PD, you better agree with me. If not, I ain't going to like to hear what you say. Come on, man. These dudes. They on some other stuff, but like you said, no, they don't keep it real. About they on like I gotta keep this on this. I'm reading your comments, but I gotta keep it on that that comment right there. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. 
Hey, absolutely. Absolutely, PD. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, you know what's crazy too, PD? Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know what's crazy, PD? I'm glad you said that because um I was just saying how I felt. I wasn't even like, I wasn't even trying to push no narrative. I was just saying how I felt. I ain't had no dog in the fight. Okay, bet, 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 bet. Exactly. Yeah, that's all I was trying to say. And I really didn't want to comment on that. You know what I'm saying? But if you look at it now, it kind of makes sense overall. It's like, ah. Uh, then you look at, and then you got to understand too. You know what I'm saying? If you go back and look at the fight, Roley almost got knocked down the first round. So it was, it's been bad refereeing. These dudes don't know boxing. They looking at boxer shoes and they, they got only fans on they, the back of their shorts, which is disgusting. I don't know why you're looking at the back of a dude's shorts all night. Uh, but that's what they be worried about. They ain't looking at the referees. Yeah, they don't even look at the referees. When I notice that dudes don't even pay attention to the referee, they looking at a whole other stuff. They looking at the stuff, the, the females that come to the fights that don't know nothing about boxing. They looking at what they look at. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they had said the same thing I said, PD? They said the same thing I said? Because everybody ain't say the same thing they said. Oh, yeah, he would have stopped the Marquez fight. Oh, absolutely. Oh, they ain't had no explanation. Yeah. Yeah, that's worse. I ain't going to lie. That's pretty, That's worse. I ain't gonna, I'm not going to lie. When you can't explain it. I don't know. It did take me like three hours to explain, though. I think it took longer than that. But, yeah, with this, I ain't got to explain nothing. Anybody got a question about that? They they'll know. They see the headline. They see the title. They see the title, the picture. With this right here, Jerron, in the situation. Come on, man. Like like, bro. Some of my favorite YouTubers been lying to me, bro. And I ain't finna call none of them out because you know every human being gets things wrong. But a uh, a uh, a thousand videos about it. Come on, man. What are we doing? What y'all like about that? Somebody lying. I'm not finna go to hell about no boxing, man. It's just boxing. It's just a sport. I'm not finna lie. Go to hell over no boxing. If y'all think hell a real place, well, I ain't finna lie about no boxing over it. Let's, let's just keep it that way. <laughs> if match room and the zone, that's been, that's been the place to be. Why Terrence Crawford? Why ain't, I haven't heard not one YouTuber say Terrence Crawford should go to match room last year. He comes to PVC, now everybody's scrambling and getting out of there. What? I ain't been at, I ain't been over there and dealing with PVC a year yet. Now everybody scrambling and getting on. During the shutdown, everybody was cool with PVC. Now all of a sudden, we gotta make decisions. I'm here. Terrence Crawford don't deserve none. He ducking the guy who just signed a deal with Matchroom this week. Probably 24, 48 hours ago. If I had to guess, probably 48 hours ago. 72, 96 probably at the max. He ducking that guy. I don't know how he going. So Terrence Crawford got to sign with Matchroom to get a Boots fight now. Now he got to chase Boots over at Matchroom. What's going to be their explanation? Because the last thing I heard was you got to sign the PVC to get a, a Spence fight. He go get the Spence fight. He over there. Jerron Ennis leaves. Now everybody's saying, great move, Jerron Ennis, for leaving Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford. It's not good to pick sides, man. The only, only, only time you should pick sides is when you got your kids or your family or something like that, your mama. Dudes is picking sides for strangers. When Boots ain't thinking about no nothing but his, his family. Boots been thinking about his dad and still everything. He's trying to get a bag. He's not thinking about what y'all thinking about. When y'all realize that, y'all will be a lot more. Whoever, hey, at this point, from what I've seen, whoever Boots want to fight, just like whoever Boots went to match room to fight whoever he want to fight and, and get whatever kind of money he want. Boots went to match room to do whatever he want to do. That's what fans going to realize, and I'm glad he did it. 
because ain't nobody got a problem with it. So I don't want to hear nobody else when the next dude do what he want to do. Oh, man. I don't like matchroom. I, I only like PVC. Okay. We're going to find out then. We definitely going to find out. We definitely going to find out. Now I'm hearing this about international recognition. It's not really a surprise because St. Davis and Earl Spence, they had UK connections with big fights and everything too. But when every every other guy signed a match room, I'm telling y'all, most of our some of our biggest talent has signed to match room gone. Because it ain't been Charlo or nobody else, it's not solid. It's not valid. So if you ain't signed the same play Charlo and Spence signed to, you ain't that guy, according to these of uh, American fans. Then when their favorite fighter leaves PVC, oh, he can do that because that's a great move for him because I like him. I don't care about who you like, bro. That's what y'all don't understand. I don't care about who you like. Y'all don't care about who I like. And it's we're going to keep it like that. Oh, I talked about that yesterday. He's going to end up fighting either Mean Machine or that dude Michael McKinnison. I mean, is, is, that, is that a fight worth talking about, honestly, PD? Like, to be real, who at 147 we going to talk about that's worth talking about pertaining to Boots Ennis, who just left PVC? You know what I'm saying? We got all these guys like Mario Barrios over at 47 at PVC. We have, it, ain't, it ain't been no guys outside of PVC that we didn't mention Boots' name with. Michael McKinnison and uh, Mean Machine, Igus Kavalaskis. That's it. That's it. That's the only two names I see in my mind. And I heard a couple people name, mentioning Igus Kavalaskis yesterday. So I, so for some reason, I don't know how the hell everybody go from Igus Kavalaskis. I mean, uh, Terrence Crawford to Igus Kavalaskis now. We okay, we okay with Boots fighting Igus Kavalaskis. But for some reason, everybody think Terrence Crawford ducking if he... And that's okay. Yeah, I've been saying that though. But don't sit up here. And don't try to act like he everybody ducking him when he ain't. No, he just got lots of just he just uh fought in December. And he got uh he only got two losses. Just fought in December, only got two losses. He lost to Virgil Ortiz and Bud. I mean, everybody's leftovers, bro. At the end of the day, somebody lost to somebody. Shoot, Canelo is uh Floyd leftovers. Why why are we why are we still fighting Floyd leftovers? You know what I'm saying? Like everybody is somebody leftovers. If we want to keep it up, if we want to keep it standard, you know what I'm saying? Canelo is Floyd leftovers. And I heard Floyd don't fight nobody. You know what I'm saying? Who he gets got a lot? I don't think he ain't that old. He ain't that old. No. No, nah, he gets got a lot ain't that old. I don't think. No, nah, he only 35 years old. But be him, he was like 29. No, nah, he only 35. No, nah, he fought him at 29. No. He gets got a lot 29 years old. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to do just an hour. I don't really know. I don't even really know, man. I wasn't just going to do an hour. I'm just talking about the boot situation. I just want to I just want to let everybody know this boot situation. Yeah, it ain't what everybody been saying. That match room stuff, that PVC stuff, everybody, it's, it's over with. Them days, the people talking like that, it's done. Terrence Crawford would have signed a match room. Nobody would even. They wouldn't even. <laughs> People got to keep it a thousand, bro. Boxing talk again. Oh, now it's boring. I don't want to talk about what who dudes be liking and stuff like that. That's I, I don't get on here to be doing all that. And that's what everybody, every YouTuber do now. Just do that. Like, why are we arguing about who somebody like? Nah, it ain't that I don't think Eddie can make a fight with uh uh Bud. 
Niggas ain't gave a fuck about Eddie Hearn since Boo Boo Andre. I heard Boo Boo Andre was ducking Terrence Crawford. I mean, uh, Boo Boo Andre was ducking Charlos all these years. Charlos, man, everybody out here capping, bro. America is capping. We got the worst fans. It's 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 official. I've been studying for months trying to figure out, bro. We got the worst fans in America, bro. It ain't even close. It ain't even close. We got the worst fans. America has the worst fans when it comes to Boston. They just said if Bud would have took this same deal and went to match room, everybody would have said he ducking. America got the worst fans, period. Period, bro. The the YouTube, when I when I seen YouTubers saying the same thing the media was saying, that's why they even mess with my live on here. Cause they already know old Bud be speaking facts. Eddie Hearn, low key, bro. See, I don't want to get see. That's why I don't be wanting to send a lie when you say stuff like this. How Eddie Hearn brought back Boston with AJ? When AJ biggest opponent in the last five years has been an MMA fighter and a fat Ortiz and a cruiserweight named uh Usyk. And Usyk ain't even sold a pay-per-view on his own yet. Do we even know how many pay-per-views AJ selling right now? How are we keeping them? How are we keeping? How is Americans keeping boxing alive when Charlo just lost his undisputed fight, bro? Do you know we lost all our undisputed fights last year? We lost undisputed to um, we lost undisputed to Inaway. We lost undisputed to the Crawford, and we lost undisputed to uh Charlo uh, to Canelo. Bro, America looking bad right now. We sad. We outdoors right now. We sleeping grandma porch right now. We ain't America ain't what y'all think it is. You don't like talking to me because you want to get on live and say. So you gotta get on my air. I you don't like. You don't like talking to me because you got to get on the chat and talk to me? No. I don't even... Why would I argue about something that's facts? Yeah, you might... Yeah, yeah. A debate right now? Man, come on, man. What, what are we debating over right now? What are the debate over with? We already debated. He be leaving. He be leaving. You gonna leave? Are you gonna leave this time? You gonna stay around and debate? Let's see. Do everybody want to see a debate? Are you gonna leave this time? Nah, you lost. You left the last two times. Are you gonna leave this time or are you staying to debate? Cause you leave this time, I just ain't gonna entertain the next time. Nah, we already debated twice. They're gonna be the third time. My phone be going off. Bro, how I'm going to get you on here if your phone be overheating? Do you know my live be messing up? Do you know I be having people on here that be just sitting here? Do you know that my the stuff, I hate that I got to even explain this. Do you know that the live be messing up when you be getting over here because your phone be overheating? Can you just wait until you get a situation to where you the live, the phone won't overheat? Yeah, my, uh, my Windows phone was like that. Not Windows, but I had another phone like that. I forgot what it was. I think it was ZTE or something. Wouldn't that make more sense? And then, I'll, and then another thing too, bro. If you got, if you got to get on the chat, get on the live every time. Come on, man. Like, how does that make sense? I'm just trying to have a, a healthy conversation because when we do have a healthy conversation, you be leaving. No, nah, we are we already did. 
And then they didn't call me a casual last time. Come on, man. My nigga, bro, call me a casual. I really like to be honest with you. Am I a casual though? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying though. Nah, I ain't I ain't ace money. I ain't none of these niggas out here for real. That's what I'm saying. You the only person I ever ever let come on this channel for real. Yeah, nigga call me a casual, bro. That shit kind of. I don't really, I don't, you did call me a casual, bro. I got it, I got it on here. Do I got to post the shit? Do I got to go all the way back, post it up? They called me a casual last time. Call me a whole casual and left my life. I'm like, damn, I ain't say nothing about it. Stop lying. Show me proof. Show me proof. Bro, on my... <laughs> okay, bro. If you think I actually get on here and lie on another black man like that, bro. All right. Bro. That's what I'm saying. I don't like this funny shit like that. Oh, Peter, you gonna you gonna be on after after bro? Let go ahead then. I will send a link. Bet everybody went here to debate this morning. The rock. Bro, you leave. I ain't doing it no more. I'm telling you. You leave up out of here. I ain't doing it no more. So is it gonna overheat or not? Or do you gotta wait till later on? Man, see what I'm saying? You trying to set something up when you ain't even, come on, bro. You just wait 15 minutes talking about some shit I ain't gonna have for another hour. Hey, man. Yeah, like I was saying, bro. You just wasting all these people's time. We got seven people in here. I'm trying to goddamn set something up. They got, they trying to go to work and everything right now. But yeah, this Jerron in this uh, situation right now. Uh, and I'm gonna find that video where you said I ain't I ain't call you a casual either, cause cause that that makes my that messed my face card up. That that makes that messed my face card up when. You... Come on now. That's twice. Oh. Uh. I be having all kind of I got. That's what I'm saying. Like my the niggas don't even rock with me like that. Like I be I be really speaking for the American fans and, and the fans from America that really that's supposed to be rocking with me because I keep it a buck. Nah, you ain't gotta do all that, bro. I don't be really expecting all that, bro. You said I was a casual because I said I feel like Tim Zoo would be able to beat uh a Charlo. And you said you sound like a casual right now. And I said I sound like a. This was before uh, Tim Zoo got in the ring. Cause you said Char Tim Zoo can't beat Charlo. You said that right? You said Tim Zoo can't beat a Charlo. Then Tim Zoo get in the ring with Fandora. Everybody else around the world talking about some Fandora can't mess with fin Tim Zoo. I ain't hear you jumping out talking about some. Tim Zoo ain't uh that guy. See, see what I'm saying? Come on, man. I ain't hear you jumping out talking about some Tim Zoo and that guy, though. What, a, what that said? You call me over Tim Zoo? After what Tim Zoo? And that was before Tim Zoo got in the ring recently, right? You know that, right? And I had to come back two weeks later. And and say and say Tim Zoo wasn't that guy during that fight. Wow, wow. What energy? What energy are you talking about? About Jerron any sign in the match room? I'm showing you, I'm showing what you what I know what everybody think about Jerron any sign in the match room. I know you, everybody else. 
in America, I know what every black man running around here saying right now about about to run and it's going to match room. That's not. This ain't really nothing to really a debate about. What is that debate about? Jerron Ennis going to match room. How's he going to uh, Terrence Crawford? How's Terrence Crawford going to duck Jerron Ennis? Now I don't be like doing all that debate stuff, man. It gotta be. A, it gotta be about something real. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm gonna have a thousand people trying to come and argue about something that ain't about nothing. We debated twice already, and them shits was air balls. Air ball like fuck. Ain't nobody watched them debates. Matter of fact, I had 15 people in here when we was debating. They got the fuck off. They didn't like, they don't want to hear that shit. To keep it 1,000 with y'all. I had 15 people on here when we were debating. They ain't give a damn about that shit. That's why I'm really trying to curve it because it's like, bro, it, it wasn't really, it wasn't really like that. You know what I'm saying? Debating in Boston is getting old now. Everybody do that shit. I see, I see some dude doing it last night. That shit, that shit corny, man. It's only niggas doing that shit, man. It's only niggas on the internet right now debating some Boston. And I don't want to be one of them channels where them wife, where not not even just anybody, just come over here and be like, hey, man, this, is this so-and-so channel? Are you doing the same thing? Like, come on, man, I'm trying to talk facts. I don't need eight niggas on here to explain one article that's in text. That's what I don't be liking about it. Because I, I feel like that's, it's whack culture, bro. It's the same stuff. You know what I'm saying? It be only niggas running around saying Jerron Ennis, Boots, or Terrence Crawford ducking somebody. Nobody else. I just got to keep it a thousand. Like, I don't want to debate about no shit like that. I'm I'm grown, bro. I don't like doing all that. I'm new. I'm trying to explain my thoughts. Niggas don't even know what I'm explaining because they don't care. So it's like, the fuck? I don't feel like debating about nothing. How the hell? Wow. That shit don't even make no sense. Y'all don't even understand that. I'm excited about everything, bro. I love everything that's going on. I just don't like the lies, though. We ain't getting no fights like this. We just had we just had Tim Zoo and Fandora put on the biggest fight of the year, and they they're not even their family's not even from America, and they just had the biggest fight in America, and everybody like, yeah, get your ass out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, man. We got Americans dominating somewhere else. Like, ain't nobody. Um, right now, uh, the Bitter Beeve and Bilbo, that's a dream fight. Uh, Terrence Crawford versus Canelo. Uh, Canelo versus uh, Benavidez. Um, Caleb Plant versus Charlo. And uh, Jerron Ennis versus Fence. Easy fights to make. Supposed to happen. Supposed to happen last year. Mandatories. Tim Zoo versus Charlo. Mandatories. Man, these ain't no dream fights. This shit is supposed to happen already. These mandatories. Spence was drawn in his mandatory, and everybody now starting to bring it up. Oh, he leave PBC? Yeah, he was Spence mandatory. Man. Come on, man. Like, what, what is that to argue about? Why would we argue about Jerron Ennis being Spence mandatory? Why would I argue about that? I didn't make Jerron in the Spence mandatory. Why would I argue about that? Why would I argue about Charlo being Tim Zoo mandatory? And everybody thinks Tim Zoo is good after he fights Fandora, but before when he was trying to fight Charlo, he wasn't that great. Why would I argue about that? Y'all gotta understand that. This is basic information. This ain't nothing, no scientific facts. <laughs> Terrence Crawford, almost 40 years old, and people now just now starting to say, hey, man, what about his uh, situation? And what about that? Man, come on, man. I ain't trying to hear all that. Why would I be excited a whole, about a whole bunch of lies being passed around right now? Because I see the energy around Boston. Like, people don't understand it. 
Bro, they saying all the big fights are for Saudi Arabia. And we have a lot of Americans right now saying, yeah, that's the move. That's not the move, man. If half of them fights, I've signed, all them dream fights we're thinking about, they're gonna they're saving those for Saudi Arabia. If you're 34, 35 right now, you're saving the fight for Saudi Arabia. You're not trying to fight no big name over here in America right now. For what? Why? They ain't, it ain't been happening. What's the biggest fight? Hey, PD, what's the biggest fights we had happening in the last five years in America? Triple G three. Nobody talks about Triple G three. We don't even want to mention that Spence Craw in the last five years. Spence Crawford. It ain't been no big fights, bro. Everybody told the Tank and Ryan, bro. Why would I sit up here and argue with people who thought Tank and Ryan Garcia was a big fight last year? People thought Tank and Ryan Garcia was going to be the greatest fight that you can make in boxing. The best fight you can make, make in boxing, people said last year, was Tank and Ryan Garcia. People looked at Ryan Garcia and Tank last year, and they said, this is the best fight you can make in boxing right now. Bigger than any fight you can make. Now this year, they want to sit up here and be like, yeah, man, you know, well, nah, man. You probably ain't going to, you know, it is what it is, brother. It is what it is. Yeah, I don't like be doing all that Skip Bayless stuff, man. Skip Bayless kind of messed the game up, bro. I'm gonna be real with y'all. Skip Bayless messed the game up. It's a difference between arguing with somebody about Boston and talking on her for three hours about some facts. That's a whole different ball game. That's what people don't understand. I'm not really no Skip Bayless ass nigga. Like I'm not on here trying to Skip Bayless nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, you are for real? Wow, that's amazing. Dang. I definitely got to ask you what you uh, learned from that. Yeah, man, let me go back to your comment you had earlier, though. I see what you're saying. I'm just going to respond to it. I didn't got so far away from your comment, dog. But yeah, man, like a lot of these people on channels, though, they don't really. And then I see it, bro. They'll go to another channel just because you critique another boxer and be like, yeah, that dude right there. Like, bro, I don't like nobody who talks about other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, just it ain't that move, bro. I already know what kind of energy they'll be behind with certain people. I be seeing other pages. You know what I'm saying? I don't like that. It's too much. I don't, I'm not trying to get diddy out here with. Niggas is buying CDs and shirts. Then later on, they just want to sit up here and get mad at a, a, somebody that everybody didn't force you to support. <laughs> I know how these folk rock. I definitely know how that rock. I ain't trying to be on that side. They ain't finna have. Oh, yeah, me too. They ain't finna have me out here crazy. Yeah, man, I got, I got these Star Wars portraits all over my wall, all over my house. Crazy stuff. Yeah, man, this this Boston thing, it just exposes a lot, man. You know what I'm saying? And you got Buddy coming. I I ain't talking about him. I ain't talking about. Him. I'm just saying, like, bro, how you come to another person live and be like, I don't like coming on here because you don't like. Man, I just seen. Come on, man. Like, how you gonna force your way on my stuff? Like, bro, what the hell do you nigga be on, man? For real. And I was, I'm trying to be as nice as I can, but that shit weird to me, my nigga. I don't know if niggas know it or not. Like, if y'all ever, ever been to Atlanta, bro, I used to walk through Atlanta at night, bro. All through Atlanta. Just think about that for a moment. I'm that guy. 
I walk through Atlanta now at night. <laughs> One of none that do that. Come on, man. <laughs> now nah, it's 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 insane the way society really is, bro. One thing I learned though, on YouTube, man, niggas ain't got no respect for nobody. Niggas will jump from channel to channel talking about niggas. That one thing I don't like, whether it's about Terrence Crawford. A YouTuber or anybody like niggas drop from channel to channel talking about people. That's why I really don't want that. I don't really cater to all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just talking about facts over here. That's what I wanted to be be known about. If a nigga, hey, some people don't like facts, bro. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't like facts. That's one thing everybody gonna realize. Yeah, 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 man. I keep it. I see what goes on in Boston. Boston just a sport that none of these dudes really fought in. That's all it is. You gotta keep it real like that. If you actually been in the sport for real, people don't even know shit. I could be a, I could be a professional boxer right now. I could be a promoter right now. I could be Al Heyman's son. I could be Al Heyman's son right now, or grandson. And y'all, I could be sitting here just talking about all this boxing, knowing I probably got a run in his contract right here. And niggas jumping in the chat talking crazy. I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, it'd be crazy. Then the craziest part is, if I, if I got a thousand videos on this matter, on this topic, why would I why would I talk? That's what I don't understand. That's why I be knowing sometimes people don't really be checking out the kid because I have 50 videos of Jerron Ennis explaining all this. I explain when his promoter died, when he went to court, why he had to go to court. He was finna get out of a deal. He was possibly going to work another deal with somebody else. Then I, I brought the other scenario up. Now we get to this point, and everybody like, oh, I'm surprised. I thought Terrence Crawford was ducking him. Yeah, PD, it, it get crazy, bro. It get crazy. Because the, the business of boxing is exposing everybody. When all the, when when everybody when everybody fighting overseas, when all your favorite fighters sign to somebody overseas or somewhere else, we're gonna find out. Because we got now now. Hey, PD, this is what people don't realize. Because everybody talking about some uh, Eddie Hearn and, and Joshua bringing Boston back. How, how Eddie Hearn and Joshua bringing Boston back when he only had one fight of America and the rest of his fights been in, U in Saudi Arabia lately and he haven't even fought in the UK. And he haven't even fought in the UK lately. And he ain't fought in the UK. And Anthony Joshua ain't fought in the UK. He ain't fought in the UK in a while. And the last couple of fights he fought in the UK, it wasn't even really that sold out. So what are we talking about? Then the Usyk fight. Bro, let me tell you something. If you could lose two straight fights to Usyk, a cruiserweight, and nobody cares, you ain't that big. I don't care what's going on out here. Any heavyweight lose to a cruiserweight and nobody cares, you weren't that big in the first place. That's a guarantee. You got in a way now. He's saying everybody got kind of uh, Japan to fight him. Then you got uh, Anthony Joshua. You got to come to where he had to fight him. He got to pick you. Then you got Canelo. He got to pick you. So if you, so if Tank Davis, Canelo, Earl Spence at this point still, if you if Earl Spence don't pick you, Canelo, Anthony Joshua, um. Tank Davis, if none of those guys pick you, or anyway, you ain't going to get no big money in the fight. Like, a lot of these dudes going to be broke in a minute because you're going to have to go to an app. You're going to have to go to an app. You're going to have to go to Pro Box. 
We got Austin Trout right now fighting bare knuckle boxing. And everybody talking about boxing the move right now. How how is Austin Trout? What Austin Trout, 34, 35 years old? And he and he gotta go to bare knuckle boxing to get a check right now. Austin Trout, 38. So Austin Trout, 38 years old. He got to go to bar bare knuckle boxing. Yeah, he ain't bare knuckle boxing. He's the champion of bare knuckle boxing right now. Bare knuckle boxing, PD. Austin Trout, the bare knuckle boxing champion. And for some reason, everybody trying to question, well, why Jerron Ennis doing this? Y'all didn't see Dr Austin Trout just have two bare knuckle boxing fights? You think he left PVC because he wanted to? You think he don't want to fight right now? If Austin Trout can't find a fight, who you think these other guys' names ain't bigger than Austin Trout? Even though people might think, oh, he's not that good. When I'm hearing people name out Canelo resume, his name pops up a lot. When I when I'm hearing Canelo's resume, Austin Trout name pops out a lot. So that's definitely not the case for him. Oh, he can't find a fight for this situation. Victor Ortiz has a fight coming up. You remember Victor Ortiz? Who fought Canelo? I mean, fought um, Mayweather? He has a fight coming up. Don't believe me? This is when the fight happens. Look it up on Box Rick. Victor Ortiz got a fight coming up. These dudes trying to find a place to get some money at, man. I ain't going to give all the sauce off. The rest of it is going to be on something else. Yeah, these dudes trying to give out a... Uh, <laughs> and they think people just don't want to sign deals and people just don't want to fight each other. Ain't nobody down here turning down the millions of dollars. Yeah, Austin Trout still fighting. Absolutely, man. <laughs> it's Jerron Anderson. Austin Trout was in the same position. Can't find a fight. Hey, let me get up out of here. I got to feed my people. Man, the boxing game, these folks are sold out, man. American fans ain't it ain't it ain't to the point where it used to be, bro. And people don't understand that. APD, hey, they think we still got Shane Mosley and Floyd Mayweather walking around and Roy Jones. They think we still got Roy Jones, Floyd, uh, Antonio Tarver. They think we got Rinky Wright walking around. They think we got they think it's like that right now. Yeah, man. It ain't even. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. It's only a couple of people making money. That's why I go. And that they could have shut. They could have shut the door on Golden Boy. You know what I'm saying? That's why these other promotional companies, people like Oscar De La Hoya, he ain't finna go away. They still making fights with Ryan Garcia. Oscar De La Hoya knows all I need is a Ryan Garcia. They're going to make a big fight with me. All they care about is money. They don't care about no best. All they care about is money. Let me just get a Ryan Garcia, and they're going to run over here and make two big fights with me. Ryan Garcia finna fight. Devin Haney and Tank Davis. And people said that was the, that was the biggest fight you can make in boxing last year. Then it, then it got to a point where said, people said, I'd rather see that fight than take, uh, Crawford and Spence. Since they ain't going to make that fight, yeah, Ryan, Ryan and Tank, they'll be the best one to make right now. Then right after that fight ended, <laughs> we know how, how what other fights they've been coming up with lately. Now they're down to Munguia and Canelo sound good. Yeah, keep lower your standards. Yeah, but you know the fans. The fans at that time they thought Devin, they thought Ryan Garcia was better than Devin Haney. They're not gonna say it out loud, but those are the people who don't like my channel. The people who thought Ryan Garcia was better than uh, Devin Haney when he fought Tank. When Ryan Garcia fought Tank, they thought Ryan Garcia was better than Devin. That's the people that who don't like being over here. It makes sense. I mean, I'm glad. Why would I want? <laughs> Come on. Yeah, he looked decent, but anytime a guy retires after you beat him, uh, 
that's a bad sign. You know what I'm saying? That's why I've been trying to tell people lately. It's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. I mean, time gonna reveal everything. Time gonna reveal everything. It's gonna reveal everything. Everything I said about Canelo last year, it's all coming out now. But people don't, you know, they just wanna focus on little things. They're like but, uh, people coming on here demanding that I do stuff. Man, you don't get the hell on. Yeah, these niggas weirdos, man. These niggas weirdos. Man, bro. Every time I tell somebody, they gave me a scholarship to go to school for fighting. <laughs> I know about the fight game. I know who about their life. Just by talking. And when it comes to boxing, boxing the best thing you can have in life because that's why, hey, I'm going to tell you something else, PD. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to drop some game on you. The reason why, I'm going to tell you, it's a method to my madness why I talk this way. Because eventually, one day I'm going to eventually talk like this. Oh, no, it's it's a joke behind that, but yeah, I did get a, uh, that was back in the day. It's a joke behind that, but yeah, that's true, though. Nah, but it'd be a method to my madness. Why would I want to argue with niggas about fake deals, bro? So I just talk like this to let them know, hey, this ain't this ain't that type of party, bro. You know what I'm saying? Because when I was dropping facts and being nice and, you know what I'm saying, trying to be respectful, Niggas calling me casuals and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, then I got to prove it and shit. Nah, man, fuck all that, bro. Fuck are we talking about? Like, Amer American men had no respect for another man, bro, putting in work. Putting in too much work. Everybody know this. That's one thing I learned over life, bro. Ain't nobody going to respect you. They respect your wallet. Like, these men, they don't respect your kindness is a weakness. They respect they respect wallets these days. Men respect wallets more than women do, which is disgusting. I don't know why a nigga looking at somebody else's wallet. But they respect wallets too much these days. That's why you got Diddy's out here. Ain't no only re, only only reason Diddy getting dudes out here now is because of a wallet. Dudes enamored by a wallet. <laughs> the wallet game has got these dudes out, out of control, bro. With boxing, real life, oh, I can't be around this person because I got to be around somebody with a certain amount of money. Oh, that's so sad. That's disgusting. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all good. Yeah, it don't matter where you're from. It's just, if somebody can tell where you're from, to me, that's lame. You know what I'm saying? That that kind of exposes what kind of person you are. If I can tell where you're from. Nobody should be able to tell where you're from. And that's, that's what's going on with this Boston situation. You can tell where people are coming from with this information. You can tell... When a situation is good for one person, it's all right. That's why I say a lot of people, whether it's uh, Demetrius Andre, Danny uh, Jacobs, uh, Devin Haney, none of these guys got praises when they signed the match room. Everybody said it was a bad deal because they ain't running follow Charlo. Now, the same Charlo now that I, that 
and I, and it's real talk. I knew Charlie and them had issues as far as the stuff, the issues they got now, but I never brought that up in the past. Like back then, when I, I ain't I, my channel wasn't uh really I ain't had no channel, but I ain't really bring it up. But I knew they had uh problems doing all this other stuff when they got into it with Tank Davis and uh uh Adrian Bronner. But people wasn't watching Tank Davis, and Adrian Bronner back then, so you don't know. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah man yeah my you know my my granddaddy family from new york so yeah i'm definitely used to that yeah most of my family from uh brooklyn yeah Brownsville too, the rough side of New York. Yeah, we come from Brownsville, same place Mike Tyson come from. I'm from, I'm not from New York, but that's where my people come from. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, that'd be the best move when they be from Germany and stuff. Yeah, fat. <laughs> hey, you, you, you crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, man, me too. Me too. Well, you ain't lying. Yeah, man. Absolutely. But yeah, man. Um. Hey, PD, how, where do you think they're going to go from here, man? Because a lot of people now, over the last three or four years, they've been saying PBC has the most fighters, so why guys don't sign the uh, PBC? But then most of the people who said that you should sign the PBC, just like they told Terrence Crawford, they've been telling Terrence Crawford still, and now all of a sudden they're saying that uh, don't sign the PBC, Jerron Ennis is a great move, not going to match room. So how was Terrence Crawford going to make a fight with him anyways? And then when did Matchroom become the place to go? And then Anthony Joshua right now, he's making pennies on a dollar because he signed for $100 million years ago. And he, he got a lifetime deal, man. You know what I'm saying? So right now, you know, I don't want to put too much info out there, you know what I'm saying, because they already be messing with my channel because I be dropping too much facts. But – that money that they, they throwing around right now, that might be some of that Saudi money that Jerron Ennis just got. So I just dropped that little hint. But, yeah, that's probably some of that money he just got. That's why he ran over there. Ain't nobody got time to be waiting on a Spence fight to get a payday. I've been telling people that. Just go to PBC. They already got a plan. What Jimmy, what Demetri Andre told everybody, man, I've been trying to get the PBC for years. I've been trying to get a deal with the PBC for years. I've been trying to go over there for years. Oh, he just talking. You know, Demetri Andre just talking. You know what I'm saying? He just talking. He don't want to fight nobody because he ain't fight the Charlos. Because Andre ain't fight the Charlos. Nobody fight the Charlos. Have we seen Caleb Plant fight the Charlos? He had to go slap one of the Charlos in the face to get a fight. Matter, matter of fact, Jared Hurd slapped Charlo and he, uh, Caleb Plant slapped Charlo. And none of them got in the ring with those guys. Y'all ain't noticed that? They slapping dudes out here on PVC and they still ain't getting in the ring. This dudes from PVC slapping other PVC guys in their weight class. Ain't got in the ring. But you got dudes, they'll sit up here and be like, you know what? Let me get these views, man. Terrence Crawford ducking. I don't got time to be lying by no boxer, man. I got stuff to do, man. They do be trying to argue about nothing. I'm going to be writing 10 or 15 years. I'm going to get my replay value later on. You know what happened on my channel that, that, that don't happen on other channels? They play my videos uh, months later. They play my videos months later. I seen a video, somebody 
that kept popping up on my channel talking about uh, a fight was canceled. That was months ago. My, I'm, I'm making this news for 20, 2035, 2040. This was the year 2035. This was this news for today. Whoever understand it, I mean, PD will. But everybody else, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Jetson out here for T.R. I've been announcing all the news. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody sound, sitting around saying I'm clicked, man. I should, just like Aaron said, I give out too much sauce. He said, man, you should be charging for this. You give out way too much sauce. I'm announcing fight six months early. Why should I explain anything to anybody? My standards are going up. And I'm not acting rude or anything like that. I'm just saying, like, the stuff I've been, that fans have been accepting all these years, people don't even notice they got into a competition of saying what American fighter is ducking. Don't, don't y'all realize the only fighter y'all say that's ducking is American fighters? And I'm talking about American fans saying this. I haven't heard a Mexican fan saying, oh, yeah, Canelo's, uh, Terrence Crawford ducking Canelo. They say, I want to see Canelo get in the ring with Terrence Crawford. Not I want to see Terrence Crawford get in the ring with Canelo. I want to see Canelo get in the ring with Terrence Crawford because I know Terrence Crawford to get in the ring with him. Now, we got Mexican fans can't speak a lick of English that know all this. But you got dudes that sit up here and watch because it ain't about none of that. You know what I'm saying? They look at Terrence Crawford like an uncle, an uncle or a cousin. They don't like. That's how they look at it. You got to pick a side. They got to be a Kobe or LeBron. You know what I'm saying? Dudes always trying to run. You got to be Kobe or LeBron. You got to be Kobe. Or, you got to be LeBron or Jordan. You got to be Jerron Ennis or Terrence Crawford. You can't like both. You got to pick one. So y'all picked the wrong one this time. Y'all definitely picked the wrong ones. It's time to hang them cleats up. Y'all picked the wrong ones. Now match on the move. Yeah, man. Now match on the move. I got I gotta stop giving people my energy when I be coming on here. I'm trying to I'm trying to save my energy, man. I'm already doing I got, I'm already praying five times a day. I got a lot of stuff going on. I ain't got time to be arguing about no facts, no old stuff. <laughs> These dudes talking about, oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? For sure, for sure. And I ain't had to get millions of dollars to sign the PBC to, to start praying like everybody else did lately. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. Absolutely. But I... Right now, man, I don't know. Terrence Crawford, to be honest with you, Terrence Crawford, if I said this last year, though, people don't realize, Terrence Crawford and Benavidez had the most attention right now. Yeah, shout out to PD, man. I'm absolutely will, bro. Terrence Crawford and Benavidez got the most attention right now. I suppose that last year, too. That's something this year that people won't realize or they probably ain't noticed it yet. But laughing about Benavidez being drunk, that kind of brings attention to him because I haven't, I've seen a lot of people drunk. I've seen Charlo drunk. I've seen uh, Canelo drunk. I ain't seen people passing it around and doing other things with it. It's been plenty of people. Oh yeah. Spence been drunk on camera. Spence, Spence been super drunk on camera. Spence was just as drunk as Benavidez on camera. Spence was just as drunk as Benavidez on camera. So I so I so I absolutely know. That's why I said. That's why I said the people who really ain't gonna like to hear this, they they come from, they want to pick sides. Yeah, it was worse. It was worse. 
That was worse. The fact that 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 Benavidez being drunk was a story. The fact that that actually was a story. That's not boxing. Like, why would I make a live talking about? Yeah, Benavidez got on. This what do? That's what people want me to do. They want me to get on here, and try to like. Do the same thing the next man doing. Like, yeah, let, Benavidez was drunk last Thursday, and oh, yeah, he don't deserve this fight. Like, man, that's corny. Go live your life. I ain't got time to be reporting when dudes get drunk and all the other stuff. That's lame to me. It's too much boxing going on. It's a fight on last night. Like, trust me, it's enough boxing news to go around. It's five or six fights they do every weekend. You don't see them. But if you go on some of these box rec, rec websites, you'll see how many fights they actually have on the weekend. It's not just one or two fights. They have four or five fights a weekend every every Saturday. So it's plenty to report about. Oh, yeah, you good. You good. But, yeah, man, it's plenty to report about. But a guy getting drunk, I already know what kind of energy that is. That's a weak Canelo fan that doesn't want to. And I'm going to tell you all the real. And I'm tired of y'all trying to put that on. Oh, this is just Mexican fans. This is just Mexican fans. No, nah, it ain't just Mexican fans. Triple G, a lot of Triple G fans are now Canelo fans. I'll repeat that. A lot of Triple G fans are now Canelo fans. So most of the fans that sit around saying stuff about Benavidez, they're old Triple G fans because Triple G ain't doing nothing right now. I ain't heard he got a fight coming up. So last time, I, he's retired, so they need somewhere to go. So they over there with Canelo right now. And Canelo's old fans, Mexican fans, they over there trying to figure out what Benavidez's next fight is. Oh, that. And then I'm the only person on YouTube that said that Pitbull Cruz was, was going to replace Canelo Alvarez. So I actually broke some of the biggest stories on YouTube this whole year. I'm the I'm actually the one who said that Mexican fans was gonna re replace uh Canelo with Pitbull. Nobody else on YouTube said that. That's a fact. Find it, send it to me. I said that months. I said that last year. I said Canelo better do something. They're gonna end up replacing him. Just said that. And he's been replaced. I don't know if y'all know it. They call it, bro. Yeah, that's a whole nother video I got, man. I'm, I'm getting off topic. But at the end of the day, um, Jerron Ennis being involved with Terrence Crawford's name, that helps Jerron Ennis. It doesn't help Terrence Crawford to have his name lingering with Jerron Ennis when Jerron Ennis is not even at PBC. That's why I said the only person who I'm not finna get on here and hear about no boxer doing nothing when none of these other boxers are fighting people y'all asking y'all want them to fight. I'm the only person who has tanked to fight Frank Martin months ago when everybody said Frank Martin was ducking Shakur Stevenson. So I'm the lone wolf on that out of everybody. I know people are probably saying, I reported it later on. When Frank Martin got turned down by uh, Shakur Stevenson about that money, when everybody said he was ducking, I didn't put that story out, first of all. Go look at what I said. I said Frank Martin ain't ducking. If he, if, if, if he ain't fight Shakur, Tank might be next. I'm that same guy. All right, man. I'm going to holler at you, uh, PD. Appreciate that, bro. Hit me in my... Uh... Okay, bet, bet, bet. Bet. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I'm going to... Uh... Let's see. Say that real quick. Before I delete it. All right, I'm finna do it now. Yeah, they, they he, he gotta do that, bro. He gotta do it. And I ain't talking about him. I, I like him. I think he he works very hard. I respect every YouTuber on uh I'm not talking directly about him, but he has to, bro. He has to. He he has to. If he doesn't, if he goes on there and says something else, if he hey, if he goes on there and says something else, the fans gonna attack him. He don't feel like going through that headache today. It it, it is what it, he don't want to sit over here with just a couple of subscribers. I mean, he don't want to sit in the live and just have 
two two people in the live like I do. So yeah, he got to do that. Yeah. He don't want to have two people in the live like I got. And I understand that. It ain't something. I, I just got to take a different path. You know, my, my path going to be a lot slower. Yeah, you know, in fact, uh, hey, sorry, but you know, they know that fact. Yeah, they made it that way. You know what I'm saying? The fans will say they like, they respect the truth and all that, but. Nah, the fans will say that, but. It's not true. That's why I got to Yeah, it does. It does. It does. It does. I can't really do that though because um Yeah, people going people not going to like me, I understand that. But you got to understand this about this uh two cyber. Everybody ain't going to like uh Everybody ain't gonna like what uh he's saying because at the end of the day, <laughs> they want to go with the narrative that's been going on. A lot of people like fighters, man. They don't care about all that other stuff. That's it. Dudes just want to like. That's why I'm saying, like, just come in here and say you just like the fighter. I have no problem saying with somebody saying, "Hey, man, that's my favorite fighter. I just like that fighter." I'd be like, "Okay, cool. I appreciate that." You know what I'm saying? I would be like, cool, I respect that. But a lot of people don't want to, they don't want to be honest though. So when they'll be honest, fans will say, oh man, you just doing this to this person. And then a lot of guys really just don't like Bud, so. But um, I had to keep it real today. A lot of people not going to like it, Sayable, but I got to keep it real, bro. Yeah, he's a problem, but his resume on anybody else's resume. If anybody else has Boots' resume, that people are not gonna uh, care about that. Terrence Crawford has ten straight knockouts, and nobody cares. But if you if you tell anybody else, hey, Boots, last time I checked, Boots don't have a resume like Terrence Crawford. He doesn't have ten straight knockouts. So I think that's open and close close shape. Uh, that's open and close uh case right there. Open and shut. Terrence Crawford got 10 straight knockouts. Canelo don't got 10 straight knockouts. Nobody right now at that level has 10 straight knockouts, unless you're like Inouye or somebody. And I don't even know if he got 10 straight. Maybe. I don't know. We're talking about at that level. I know everybody. They have 10 straight knockouts. Yeah, but Terrence Crawford just did Earl Spence the same worse than he did some of the uh the trash guys y'all said he has on his resume. You know what I'm saying? They're getting they're getting done worse than the, some of the trash guys. Or or what people would consider trash. Or what people would consider trash. But it is what it is. Yeah, but we've been saying it about everybody. I heard it about our shit. You know what I'm saying? They said it about they saying it about Earl Spence last. Why everybody that said it about Earl Spence last year, why they ain't come back and apologize to me? Why they still got me blocked? Why people blocked me last year for saying that about... Why people that said that about Earl Spence last year, why they blocked me after they was wrong? I said that about Terrence... So, so let me ask you a question. So the guys at 47... So how the guys at 47 ducking him when he just left and went to the match room? And we got people that already said that he had a deal... Uh, he had a deal shown for um I don't want to call out other YouTubers, but this is journal. I got I gotta be a journalist. We've had people already say he had a deal already offered offered to him already. You 
This wasn't a fight. This wasn't about a, a fight. A fight right now. Jerron don't have a big fight eventually. This is about money right now. There's two different things that's going on right now. We're talking about business or we're talking about the fight? You think Jerron in the sign of match room because he's going to get a fight? I don't know. I'm confused with that because I know a lot of guys that Deontay Wilder just worked with uh, Queensberry and match room. Last time I checked, he was over at PVC. So you telling me for the last five years, boxing fans been telling me Earl Spence is one of the best fighters in boxing. Now that Terrence Crawford, let me, I, I want you to explain this to me right quick. So you're telling me for the last five years, everybody been telling me Earl Spence is one of the best fighters in boxing. Terrence Crawford beat Earl Spence. Answer this question. Terrence Crawford beat Earl Spence. What is what? What did Earl uh, Terrence Crawford beat Earl Spence mean? What did that do for uh, Terrence Crawford? What what did beating Earl Spence do for Terrence Crawford's career? According to fans. Oh, everybody don't like that question. I don't give a damn who don't like that question. I see a lot of people getting up out of here. I don't care who don't like that question. You ain't supposed to like that question. Because everybody ain't going to ask that question. Because anybody who's been telling me Earl Spence has been a top fighter all these years and now beating him means nothing, I don't think we got anything to discuss as far as who knows how good Boots Ennis is. If you don't know how good Earl Spence is, nine times out of ten, not just talking about Edward Morris, I'm just saying period, period. What's up, Edward Morris? People don't know uh, nine times out of ten. If, if they didn't know how good Bo uh, Earl Spence was, they, didn't, they don't know how good Jerron Ennis is. That, that just, it just facts. It just facts. It's been plenty of time we done went on here and said we don't know how good a, a fighter is. Ain't nobody going to discredit you for saying you don't know. I mean, nobody knows. But to say guys is refusing millions of dollars, I don't hear nobody saying UK guys are refusing millions of dollars to fight a person, turn down millions of dollars. If I go ask Josh Taylor, hey, you heard about this guy turning down millions of dollars to fight so-and-so, he'll be like, what? What are y'all talking about? Because I do remember when people were saying Terrence Crawford was ducking uh, Josh Taylor. Do you want me to put all the names on here of people who said that Terrence Crawford was ducking Josh Taylor? Do, do people not re remember that? Do we not remember that? I don't know why that ain't going through. Do people not remember that? I don't know if people remember that, man. But yeah, people used to say Terrence Crawford was ducking uh, Josh Taylor. Oh, Terrence Crawford needs to fight Josh Taylor. When I already I not, I already knew who Boots Ennis was. Nobody was yelling Boots Ennis name then. I knew who Boots Ennis was. That's when everybody said Terrence Crawford can't beat a guy at 47. He can't beat no 47. He hasn't even beat nobody at 140. How can he beat a 147? How can Terrence Crawford beat a 147? He hasn't beat a 140. I remember those days. Oh, he needs to go back to 40 and beat Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor undisputed right now. He on pound for pound. I didn't hear nobody saying Boots should fight Josh Taylor. I didn't hear nobody saying Boots should fight Earl Spence. I just started hearing people say Boots and Earl, uh, Keith Thurman last year. Virgil Ortiz was at 147. Is Virgil Ortiz ducking uh, Boots Ennis? 
So how many guys we got throwing under the bus to make Booth Ennis look good? So we're going to throw Danny Garcia under the bus, Sean Porter, Earl Spence, Terrence Crawford, Virgil Ortiz. Who else y'all ready to throw under the bus for uh, Booth Ennis? Who else? Because you're right. I just don't want to hear those guys' names mentioned no more. And the guys who fought them. Anytime you say, oh, that was a good win for that. So oh, I don't want to hear that. So why would I want Boots Ennis to fight some guys that that's scared to fight him if he's if he's that good? Do you know that Boots hasn't had a fight with a with a, with a, with that belt he has yet? He hasn't even fought, he hasn't even fought a championship, a title fight yet. Do you know that? Uh, Earl Spence been been his mandatory for the last two years, or these other channels don't tell you that. Boots been I've been asking Earl Spence to fight Boots since 2020, 20, 2021. I've been asking uh, Earl Spence to fight Boots. Yeah, now he will, but he was on pound for pound though. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. These boxing experts had Josh Taylor on pound for pound when I said no way. But the same win. That got Josh Taylor on the pound for pound when somebody else beat that same guy. It's not a big win for uh some of our fighters. But when Josh Taylor beat the guy, he going on pound for pound. You don't see the low standards, you don't see the you don't see the hypocrisy. Jerron Ennis just went 12 rounds two fights ago. We just talking about a we just talking about a guy named Terrence Crawford who just stopped. Terrence Crawford just stopped Earl Spence, the best fighter in boxing everybody been saying, who need to fight Canelo next. When they was talking about, oh, he's going to fight Canelo after the uh, Crawford fight, all that went away. Now it's Fundora. So everybody, they changing plans. Going, I haven't changed any plans for Terrence Crawford. He hasn't lost yet. The only people that change their plans is people who, who are fans of these guys that's losing. That's the only people that change their plan. Oh, you want a link? Go ahead. I'll give you a link right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. He wants to link. Because nothing you saying to make a sense. This man said Sean Porter. Sean Porter is Paul Adrian Bronner. This man said Sean Porter. This is why that, that right here, him saying that right there, it's gonna hurt everything he brings to the table right there. What's going on? What's up? Salute to you, brother. How you doing today, man? I'm good. You turn down the background for me. Oh, uh, how'd I do that? Let me see. Uh, Just turn your TV off. Nah, TV now. TV not on, man. Nothing's okay, on. Okay. Okay. I hear it's in the background. Is it not it clear? It might, it might be, be color. No, nah, I'm in the I'm in the kitchen. Maybe I'm maybe the echo on that color. Oh, you're good. Go, go ahead, Eddie. Let me go ahead. Let you go ahead. What you saying, man? Yeah, man. I can say Jerron, man. Boots, man. He he the man right now, man. He the man to be there. 147. You asked me. You know, I Eddie, don't tell me, Go Eddie, ahead, brother. You, how long have you been watching boxing? Man, I've been watching boxing for see, I'm 46, probably about 35 years, man. In 35 years, how many how many times they didn't say the guy been a boogeyman in Boston? No, I ain't say he the boogeyman. I said no, 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 no. I, I'm, I ain't, I'm not trying to argue with you about um nothing else. I'm just asking you a question. I said when, how many times have they said the guy's been a boogeyman in the last 35 years that you've been watching Boston? They got, they call Mike Tyson the boogeyman. They say he was killed out of Mike. Yeah. Oh, you know they call. Think about all them guys they call boogeyman's now. Well, all of them lose at the end of the day. Exactly. If you the hang guy, around long enough, you're going to lose. It, no, <laughs> it ain't because they hung around. No, no, no. That ain't it, Eddie. No, you know that now. Eddie, you know that. But no, Hopkins was 50 years old fighting. We ain't been alone. No, that's what I'm saying. The ageism in boxing, that's a problem. It's, it's standard. It's different different strokes for different folks, I'm starting to realize. because But no, Hopkins is getting – ain't nobody saying Bernard Hopkins is getting knocked out of the ring at 50 years old. He took that uh beating because he was 50 years old, so we can't say the age and all the other stuff. No. I mean, but that's a, that's a fact though. I mean, you got a 50 year old man, 50 year old man ain't you know, that's the dude, the senior yeah. citizen. Yeah, I mean, how many 50 year old man successfully was successful at boxing? But this not, was not very many. But this is what you don't understand though that same 50 year old man who got knocked out the ring 
they said that Kovalev, the same Kovalev that he went uh, the distance with, that he was a killer. You remember when he did that? When they said that Kovalev, uh, he he was a boogeyman in boxing, and then oh, yeah. Bernard Hopkins went twelve rounds with him. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what what we got going on with that? Like, do, we don't see the same scenario of people hyping certain guys up. Now, I take Jerome in the same resume, and I stick it on Floyd Mayweather right now. What are we gonna call Floyd Mayweather a boogeyman, or it, that, that he the guy at one forty seven? You can't compare those two guys, man. You're not understanding what I'm saying. With that resume that that Flo that Duran in his hands right now, how many boxers are we gonna stick that resume on and call him the best of anything in boxing? Let, let, let me let me take you back real quick. How old, uh, how long you been watching boxing? Uh, 25 years at least. Okay, okay. So you think so? You know you know well enough that certain guys are gonna have a great resume because depending on who you are. Because if they're trying to push you as a star, you're gonna have marquee guys on your regime on your regime. Hence, Canelo Alvarez, who got all those old champions on his resume, because those guys knew the business of boxing, which was the older guy passes the torch to the younger guy. Hence, Boots and Ennis, in quotation marks, Danny Garcia said, "I'm not fighting him." Out of his own mouth, on camera, yeah, 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 Sean yeah. Porter said, "I'm not fighting him." Out of his own mouth on camera, mm -hmm. he said yeah. he's a problem. Those guys were supposed to pass the torch to the next up and coming guy. They didn't pass the torch. They jumped up to different weight classes, picking and choosing and fighting other guys for money. They don't want to fight that boy, man. That boy's a problem, man. I'm glad you said. I'm glad you said that, Eddie. I'm glad you said that. Now, do you think American boxing is the best boxing in the world? Uh, no. You don't think American boxing has been the best boxer in the last 20, 30 years? You don't think? American oh, yeah, yeah. Boxing? I mean, that, well, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. The best, you said, there's some good fighters in the other country, though. But, yeah, it's been all in all the best boxers have came from America. So why every time the last 20, 30 years, anytime some uh, the mention of somebody not ducking or not fighting somebody, why is it always an American fighter being mentioned as far as being ducked? Where is that narrative coming from where the only – because I'm going to tell you right now, we can't name no other people from other countries that duck. And I know guys that duck from other countries. But why is it that we always got to be the one that be the shovel for the dirt? Like, we the ones who always got to be the ones where if, if it ain't Boots, if Boots don't fight Terrence Crawford and this person, well, he ain't – that ain't it. Do you know that Boots is the mandatory for uh, Earl Spence for the last two to three years? And then, yeah, turn, mm -hmm. then turn around, Tim Zoo's been the mandatory for Charlo. And then last year, as soon as Terrence Crawford wins, people says he need to fight Charlo and Spence mandatories. And he just came up for 135, what, set, uh, five, six, seven years ago? This is a mm -hmm. smaller man. This ain't no big man that's came up. This man came up. He's a smaller stature guy. He was a guy that they, they just said he was Charlo was too big for him. Why would I sit up here and listen to people who just said Charlo's too big for uh Jamel Charlo, not Jamal Charlo? They said Jamel Charlo's too big for Terrence Crawford. He's too much. Now they won't even mention him in the same sentence with him. They leapfrog Charlo. They go to Jerron Ennis. Now all of a sudden, Jerron Ennis better than Charlo. He better than Spence. And all these other guys, he better than Terrence Crawford. But for some reason, Terrence Crawford, the only one who's getting mentioned with Jerron Ennis, when at the first place, Jerron Ennis, was at 47 before Terrence Crawford even got there. And now, all of a sudden, Jerron Ennis, the only name that they're mentioning with him is Terrence Crawford. People won't even admit that Terrence Crawford's the best right now. They still trying to say that Jerron Ennis the best because Terrence Crawford ain't jumped in the ring with him. Well, we it, think about it. We don't know who the best is. Well, we can speculate. That, that's why you got to fight the fights. And as far, and, as, Errol, and, as, far as Errol Spence, the PBC, you know, PBC, you, you know how they operate. You, they, you know how they do business. You know what I'm saying? So that's why a lot of times we don't get the fights that we want because the promotion companies won't get together and make the fights that we want. The promotion company don't care what we want. It's what they want. It's the fans you, you, that's pushing this crap. I'm telling you right now. The fans is pushing this crap. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you, Eddie, I know this. The, pan, the fans is pushing this crap. I'm telling you. Because I wouldn't even lie to you. I ain't got no reason to lie. I, just, I, I started live off by saying, you know what I'm saying? It ain't no reason to go to hell over boxing. Whether you a child coming into this world, you 13, 14, hey, if somebody want to win the conversation that bad, hey, dead it right then and head the other way. 
Mm-hmm. It ain't no reason to lie over no box. I ain't nobody. It ain't that serious to go to hell, though. And I, but I've been saying for the last five years, hey, match room, they trying to get fighters from America. No, no, they ain't big enough. They ain't big enough. They ain't big enough. They ain't doing nothing. They ain't trying to do nothing. I said, PBC ain't trying to do nothing with Terrence Crawford. It's hard to get right. a fight at PBC right now. Mm-hmm. Everybody else, oh, he need to leave. Terrence Crawford, dog. Let me tell you something, Eddie. And this is where the converse, where uh people that you you can't argue this. Nobody can. I can't argue this. Terrence Crawford, the only fighter in boxing that's doing everything the fans ask him to do. If anybody want to argue that point, we can argue right now. Terrence Crawford is the only fighter that left top rank when everybody said leave top rank. He's the only fighter that sit around, went to Spence directly. Hey, man, let's make a fight like this. Boom, 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 boom. Have, have, ain't you noticed that ain't nobody went on the internet or Twitter and made Instagram? Terrence Crawford ain't go on Instagram live until he was making a fight about uh, that. Why everybody was looking like why is Terrence Crawford on Instagram live? He didn't go on Instagram li- live until after he talked about Spence. I mean, talked to Spence on the phone after all these years. All these years, Terrence Crawford could have been playing games, but he he jumped on there and talked to Spence. Hey man, they trying to do this and this and this and this. Oh, okay, let me talk back to you. Do you realize that Spence, they made the fight months after Terrence Crawford talked to Spence? But people don't yep. give Terrence Crawford that credit. They'll say Terrence Crawford ducked in and he was forced into a situation. How he was forced to, to beat another man down? Give another man a bloody face. How, is he, how was he? Well, yeah, that, you know, that fight, over, that fight was overdue, though, man. That fight was, you know, that fight should have been happening, man. Well, yeah, well bro, overdue. His prime, though. Terrence Crawford, 36 years old right now. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how hard it is to find a 36 year old man who got kids and responsibilities. This man got kids that's almost grown, man. He got a big family. He's taking care of at least 50 people right now. I'm gonna disagree with with Errol Spence being in his prime, man. I'm I'm gonna disagree no. with that. I'm gonna disagree. He ain't with in that. his prime. Nope. He ain't in his prime. No. Nah. Oh he, oh he, oh he, oh he, hey, 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 he shouldn't, he shouldn't know, he shouldn't have never been mentioned with Terrence Crawford. That's what, you, that's what you're telling me. He should have. No, no, I'm not saying that. No, no, I'm not saying that. No, 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 no. You, won't, you won't let me finish. You won't let me finish. You, you, you cutting me off. I'm gonna tell no, you, everybody's, everybody's prime is different. You got some guys who, you know, 30 is, is old. You got some guys that are 28 that are past their prime. It depends on how you take care of yourself. Are you, how much you get hit in the gym? How much sparring do you do? The type of lifestyle that you live, like Oscar De La Hoya, for instance, Sugar Ray Leonard, at thirty-four, he was done. He was he was past his prime at thirty-four years old. You know, he was on the decline. Some guy, you know, Bernard Hopkins was on the he was on the upscale at thirty-three years old. He was going up. Oscar De La Hoya, thirty-three, thirty-four, he was on the way down because they lived when you live a certain lifestyle as a boxer, all this cocaine, smoking weed. Drinking and that that ain't that ain't got nothing to do with Terrence Crawford. That's Errol Spence's fault. He the one that was out there living like that. He the one who who decided who decided to you know to crash his car and go through a windshield and knock himself out and knock all the teeth out of his head. So you, I don't care what anybody say. I ain't taking no credit away from uh Terrence Crawford, but facts are facts. You but, there's no way there's no way in the world that you can lead that you can exit a car over a hundred miles an hour and be the same person that you were before you exited that car. It's, it's it's humanly impossible. Something's gonna you you're gonna be different. You're not gonna be the same guy. You can't smash your head up against the pavement, knock all your teeth out, and be unconscious for you know for however long he's unconscious and be the same That's guy. True. That's true. But you, Eddie, you gotta you gotta understand this though. That don't got nothing to do with Boots Ennis. You understand me? That don't got nothing to do with Boots Ennis. See this see the scenario is we try to flip it into the injury about Spence. That ain't got nothing to do with hopping in the ring with Jerron Ennis. If you can nah, hop in the ring with Terrence Crawford, you can hop in the ring with Jerron Ennis as a mandatory. When he fought D- Danny Garcia, he was supposed to fight Jerron Ennis. When he I fought agree Luka, with that. He was supposed to fight Jerron Ennis. He I was agree. Gonna go, he was going to go and try to fight Manny Pacquiao because him and Keith Thurman, that situation went south and Keith Thurman lost the belt. They was going to have Keith Thurman fight uh, Earl Spence. But everybody ain't as good as everybody thought they was. So dudes started losing to Manny Pacquiao and Ugas. But I don't know mm-hmm. why people ain't start question, questioning that then. You know what I'm saying? Dudes was going 12 rounds on Mikey Garcia. Wasn't nobody questioning nothing then. I told everybody I around me. I, I knew what time it was. I knew Errol Spence. Like, I, I knew he was a good fighter, but I know he wasn't what people made him out to be. 
But this ain't no about, ain't no way in the world you're supposed to go to around Mikey Garcia. Chance Crawford would have just Chance Crawford would have just Chance Crawford would have destroyed Mikey Garcia. Would have been a destruction. Facts. And he was hunting him down. I tried to tell everybody about that around that time. Yeah. I shot Jay Will. I tried to tell everybody around that time. And shout out to Eddie, man. Eddie know what he's talking about. He's just looking at it from a different uh point of view. And I'm trying to uh let Eddie know, Eddie. Ain't nobody walking around uh boxing with a resume like uh Earl uh like Sean Porter. The the oh, resume, Sean Porter got great resume. Let me tell you something, Eddie. The resume Sean Porter got, he should have a hundred million dollars in the bank. This is why this is why Sean Porter don't want to fight nobody. And I don't want to put his business out and he don't want to say it, but I'm gonna say it for him. And I'm gonna get this video might get shut down for this. Shout out to uh, Jay Will, man, my dog, and uh Teron. But um he don't want to. Triple G came over here, fought Canelo three times. He ain't never sold a pay per view. He ain't right. need a, a big fan base. He ain't never sold a pay per view on his own. He ain't never made another person uh, uh, uh millions of dollars like Canelo did. He rolled Canelo coattail. Sean Porter could have did the same thing as Triple G did. Rolled Canelo coattail. He could have had a draw and two losses just like uh, Triple G did, and made a hundred million dollars. Triple G came over here and made a hundred million dollars. Ain't even from this country. He sold the same amount of pay per views you have, and everybody and don't got a resume that stack up to half of what Sean Porter did. He came over and made a hundred million dollars. Why would Sean Porter jump in the ring with Jerron Ennis and give y'all a basically a free fight when that money gonna be gone after taxes? Why would I give y'all a free fight when y'all already got and with the resume I got now? You telling me I'm ducking Jerron Ennis? I fought Devin Alexander, Pauli Malignaggi in 2014. Kel Brook, I fought him 10 years ago. Uh, Adrian Braun in 2015 in his prime. Keith Thurman in his prime. Andre Berto in his prime. Adrian uh, Granados in his prime. And Adrian Granados ain't been the same since. Danny Garcia, uh, basically in his prime. Jordanis Ugas, he ain't been the same since that Sean Porter fight. And Sean Porter boxed him in that fight. Everybody said he lost. Then in 2019, Sean Porter go to uh Earl Spence Jr. Everybody said Earl Spence, uh Earl Spence gonna stop Sean Porter. I said no, Sean Porter ain't how Sean Porter gonna get stopped. He ain't never been stopped before. And guess who the only person that stopped? Guess who the only person that stopped Sean Porter on that whole resume? Well, I'm a, I'm a Tan Crawford, but I'm gonna say Ken, I'm gonna say Kenny Porter stopped him too. Cause he could he could have continued, but his dad was his dad wasn't with it, man. I'm glad you, know, you said and, that. I'm glad you said that, uh, uh, Eddie. I'm glad you said that, and I appreciate you for being honest. And I and salute to you, brother. I, I respect everything you talking about, and I respect your support you gave me. Um, but what I'm saying about this is, Sean Porter was getting whooped worse than uh Rolly Romero was against Eastside Cruz, and they just stopped that fight. And I told everybody, why are you stopping that fight? Oh, I'm worried about Rolly Romero's life. His life on the line. I'm worried about his life. I'm worried about his life. How you worry about Rolly Romero's life? But with Sean Porter, you wanted him to continue. Now hold on, now, now, now before before that or before the Sean Porter got stopped, I don't know what the official scorecard was. That was a competitive fight, and they he told us, said, "Bud, you remember said, Bud, you losing." That what his corner said. Said they got you losing. And he was like, "What? They got me losing." And then he went out there and, and handled business. You know, he put the man down two times. You see what I'm saying? But. It wasn't like Bud was dishing out no one-sided butt whooping during that fight, man. That wasn't no one-sided butt whooping. He beat the brakes. He beat the brakes off of Errol Spence. That Sean Porter fight wasn't nowhere near Sean the Porter. punishment that Errol Spence took. Eddie, you know how hard it is. Eddie, I done been in combat before. You know how hard it is to fight your friend. Mm-hmm. Do you know how hard it is to fight your friend? Yeah. I don't think you understand that. I don't think I don't think y'all look at that the same way. As everybody else, do you know how hard it is to fight a man you've been walking around 10 years asking how your family doing everything? You know how hard it is to fight a man like that for a check? Mm-hmm. I don't think y'all understand that. I don't think people understand that when they say that oh Sean Porter shit did this and Terrence Crawford wasn't doing that much. How is Terrence Crawford gonna destroy a man who from the same country as him, representing the same team USA as him, same flag on been through nationals and amateurs and competition? Sean Porter's dad knows uh Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford almost fought Ter uh Sean Kenny Porter when he was a kid. Yeah, yeah, like I said, his, his dad stopped he, his dad stopped the fight, man. 
Yeah, so why would he not fight Sean Carter? We are man, come on, they cool. I, I I expected that fight to go that way. And let's be honest, after what Sean Porter brought to the table, after at, with the resume he got, if anybody questioned his integrity or his father's integrity, then that shows me that people don't really appreciate boxing like that. We we don't value us. Let me tell you something else. If Sean Porter was from Germany or Mexico, Eastside Cruz ain't got half the resume uh uh Sean Porter got. And I and he got losses. Ain't nobody gonna disrespect him like that, are they? Nope. So, hey, you know, you gotta remember though, like Sean Porter and his dad, they was having problems in camp. And you know, they said you know, they didn't they didn't talk for a while after that fight because one reason that Kenny Porter stopped that fight to show Sean Porter basically that he was the boss and that you ain't been listening to me in camp. I'm gonna stop the fight on you. And, and I think Kenny Porter kind of and even uh yeah. Sean kind of alluded to that, said, you know, me and my dad, we, we weren't on the same page in camp and stuff. And he mm -hmm. Cause Sean wasn't, he wasn't like, yeah, he got dropped, but was he like hurt out on his feet? No, yeah, he wasn't out on his feet, you know, and he wasn't like to the point where he couldn't continue, but cause he, he jumped right up. You know what I'm saying? And his dad mm -hmm. was like, nah, and he didn't, he didn't even want to fight. He didn't even want to talk to his dad after that fight. Cause he's like, man, you stopping the fight. Cause you let your ego get in the way, you know? So they kind of fell out a little bit after that fight. Yeah, they did. They did. I, I, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, they ain't. I, I don't. I don't know their personal relationship or nothing like that. But yeah, you're right about that. It really ain't been the same type of energy as it was around that. Shit. That's why I'm saying like people don't understand. It's like that's his son. You know what I'm saying? So the first time that he know his son, and he like, I know my son ain't finna cut through and do this. Like mm -hmm. when it's Lavar Ball and all these other guys, it's cool and everything else. You know what I'm saying? But like when it's Kenny Porter, it's the first time he did this in 30 years, and now everybody like, oh man, he a sucker. Like we, the, the the when we question certain uh boxes in America, we don't know how disrespectful that is. It's so disrespectful to question an American boxer when these dudes. Triple G, if I read his resume out, you ain't gonna know none of these guys on that resume. Nah, nah. He, like he, 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 was, he, was, he, he was what they call, I kind of like in the rap, uh, boxing is wrestling. You, they, you know, the guys that, you know, that are popular, they get the push, you know, they like to glamorize them. They like to put them on the forefront, tell you this guy's a killer, tell you, you know, nobody can beat him. He's indestructible. He's a, he's Superman. He's a the Terminator. You know, he's, he's that's everybody. What I'm trying to tell you. That's what I'm trying he's to tell you. He's ramble, like what they did with Canelo. Like, a lot of people get on me about Canelo. Let me tell you something. About Canelo is a manufactured fighter, man. Can he fight? Yes. But Canelo has uh, 19 people on his resume with losing records. Let that sink in. Mm -hmm. 19 people. Then on that, he got about five or six guys on the resume that was over 30, 36, 37, 38, 40 years old that, they, that everybody gave him credit for. I ain't giving you credit for being a 40-year-old man because you're old. In boxing, you old man. Now, yeah, you have guys, you know, that defy logic like Bernard Ivan, but at the end of the day, 40 years old in boxing, you ain't you. Mm -hmm. That you is ancient true. fighter. And they get a man credit for that stuff. They give him credit for this. They they give him credit for putting weight stipulations on people. They give him credit for, you know, these fights that don't look real. You know, the Sergey Kovalev fight looked fake, like a fixed fight. You get mm -hmm. credit for that. You know, uh, Charlo, Jamel Charlo, that fight was suspect. Never seen Jamel Charlo act like that. Now all of a sudden he's Mr. Nice Guy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, man. You know, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of fool gazing, a lot of trickery going on in the sport of boxing, man. But uh, like I say, back to boost and it's real quick. The point I was want to make: yeah. Yeah, the kid can fight. The kid can fight. Absolutely. He deserves an opportunity. He deserves an opportunity. Now this is Terrence Crawford. You know, if you a champion, if I'm your mandatory, either you can fight the mandatory, you can fight somebody else. That was the whole purpose of having the mandatory. Was to make the champion fight the guys. It's to get, to get somebody who worked their way up as a contender a shot at the title. This man's 30, like what, 30 and 0, 31 and 0. That's a mm -hmm. lot of fights. He deserves a title shot. He, he, he deserves a title shot. Now, this is this is a, 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 a Marvin Hagler Mugabe moment. Can Tan mm -hmm. Crawford, being an older guy, you know, look, maybe not, you know, quite the same. I mean, he's still good, but he's 36. That's a reality. Mm -hmm. Can you beat? Can you beat the up and coming, young, hungry challenger that everybody's saying is a beast? 
you know, the same thing they did. With, but, but, but what Marvin Hagler did with the John Beast Mugabe, he beat him, even though he was the younger guy. Mom said, hold on, I'm going to show you. So, I mean, I know Chan Crawford, he he feel like, you know, he's been blackballed throughout his career. Yeah, he has been done wrong to a certain extent. But at the end of the day. So, hey, 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 oh, oh, it, 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 yeah. oh, not just Terrence Crawford. Boost, Ele Boost, Boost Energy just got on, brother. That's what it is. That's yeah. what this is. Boost Energy just got on. This is what it's live about. Boost Energy yeah, yeah, is gone. Did, yeah. He is gone, brother. He is out of here. He mm -hmm. is out of here. All these people talking about Terrence Crawford needs to sign the PBC. I'm going to go back to my original point, Eddie. Terrence Crawford is the only fighter out here doing what y'all asking him to do. Bro, do you know that Terrence Crawford made a fight in his backyard with Black Prime? People think Black Prime are joking all that. Made $10 million, though, man. Exactly, Eddie. You know that. that. That's, that's, that's good. That's good paper. That's good money. Eddie, Eddie. Hey, what else I said, Eddie, recently? Um, And it's a good point. You'll understand it because you're an older man. Eddie, you know how hard it used to be to uh, get them pay per views back in the day. Yeah. When Mike was fight, when Mike was fighting, you know exactly. you can't call, you can't get on no internet and do it. You had to call them folks. Yeah, you had to, you had to pay it. Either, but I think it was for it was thirty nine, forty nine dollars. I think that's what they was running back then. And you had to call them, be like, hey, is it working or is it locked up? You know, remember when all that was going on? That some people didn't get it in time as far as the fight when it was happening. They'll get it the next day and try to watch it then. It was a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff going on, and people don't understand that. But Mike Tyson to get around here and get six hundred, I mean, uh, two million people, how many people it was, a million to get on the phone and do a pay per view. That's when people really respect what you're doing. These fighters these days, they don't understand what it takes to make a pay per view fight. Everybody went doing pay per view back in the day. Everybody's not, you know that, Eddie. Everybody went doing pay per view back then. They went, we nah, went. Yeah. We didn't have yeah, money yeah, like yeah, that to pay per view. Yeah, every fight's not a pay per view fight either. Back I then? mean, every time, every time you know, my every time Mike Tyson fought, he was it wasn't pay per view. I remember seeing Mike Tyson fight on HBO boxing plenty of times. Hey, Roy, I mean, uh, was, was Roy was Roy Jones pay per view back then, Eddie, or was he HBO? He, he had he had a couple pay per view fights, but a lot of them was on was on HBO. Just so uh, HBO championship wasn't. boxing. Facts. Yeah, uh, same saying, same man. thing with same thing with Holyfield. He fought on Showtime. See yeah, what I'm saying? Then he, fought, he fought Riddick Bow, you know, that, that was pay-per-view. But every time these guys laced up, it wasn't a pay-per-view. Now these guys think every time they put the gloves on, they're supposed to make $20 million, and that ain't how it works. And I think that's what Tanner Crawford going to he got it. He got to realize, bro, every time you put the gloves on, you're not going to make $30 million, man. It, it don't work like that. I don't think it's just with him. I think the situation, With all of them. I think the situation with the app got them in a situation. Because now people ain't noticed it, but PVC gonna be doing fights once a month. It ain't gonna be no two fights a month in January. It's gonna be one fight a month. They got one fight in uh in uh April. Uh, what the, the Tim Zoo fight? That was technically an April fight because it was March 30th. Mm -hmm. They got the Canelo fight in May. Then yep. you got the um the, the Tank fight in June. They only doing fights once a month, so it ain't gonna be a. That's why everybody talking about yeah, Tim Zoo can fight in July. Brother, they already got a plan. You know what I'm saying? They got they got 600 people they got to worry about. There's a lot of yep. people that ain't going to be able to make, uh, get fights right now. You know what I'm saying? So that's what people don't understand. The app is kind of setting everything up because what 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 PBC should have done was they should have put a lot of fights together before the app situation came around. Then we'll have a clearer picture of, okay, Jerron Ennis is here. He's here. He's here. He's there. Now it's building up so much that the loss is going to mean a lot more now than it would back then. Because they're trying to make every fight a mega fight. Every fight not gonna be a mega fight. I think I, I feel like they've lost more mega fights trying to wait on fights or trying to build them up than actually making them fast. Because imagine yeah, okay. if uh Charlo would have fought uh Crawford last year after the um if, if Charlo would have fought Tim Zoo, then he would have went and fought Crawford after uh Crawford fought Spence. And then Canelo would have I mean, then, then um David Benavidez would have fought Mungi around that time. And see, that, that, that's a, my fault. That, that's another thing, though. You said Charlo, right? Look how, uh -huh. look how quick, look how quick they stripped that man. But the, the, the meanwhile, his brother done had the belt for two years. Ain't been stripped yet. They stripped Charlo almost immediately. That man don't have no belts. It took all this man belts. Yeah, you see exactly. what I'm saying? And, 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 that, I'm, be, and I'm gonna be honest with you. The reason why they did that is because uh, what's the other guy that just fought the Bakaram guy? 
He been yeah. waiting on a call on mandatory since like two since the shutdown. You know, Charlo wasn't fighting during the shutdown. Step the Costano. When they wanted Harrison fight the second one during the shutdown, wasn't it? And yep. then he fought Costano. So the dude was waiting since Tony Harrison fight. And he just fought recently. So he been getting step aside money the whole time. So Charlo already had a leash. He was supposed to fight Tim Zoo a long time ago. He waited so long that they more mandatory. Because Tim Zoo wasn't the first mandatory he was supposed to fight. It was the other guy. So by the time everybody heard about Tim Zoo, he had, Charlo was already a year in on his a year or two in on his mandatory. He already had. That's why. Well, I see, was about, huh, go ahead. But they, they looking at Charlo because they looking at Charlo. He's not a big draw. See, if he was a big draw, he wouldn't have been stripped. Because he, he's sanctioned by it, they too inconsistent. If Charlo was a big mech, a big star like Canelo, they wouldn't have stripped that man. They they would they would have let him hold on to them belts. If they try to they try to get some new blood in. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's what they try and do, but they don't understand. Like uh, Eddie, they don't they don't think the uh, the old uh, the old kind of recipe. They think they don't work no more. Like you know how they don't they don't think that they don't think that. Nah, that, that old no recipe. More. Yeah, that old recipe is it, 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 it don't work no more, man. I think it will because let me tell you why, uh, Eddie. That's what Tim Zoo and Fedora just did. I'm telling you, Eddie. I don't. I don't post Tim Zoo on this channel. I want to get some views. I want to talk about Spence and Crawford and all that. I post Tim Zoo because I know he want that work. Yeah, he, he want, want the work. work. I know what it look like. He want the work, but at the end of the day, man, he you know, they, they 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 got they got they pay per view didn't do good. They, they only sold for what I'm hearing about about thirty. You know about, but see that. That's what the thing is. Everybody want to get paid, man. All these guys, these guys at the top, they want to get paid. That's why we're not getting the fights that we want because everybody want these astronomical figures, man. You know what I'm saying? And it just the money just not there. It's it just not there. I mean, if you look at the pay-per-view. You know, you can steal the pay-per-view, all, all this piracy. And I'm going to tell you another thing that hurt the pay-per-view. Got a lot of YouTube channels that do these fight parties. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of guys just tune in and listen to the fight party. You see what I'm saying? And you know, you got the fire stick. Then you got guys that are post a, post a fight on YouTube when the fight is over with. And a lot of these fights, you know, they're just not pay-per-view worthy. You know, you want me to spend $80 or $90 for, you know, uh, Joe Blow and whatever and, and the freaking guy that works at Taco Bell. I mean, I ain't, I ain't downgrading a guy like that, man. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. though, some of these yeah, guys yeah, ain't, ain't pay-per-view fighters, man. Yeah, it, it, you, you, that's that's true. But Eddie, uh, Eddie, that's facts though. Eddie speaking facts. But Eddie, understand me when I say this too. And um, uh, I was saying this recently because a lot of my lives kind of come together, but people don't understand because I don't know the way I put it. It's kind of different. But we got to understand, man. And I had to tell uh some of my folks this other day, and we had a live a long chat about this. I gave a lot of game on the Mike Tyson lives. If you go back and look. Mike Tyson sold 1.6 million pay-per-views of Roy Jones Jr. during the shutdown. I think that was 2021 or 2020. Yep. He stole 1.6 million pay-per-views. 1.6. Then I'm going to tell you something else, Eddie. When he did the pay-per-view, right, they didn't brag about the 1.6 million uh, pay-per-views. You, you noticed that, right? Yep. They didn't brag about it. You know, usually somebody would be like, hey, we, got, we sold 1.6. On the couch with no crowd. Mike Tyson didn't have no crowd, sir. And he sold 1.6. You know why he sold that 1.6, Eddie? And Eddie. Because it's star like power. Eddie. No, Eddie, you know this. Eddie, Eddie know this better than all y'all do. Eddie, you know this, Eddie. When Mike name on the card, Eddie, what that mean? Man, that mean action, man. Oh, and that, what that mean, Eddie? It's gonna be a, it's gonna be what? You gonna get your gonna be some, and whoever said hey, man, I wasted my money. Yeah. Whoever said don't that get, don't get your money worth. Exactly, exactly. That's what the recipe is, Eddie. That's why I'm gonna give you. I wasn't supposed to put this out, but I'm gonna put this out though. That's why they call him Pitbull Cruz, the Mexican Mike Tyson. Not because mm -hmm. he's undefeated. Not because they think he a boogeyman. 
it's because he get in the ring with people they want to see him in the ring with. They know he fighting good competition. They ain't never called Canelo the Mexican Mike Tyson. You understand what I'm saying? They don't want to. I told people this. I put out thousands of videos talking about this. Mexico don't want no Floyd Mayweather. They want a Mexican Mike Tyson. Period. And I've already told That's people this. Mike Tyson sell pay per views. You better do do two things when you get uh like Mike Tyson. You better do two things. You better be real because Mike Tyson's honest. That's the way he acts. That's right. You better come to the fight and let your hands fly. Nobody cares that Mike Tyson got dropped. All this other stuff. We want to see your hands fly. And I say this all the time on the channel. That's why I wait. what Eastside Cruz do, uh, Eddie. He let his hands fly and he got losses like Mike. Nobody care about that. These new fighters, they enamored because they think the recipe from Floyd gonna work for everybody else. That don't work for yeah, everybody else. Yeah, that take a lot of energy work, too. Man. You know that. That take a lot of energy that, and money, Eddie. Yeah, a lot of a du- lot of ducking and cherry picking and being selective too. Shoot, that ain't gonna. Hey, people don't look at Floyd the same way they look at Mike Tyson. Floyd ain't gonna be able to sell fights at fifty the way Mike Tyson uh, can. Y'all don't understand that. Mike Tyson can get up at fifty seven and sell a fight. Floyd Mayweather can't. The, plo- the closest person can that can probably is probably Pacquiao, but I feel like he's giving out too much right now, but he's still selling. So people don't understand. It's The recipe is they want to see fights. The name thing, the name is wearing out. That's why Canelo's not really around like that no more. Yeah, he ain't popping, man, because everybody know, he, everybody see, you know, he's been exposed, man. He just be, Canelo just be cherry picking, man. He's passed. He he paid five years. That dude ain't doing them cherry picking, man. Then you got uh Charlo off an of injury. Charlo was uh, coming off an of injury too. Canelo, like I was injured. Yeah, you got off guy off an of injury too, though. And he was a smaller Charlo. And then Eddie, you know what's crazy? When, when he announced that Charlo fight, everybody, I know you did. We were like, man, he gonna fight big Charlo. But when he sw- yeah. sw- switched to the smaller Charlo, we like, what? What is Canelo doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But when they man, ain't question he- that, when they ain't question yeah. that, it went bad. Go ahead, Eddie. Yeah, like I said, he could have fought all, he could have fought a lot of people. I mean, he could have fought you take even Demetrius Andrade fight. That fight wasn't supposed to happen, man. No, that wasn't um, no, 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 no. Andrade, that Andrade didn't just, he just needed the money, man. That's why he took that fight. He was supposed to fight Jamal Charlo, but Jamal, but Jamal wasn't ready yet. So he was yeah. like, Man, shoot, last show, showtime, man. They gonna gave the man two million dollars guaranteed. Mm-hmm. He said, Man, I'll take it, man. I didn't I didn't need the bread, man. And people realize now that and Eddie, I'm glad Eddie said that Eddie's a very smart man. I respect Eddie. Uh, because Eddie, um, what Eddie is explaining right now is my whole video, and I'm glad Eddie said that. Eddie explaining everything I'm saying. My whole video was about um, and I'm glad you said I don't know if you seen it earlier, Eddie, but uh, I'm gonna pull this up on the screen. But a couple of years ago, Demetrius Andre, when he was gonna sign with match when he signed with Matchroom, I was telling everybody, I said, Man, Eddie Hearn trying to get all the American talent right now, right? Because you know, around that time he signed. I think Danny Jacobs got signed first. Yep, Danny Jacobs. Then it was uh, even though this date said 2019, I think that was around 17 that he signed. It was Danny Jacobs. Then he signed uh Boo Boo Andre. And around that time, after Boo Boo Andre Eddie, Canelo and Triple G signed. See, yep. people don't understand that Canelo signed with the zone when they ain't have nothing but uh tr- uh Danny Jacobs and uh Demetrius Andre. They fight did. Yes, they signed Demetrius Andre so he could be with Canelo. But when the yep. fans was clamoring more for Charlo, Canelo said, Oh, I don't have to fight these certain guys because the fans ain't really asking for it. So now people are trying, they're in a position now where Canelo 33 years old. Now they're trying to ask him for fights they should have asked him for at 26. And now he's looking at everybody else, like, why are y'all changing up what y'all been saying all these years? And now with Matchroom, it comes back to Jerron and it's signing with Matchroom. Everybody said Terrence Crawford need to go to PVC so he can get a deal. But it, now we see going to PVC don't guarantee you no fight. That's why I'm saying I'm glad Jerron Ennis made this move because he proved now Terrence Crawford going to PVC doesn't guarantee you a fight with Earl Spence or nobody. That man had to leave. And, and, and look, and Eddie, he in a position now where people going to call him a duck now because – when Terrence Crawford did the same thing, now fans think that's called ducking when you try to go get more money in, in, in with match room. Well, let's say the only way to be a duck, but uh, with Jerron, he did the right thing. 
because now he he get active. First of all, I know Jerome. I know now instead of get being a six figure fighter, he now a seven figure fighter. That's a good move. Every mm-hmm. fight that he fight, he gonna get at least a million dollars or more. So you can't you can't knock a man for doing that. Not only that, he's in a position now. He's with a plat. He with a platform and a network and a promoter who can offer Terrence Crawford the amount of money that he wants to make the fight. So now there is no more excuse. And they say, look, man, we can guarantee you fifteen, twenty million dollars for this fight. Now, if Terrence Crawford d- turn that down, I consider that a duck. If, if somebody offer you twenty million dollars for the fight and you turn it down, that's a duck to me, man. Eddie, I'm gonna tell you, I'm whether it's a duck or not, I'm gonna tell you something, Eddie. It's gonna be bad news for American box, and I'm gonna tell you why. This last couple of months, what's the what's the I'm gonna tell you something, Eddie. What's the big what's the big what's the biggest fight we got in America this year? Man, this year, it's time, I'm trying to think. Man, I don't know if it's gonna be I don't know, man. Cause we ain't really got that many big fights this year. I mean, you know, you got we got we got tank coming up. Tank Frank Martin, you know that that ain't a big fight. Mm-hmm. It's a it's it's a little, it's a little intrigue to it. You got Devin yeah. Haney and and Ryan Garcia. That's not a it's not a massive fight to me. It's a it's an intriguing fight, but there ain't really no guys out there that's really just just pushing the needle. You know what I mean? Yeah, facts. That's why it's kind of that's why it's at a point right now where people want to see Bruce Ennis in the ring. But we as a, as American fans, we got to understand. We got at this point right now, we got just as much challenge as everybody else. We lost three undisputed fights last year. We can't really risk pushing people in the, into the fire right now because everybody else preserving themselves. And we kind of putting ourselves in the position where we beating up on each other while everybody else coming in the end and swooping up all the belts after we beat up on each other. So that's in the situation that a lot of these fighters catching themselves in right now. It's a lot of guys that don't want to jump into action at 147 until Bruce Ennis make a move with Terrence Crawford. As soon as Terrence, as soon as Boots Ennis make a fight with Terrence Crawford, and let's just say Boots Ennis go out there, go 12 rounds, he lose, split decision, close fight, could be a draw. Now you're gonna see all the 147 guys run around and collect belts and stuff like that. You understand what I'm saying? But see, even at, though, one, if, at 147, even though, ain't really you ain't really got nobody at 147 no more, man. You know what I'm saying? Even though we'll have value in the Terrence Crawford fight, seeing Jerron Ennis and uh Terrence Crawford fight, that'll be the end of uh Terrence Crawford career because he'll retire, but then Jerron Ennis still got to go pick up the pieces and collect the belts at 147, and we know he ain't going to try to stay at 147 that long, and that's the position he's going to catch himself in, and that's what now, people don't understand. Huh? I got not, how, many, how many belts Terrence Crawford? He got two belts, right, at 147? Uh, I think it's two now. I think it's two. two. Okay. I may and be wrong. Who, it's so much going who's on. Who's got one? So who, who, got, who got the other belt then? I think I don't want to be wrong. I think Barrios fight for one. I may be wrong. I haven't looked that up yet. You see, that, that's that's another thing. Like, like you said with the PBC, Barrios, Barrios, and Stanionis at one point in time was supposed to fight Boots Ennis, but they didn't want to fight the guy. They turned it down. And now you look and now you see that they own Canelo undercard now all of a sudden. So the the guy oh, been kind of avoided. The guy been kind of avoided, man. At the end of the day, but uh, I like I like the move to uh match room because, like I say, I think with Jerron Boots and it's with me. It's my opinion. If he can, if he if he's able to get his you know his mouth, his talk game, and his a uh, mouthpiece good like a Roy Jones, we can get out there and really promote mm-hmm. himself. The Boots is he's really a quiet guy, man. You know he's yeah. real. He's not an outspoken. You know he don't talk a lot of trash. You know what I'm saying? He don't really have a big presence on the camera, but he uh-huh. the kid can fight, man. To me, Jerron Emmett, a, he's a walking highlight reel, man. And a guy like that, you can promote a guy like that because he knocks, he gets knockouts. He's he got phenomenal talent. He got speed. Mm-hmm. You know he 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 he's he like Roy Jonas. You know he can showboat a little bit. He can do certain things in the ring that guys can't do. You can promote a guy like that. You can make a lot of money with a guy like that. So maybe Eddie Hearn. I like to see him get with Anthony Joshua a little bit. Maybe they can talk and work on his, you know, his press conference in or, or, or maybe that's just who he is. You know what I'm saying? Just be maybe he can make it just being a quiet type guy, you know, but just being the showman in the ring. But the, the kid got all kind of potential, man. Yeah, I agree with that because uh, it's a lot of guys. Um, they've actually, and I was I was making a point about that earlier, Eddie. Uh, if you notice, you know, a lot of tension around Richard Hitches right now, and you know he's with uh. 
Uh, he's one of the American projects that Eddie Hearn has been working with lately. And, um, you know, even though he got bad press right now, he got a lot of press. You know what I'm saying? I think um, if, if, if Hitchens can get some press like that towards his fight, I think, and I know one thing too. Another thing, Eddie, uh, Boots is a lot bigger than what we think he is right now. It's a lot of people checking for Boots Ennis right now. Oh yeah, it's yeah a, exactly, sir. I'm telling you, it's a lot of people checking for Boots Ennis, and it just got bigger yesterday. It just uh, got bigger, boot. and not only that, you got the zone is going to pick up because Jerron has a lot of people that support him, man. They're going to pick up a lot of subscribers now because Jerron went over there because they, a lot of people thinking just because. He not with the PBC that people are gonna stop supporting him, and that's not true, man. People like this kid, man. Yeah, man. What? Come on. We don't really care about none of that because uh, I feel like at this time right now, Devin Haney's been on the zone. Nobody's really been thinking about the logo. A lot of people have, but that's what I was telling people. Like, that's gonna get you in a lot of trouble because it's a lot of, you know, the fights go either way. Eddie, you know, a couple of years ago, it wasn't that much action on the zone, but. Now they starting to get a lot more things going, and then you got a lot more fighters like Tank reaching out to Eddie Hearn now. I feel like when Tank reached out to Eddie Hearn, I knew right then that somebody like Boots Ennis or something would be over there soon because that just lets me know that the things that they think should be happening, they're more interested in the matchroom side ha happening than the actual uh, what, what's going on at PBC. I mean, that, they're cool with what's going on at PBC, but everybody's not getting the same kind of treatment as other guys. You know, they used, you know, they usually have problems like that in boxing these days. And I'm going to tell you one, another little point I want to make, too. You know, uh, Eddie Hearn is a real promoter. He, he's cut from that cloth that Don King, you know, that Bob Arum. He's cut from that cloth because what a promoter is supposed to do at the end of the fight, he's supposed to be in the ring with his fighter and promoting his guy, saying this is the best thing since life bread right here today, that's standing next to me. That's what a promoter does. You don't never see Al Heyman or anybody with the PBC at the end of the fight promoting the guy like they're supposed to. Don King, when he came in with a champion, he left with a champion. You see what I'm saying? That's how mm -hmm. Don King was. Hey, Don King was going to promote you. Eddie Hearns is a good promoter. He promotes all his guys at the end of the fight. He said, these guys are great. He put, look what he did with Andy Cruz, promoting him, saying that he's great. That's what a promoter does. And I think with uh, I think with Jerron, I think he can actually go over there to the UK. He can build a fan base. I will put him on the Anthony Joshua undercard. Oh, on one of those massive fights, you know, in the one in, you know, O2 Arena or something like that, where you got 50, 60, 70,000 eyes. I put him at the co-main event. That way the people can really get a look at this guy and put him in a highlight type fight, man. Boom. Eddie just said everything I said yesterday. Um, Eddie, uh, I don't know if you know it because I announced this like recently, but uh, Anthony Joshua and Fury going to fight next year in May or March or something like that. 2025. I think it's March. I think it's early March 2025. I have a good idea that they might put uh, Boots Ennis on that undercard with Carter Vian or something. Yeah, I put him on the co-main. Let it be the co-main event. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to be in Saudi Arabia, so they're not really going to. And then another thing, too, um, uh, Eddie, you know this too. They can put some fights with Boots over in uh, UK or over here, or they can do both before that time happens. They can do one fight in UK in the summer, and then another one in America, and then yep. have Boots, Boots jump on the uh, undercard with uh, with Conor Ben. And people will say, "Why would he do that with Conor Ben?" Because right now, if he can get a Saudi Arabia fight with Conor Ben, why would he not take that advantage? And I don't think they're gonna do the Saudi Arabia fight. I mean, a kind of being fight just as some uh, a, he can't get a fight in UK. I don't think they'll do it over here, unless it's a big build up to the point where they know the tickets gonna sell and pay per views. Cause they that's they gonna want to put that on pay per view. So if they can't put that on pay per view alone, just drawing innocent kind of being, they'll stick that on Tyson Fury card. Absolutely. So I think you're right about that. Yeah, I'm sure. I think Tyson Fury. I think he gonna lose the Usyk. I think I think you know he like to use that weight, man. He keep he keep mentioning that weight. He mentioned that weight yesterday. He keep mentioning that weight. He be like, he can't stand that weight. He gonna try to put that weight on him. He gonna have a problem, man. I think he, he is. I think so. And oh, I mean Tyson Fury to me, he's always been a he's a chinny guy. Can't take a punch, man. One thing about Tyson, he been uh, Stephen Steve Cunningham dropped him. It was another fighter before Steve Cunningham. His name was Nevin. Is a white guy. Hit him with an oh, overhand yeah, yeah. right. Mm, I so heard about One that. thing about Tyson Fury, he can't take a shot. 
And Usyk has uh, he has sneaky power, man. He can put you down, man. And uh, I think he's gonna. And plus, like I can say him and them fights with Deontay Wilder. I think both of those guys damaged each other a little bit. They took a lot out of each other. Mm-hmm. So I, I just think Tyson Fury just doesn't have the punch resistance anymore. And I know if he fights Anthony Joshua, Joshua, he's going to sleep. And, and because that, that to me, that style matchup is tailor made. That's the type of style that Anthony Joshua likes. A, a big guy who can't move. That's a recipe for a knockout for Anthony Joshua. He'll be rushing in, and he'll be rushing in too. He, he'll put Tyson Fury to sleep because he's I a big that, target. He's a big yeah, target. You can't miss him. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I agree with Jay Will. I'm not putting too much stock into that Francis and Gano performance. Yeah. What I actually like from uh, Anthony Joshua is what he did in that second Ruiz fight. I went back and watched it. I didn't like it the first couple of times I've seen it. But uh, he's starting to understand space and distance a little bit more now because the first time he fought at uh, – for some reason, man, Joshua, he likes to be very close in with guys. Even though he has long arms, for some reason, he likes to fight like he's 5'11 or something like that. So now he's fighting like his like his size, the man's. He's giving himself more space. He's letting guys, the power, kind of catch guys at the end of the punch. So, mm-hmm. you know, he's, he's basically doing what he needs. And his uppercut, he uses more. That uppercut, he got his mean. I'm telling you, Anthony Joshua got one of the meanest uppercuts. I'm not a huge... A uh, fan of his skills, but the uppercut he got, man, the uppercut to get you out of here. Yeah, yeah but I feel like in uh in the Usyk fight, Usyk's a better inside fighter, so that's gonna give uh Joshua problems. I think Usyk's a better inside fighter than people realize. But also, when when Joshua was boxing, he was giving Usyk problems. So if Tyson Fury goes in here and actually wants to box, and, and he has a lot of motivation right now, he got people dragging him about the Ngannou. I'm telling you too another thing, Eddie, that we ain't recognizing. Uh, Tyson Fury got a lot more different kind of energy behind him since that uh, Engano uh, loss. Man, yep. you see how many interviews he didn't did? Yeah, yeah, I ain't really been following too much. I know he, I know he was embarrassed, man, after that, after that fight, man. He he, he suffered a lot of embarrassment. Man, he can't keep him out the camera now. Ever since Engano lost, he he didn't stay. He 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 can't keep him off the camera now. He stays mm-hmm. in front of it. So now he got a different kind of energy about him. Like, hey, man, you know, shoot, I got a second chance now. Of course, I, I definitely think he's going to take this series. I definitely think he's going to take this series. The way he's been embarrassed, brother, they, they think he a joke over there where he at. Matter of fact, he's been in Saudi Arabia a lot more than he has in the other country he's from. Because right now they think he a joke. They picking Usyk and they picking Anthony Joshua to, uh, to drop him. Yeah, exactly, man. And, it, and rightfully so, man. I mean, to me... I don't want Tyson Fury to get those belts, man. If he get those belts, man, we'll never see him again, man. That oh, no, that'll be done. It'll be a rough. That dude, that dude might take him and hide him up on his bed, man, and it, we, won't, <laughs> we, won't never, we won't never see him again, man. Anybody, have anybody seen the belt? Yeah, no, nah, Tyson Fury got him. That's, that's the last guy I want with all the belts, man. That Hey, that is true, man. Hey, I got to agree with Eddie on that, man. That's the only reason I actually want Usyk to win. I don't know if he's gonna win. Technically, I'm kind of picking Fury right now, but yeah, that's funny. As, that's funny as I don't know what idiot trip, but yeah, hey, uh, Tyson Fury, he'll find a reason to get out of fight in a minute, man. You know what I'm saying? He, uh, I just don't trust that Fury, guy, man. I, I, I don't trust him. Yeah, I don't want to put it all on Joshua again. Be like, Joshua, you gotta do this. Nah, I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Because, like you said, we'll never see those again. I actually want to put Joshua in a situation that'll be better for boxing. I want to see put Joshua in a situation where he got to fight Usyk again. I mean, you know, hey, they say, they say third time's the charm, man. You know what I'm hey, saying? I would <laughs> like to see. Yeah, I, I, me too. I would actually like to see. Uh, I think Joshua should have fought Ruiz and um, Usyk three times. Those was actually some good fights, man. Yeah. I think those are the kind of trilogies people need to actually, even though, you know, and then him and Ruiz was one and one. I know Usyk was uh, 0 2, but those were some close fights. They actually should do more trilogies like that instead of – I think that would have been more – better preparing him for this fight, actually. What about uh, – what you think about Big Baby? You know, he fighting this weekend, um, Big Big Baby. Jared what Anderson. What you think about him? Yeah. And a Jared lot of Anderson, people yeah. – I think he getting better. I think he getting better. I'm not a huge fan fan of him, but I'm going to be honest with you. I think he uh, he getting better, man. He's doing a lot. Uh, he did a lot in that Charles Martin fight. Charles Martin – he did. He did some veteran tactics. He tried to make him. You know, he didn't fold. 
So I definitely seen um Jerry Anderson kind of grow up a little bit in the ring in that Charles Martin fight. That Radinko yeah. fight, he he was very uh professional in that fight. He could have did a lot more better in that fight, but the guy had, you know, he had a tricky style. But right. um, but um, as far as in the uh, Charles Martin fight, but for him to be what 23, 24, yeah, he did an excellent job in that fight. So I'll definitely um. But what I didn't like what he said though, I I've heard a, uh, a guy recently say that people don't, a lot of people don't like his attitude as far as not not saying he has a bad attitude like he's a bad person. They don't like the fact that maybe he'll just hang it up. You know, you can't be in the boxing game like yeah. that. Yeah. That, that's just to be especially a heavyweight. You know that, man. It's some heavyweights yeah. walking around now that'll tell him, "Hey, bro, it's like one shot to the side yeah, of the head." Dude, you want yeah, he um he too he too wishy watch get one breath he talking about retiring then the second breath he talking about he want to fight Wilder like he called him out Wilder now so he want to fight with Deontay Wilder then oh he yeah fight, you know want to fight the, the other guys too a few more guys like Joe Joyce and a few other guys that they mentioned you know what I'm saying that are kind of like you know good competitors but kind of like a gatekeeper type guys but you know so like Wilder I, Wilder I consider him a gatekeeper right now man. Yeah, he got to get himself out of this situation because yeah. uh, a lot of fans, a lot of fans, I'm going to be honest with you, though, a lot of fans don't think, uh, and these fans that don't like, uh, that don't like, uh, these are some of the fans that don't like uh, Deontay Wilder. They think Jerry Anderson don't got a chance against Wilder. But I'm going to tell you another, uh, one, a couple of things that Wilder showed people that last fight, they ain't going to realize, though. He showed that he got a chin. And he showed that uh, he can go 12 rounds after sitting on the couch for a year and a half. Yep. A lot of people can't go 12 rounds. I know it looks sloppy in the fight. That's cool. But a lot of people these days cannot go 12 rounds. A lot of people can't go 12. We just seen a couple of fights recently where guys can go 12 rounds. And guys don't have chins like that. I know people were saying Joseph Parker. And then I'm telling you another thing, too, why people uh, take the Wilder fight a little bit too serious. The dude, the Chinese guy, Zhang, he just looked worse than Wilder did in this fight. And he got two knockdowns. He got two knockdowns. He got two knockdowns. And still came. And still. Bro, I'm telling you. Wilder, Wilder going to make. He going to make a comeback, bro. I'm telling man, he, you. I, I'm the telling only thing, you. Only thing with me with Wilder, man, I looked at him. We fought Parker, man. He looked like a. He looked like a shell of himself, man. You know, everybody kept getting hyped, you know, by the weight. Oh, 213, 213. That's Wilder's best weight. I said, I said, man, no, that man is too light, bro. 213 pounds. He looked, he didn't look like a shell of himself, man. You don't understand, what, I, you understand what I'm saying, though. The man against John, John was 300 pounds and made Parker made him look the, the, the same as Joseph Parker, one of my favorite fighters. I watched these dudes. Yep. Joseph Parker made everybody look like that. Y'all didn't see Joe, uh, uh, John. Look the same way against Joseph Parker. Mm -hmm. You didn't see that. You think you think Wilder did that? Wilder went in the ring when Joseph Parker was fighting uh Jilly John. Why you think John was looking all wore down and tired and he couldn't? He was gassed out of the end and Parker went throwing no. What combinations were Parker throwing in that fight that you was like, ooh? Nah, he just switched his game up, man. He, parked, he just uh, went. Parker. He just went. He just won rounds and went twelve rounds and outgassed the guy. That was yeah, it. Man. And he got off the ground twice. He didn't do nothing spectacular in that. Ain't nothing spectacular about getting dropped twice in the fight. Ain't nothing spectacular about it. Ain't no America. That's why I'm saying in America, ain't no dudes getting dropped twice and winning no fight. Period. Look it up. Tell me who. Well, I know somebody who, but he ain't American, American. Tell me uh, an American that get dropped twice in the fight and, and, and wins. You know, dudes, dude, Joseph Parker been looking trash in his last two fights. He got dropped twice in the last two fights. People, the only reason people were uh, excited because he lasted 12 rounds against Wilder, who knocks out everybody. Yeah. And then, and then people got to realize Joseph Parker made Anthony Joshua look like that. Oh, yeah. yeah Joseph Parker. He, he made Morgan. Andy Ruiz look like that. Joseph Parker ain't no <laughs> bum. He made everybody look like that. That's what people got to yeah. realize. He's a top five he, fighter. So that's run. why Wilder have standards of a god right now because if Wilder goes 12 rounds, you know what I'm saying? It's gonna make it look a little bad, you know. People gonna say he should retire. That's why I've been saying lately. I don't know if everybody noticed. I've been saying lately, if dudes go twelve rounds, they need to retire. 
No, nah, they, they, they ain't fighting no Joseph Parker. They ain't fighting no Joseph Parker though. They not they not bringing up no Joseph Parker. Ain't nobody fighting Joseph Parker type uh, talent these days. Hey, but why? But why? Why to look? Why to look gunshot? To me, he's you know he's look gunshot man. Like he wasn't the same guy. You know, you know he, he ain't fought a long time. He ain't fought a long time. Gone. Yeah, I mean it's like Malik Scott. It like it's like hitting the stuff that it's like Malik Scott trying to change him too much, man. You know, trying to turn him into. This pure boxer, man, and that's not who Wilder is, man. He, he's not. He's not a pure boxer. Facts. That's facts. That's true. But I think that what hurt him the most in that last fight was when he and there's no disrespect towards him, you know. So he can enjoy himself. He's a professional. But when he was like kind of enjoying himself too much before the fight, I was like, ah, uh, I don't know about this. He enjoying himself way too much. Because yeah. if you go Take back and look when he was in Saudi Arabia, go look at type in Wilder in Saudi Arabia. It was in the mall chilling. I'm like, hey, you know what I'm saying? We got fight week coming up. Yeah, and you know, hey, every time you got his girl with him all the time, I say, look, dude, you need to go take your girl, man. You know, leave her at home or sit her in the hotel room or something. I got business to take care of. I can't be out here yeah, boo yeah, booed, booed up with you, you know, every day. I, I got to go fight this guy who's trying to take my head off, man. Yeah, I got to get man. my mind right. You know what I'm saying? Even when Floyd was doing that, we were looking like, man, he lose, man. I'm going to bring up them girls here around. If yeah, Floyd would have lost, we would have been like, "Hey, well, you around all these girls?" So I understand what you're saying with that. Hey, but Floyd, but Floyd got the skills though. You know, he could he could do it. You know, my, Wilder don't have those type of skills. But he he has to land, he has to land that knockout blow on you in order to win. Man, he ain't, Wilder ain't gonna outbox you, man. Oh you no, know? no, not this, not this day. These guys been boxing too long. Yeah, he he got to put that hammer on him, man. He got to drop that that one two. That like Mark Breland had him. Mark Breland had him looking right, man. But see, with Wilder, Wild Wilder didn't want to listen to Mark Breeland. He didn't want to train. He didn't want to run. He didn't want to skip rope. He didn't want to do a lot of stuff. Then when he lost, he threw the man under the bus, man. Come out the man spiked my water. Man, that man didn't spike your water, man. You spike your own water with vodka because you like to drink and you like to smoke. You know what I'm I, saying? Like, I, you can't blame it on know. nobody. I don't know about the uh, water because if you heard uh, recently with uh, Francis Ngannou, he said, man, Leafy and all the other stuff. I'm like, dang, bro. Like, everybody saying this. Man, Joe Foreman said the same thing, man. He said somebody spiked his water, man. That's the first yeah. thing a joke would do when he lose, man. He's looking for excuses. Man, ain't nobody spiked that man water. So, you mean to tell me that this man that you've been with, y'all undefeated, now all of a sudden he just gonna spike your water? For what? Well, how, how did that benefit me, you, you losing? You know what I'm saying? How that don't, that don't benefit me at all, man. You don't know how much money Vegas be having on these fights, dude. Man, ain't nobody spiking that joke of water, man. Bro, uh, uh, Eddie, 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 let me ask you a question. Look, you you looking at the world totally different places, but hey, they got they got they got chemical they got stuff out here that got cancerous uh material in every uh uh pro product that you buy these days. Don't nobody care about. I don't nobody care about no well being and no uh Deontay Wilder. Let's get that out of the way first. They got cancer. They just found out we in 20 that we in the year 2024 where everybody smart as I don't know what. Everybody a genius. But we just they just found out they putting the cancerous material in uh hair relax. They telling girls not to put relaxers in their hair because they got cancerous stuff in them. So why would them same people who's basically related to the people who putting on in the fight? Why would they care about your fight, your water not being spiked. Why would I not spike your water if you just freely run around here drinking water? And then we have guys that have been in the fight game for 40 years. Now, Eddie, you going to tell me that me and you know more than George Foreman and uh, Evander Holyfield? That's what I'm saying. Like, we got a bad habit of questioning uh, American fighters over here about their integrity. I don't know who. That's what I, I it's a, I'm being bro, real. Bro, I mean that 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 right there. That that's an allegation, man. You, you won't. So you, reason why you lost, you say because I spiked your war. You think? That, let me ask you, you a know, question. That, that don't make no sense, man. You can't you, you can't say you can't. You got to have some type of proof or some type of evidence, man. You can't sit up here say I spiked your water, man. Ain't nobody spiked your water, brother. Man, just lost, dog. Let me ask the you man, a question. The, the, let me ask you a question. So yeah. these. Deontay Wilder. So when he before the before the fight happened with uh, Tyson Fury, he had forty three wins, one loss. I mean, forty two wins, one loss. Now he was undefeated first time they fought. No, it's about the second time because you know. Oh yeah, yeah, one oh, loss. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. He was undefeated. You're right, you're right. He was undefeated. 
I'm tripping because it was a draw. So he was yep. 43 and 0 and one and one draw. Right. So he had 40, 43, 42 knockouts, right? 43 mm -hmm. knockouts. Right. 42 knockout, 43 knockout. So he knocked out everybody he ain't been in the ring with. Yep. So you tell me they won't spike a man in water who they knocked out everybody he ain't been in the ring with? I'm talking about, I, I ain't talking about just the name Deontay Wilder. You telling me, and I hate to take it here, you telling me a black man in this world can't get his uh, water spiked who's 43 and 0 and one draw? And we know hey. all the stuff that comes out about how dirty sports is now and how dudes hey. is on steroids and all this stuff the past years. Have you, I, have I, you I, seen lately how big Conor McGregor has been? I, mean, I, don't guess even look any, like the same person. I guess anything is possible, man, but I don't believe that his water was spiked. Do you I, hear I, that I people saying that John Jones does steroids and he's on cocaine? We well, you know your fighters always done drugs, man. That's nothing new. Just like, but see, you got you got to remember. Wilder man don't like train, man. I'm telling you, I know, man. I know Wilder. Wilder, Wilder used to come to my gym before he even became champion, man. Uh huh. You uh, know, one thing about Wilder, Wilder, he, if you look, really go look at his record resume. Really go look at it, man. He ain't mm -hmm. really fought no top guys, man. Same thing with Mike Tyson. A lot of people like to, you know, praise Mike Tyson. Love Mike. But at the end of the day, every time Mike stepped up, he lost, man. You know, and that, I'm, that, that ain't no hate. That ain't no shade. That's a fact. Same thing with Deontay Wilder. A lot of them guys that he fought went all that, bro. I, I think up to the biggest point, the biggest win up to that point was Luis Ortiz, which was a 38-year-old fighter, clearly out of his prime. Mm -hmm. You know, clearly was out boxing Deontay Wilder. Had Deontay Wilder hurt. Even the referee gave Deontay Wilder extra time to recover. So there's always some funny business going on in boxing, whether it's a long count, could be some water spiking. I don't, there's no proof of that. You know, I don't believe that. The, I believe that Deontay Wilder fell in love with his power. If you the best version of Deontay Wilder was the version that fought Bermain Stavern, the one that was up on his toes, who was active with the jab and was throwing in combinations. He was the he actually had a left hook then. He actually used his jab. He actually hook off the jab. He Hold actually. On, Hey, let me ask you a question real quick, Eddie. Eddie, hold on. He said, uh, Wilder, one trick pony. Who's not a one trick pony in boxing? I'll wait. Who's Joseph Parker's not a one. Joseph Parker's not a one trick pony. I'm He's able to change. You, I'm glad you brought up Joseph Parker. He's not a what? one trick pony. What's the Anthony Joshua win? showed he's not What's a one trick pony. He was able to get win? up on his toes and box Andy Ruiz. What's the best win Joseph Parker got in his resume? Was Wilder. Oh, Wilder ain't fought nobody, but the best win he got on his resume is Wilder. Oh, nah, okay. you can't. Nah, nah, I ain't saying he ain't oh, fought nobody. I'm saying, but oh, but. oh, hey, what about uh, Tyson Fury? Who the best name on Tyson Fury's resume? Well, they're gonna say Wilder's the best one on his resume. Oh, Tyson, Ty Tyson Fury resume ain't all that either. Oh, so whose resume is all that? What, what, what heavyweight right now resume is all that? Joseph Parker had the best resume uh, out of any out of any uh, heavyweight. How Joseph you got Parker the best? How, because he, he fought because he fought everybody, man. He, that's one thing. Win or lose, he fight everybody, man. Why? You know, it's a lot of guys that Wilder didn't fight that he should have fought. He should have fought Dilly. He should have fought Dilly and White. He should have fought those guys. Eddie, these dudes' resumes ain't like that, brother. I'm, I'm I'm sorry to tell you, Joseph Parker, one of my favorite fighters for a long time. He ain't like what you think he is. Uh, he he got knocked out last uh, two years ago. Got put to sleep by Joe Joyce, and ain't nobody thought about uh Joseph Parker until he jumped in the ring with jo uh Deontay Wilder with twelve rounds. And that's on my mom. That's on my mom. As far as fighting, as far as fighting people, as far as fighting that's everybody. On my mama. That's on my mama right there. Ain't nobody thought about jo uh Joseph Parker. Joseph Parker fought four times, three times last. He Joseph Parker fought four times in two thousand four. I mean two thousand three. Did you know that? Yeah. You know he fought four times last year. Mm -hmm. You knew Joseph Parker fought four, four, four times last year. Yeah, I mean, I follow, I follow boxers. Yeah, I knew he fight. I didn't watch him, but you I knew, he, I knew he fight. Okay, so him getting knocked out by uh, Joe Joyce in eleventh round, that's better than going twelve rounds with than Deontay Wilder going twelve rounds with Parker. So how does Parker get credit for getting knocked out by Joe Joyce? And then, but with Deontay Wilder goes twelve rounds 
with Joseph Parker. That's supposed to be a retirement fight. Man, and then Joseph, all I... Joseph Parker wasn't close on the cards either. I hope you, I hope you know that. He wasn't close in the Joe Joyce fight. He was getting dominated. And yep. then and then he lost to Dillian White. And guess what he did recently? I want to rematch Dillian White. Man, yeah, Dillian. I don't know how he lost to Dillian White, man. That's Joe crazy. Fire, he lost to Dillian White because he ain't like that. He can last 12 rounds and all that other stuff and lean on a skinny guy with skinny legs that everybody say with three, 213 pounds. Leaning on a guy two, 213 pounds and throwing an overhand right. That's not really impressive to me. And I'm a Joseph Barker fan. Hey, but you gotta, you gotta, you you know, you forget that Deontay Wilder is doing. He does a lot of stuff to himself, man. Deontay, did nobody tell Deontay Wilder to smoke marijuana? Did nobody man, tell Deontay Wilder? Man. Did nobody tell Deontay Wilder to take psychedelic drugs? He didn't want hey, doing that stuff, man. Still, I don't even know about all that. All I know about inside the ring. You know yeah, that's that what he, that what he did, man. His, his, his own trainer hey, said he taking hey. that that ayahuasca, or whatever, taking psychedelics, man. Let's even Deontay that. Wilder said he taking psychedelics. So how you hiding the heck you gonna take psychedelics and think you're gonna be uh gonna be successful in the boxing ring, man? Tyson Fury took cocaine and steroids. Ain't nobody questioning that. That's a that's a ridiculous man. Tyson thing. Fury, everybody questions him. Everybody know he a drug cheat, man. How he a drug cheat? You just said you don't know if somebody's spiking water. He, because he failed a drug because he failed he failed a drug test. Come he on, failed man. a drug it's, test, man. Bro, it's promoted, it's promoted on the most wanted most wanted list in America and the world right now. Do you know it's Tyson? It's, his ex promoter is on the most wanted list in America. Yeah, Tyson Fury, he fa he already failed a drug test. Everybody know he failed a drug test. It's a fact. They, they know he failed a drug test. They know he did the uh, cocaine and all that stuff. Brother, Tyson, the the event that Tyson the the event that Deontay Wilder put, brother, you don't even understand the event that Deontay Wilder put on, the the uh the one where he said his white water got spiked. That they had a mob boss. Invested in that fight, you don't even know that. Do you know that uh the mob boss that was helping Tyson Fury, the guy he was getting his stuff from, he was making uh uh he spent like a hundred million dollars and lost in uh, a casino in one day. Yeah, a lot of money. I that didn't means, know that, brother. You don't know what what's behind all this. The dude who's helping Tyson Fury, the guy who he get his investment from, he he spent a hundred million dollars. In a casino in one day, you can look it up. It's an Asian guy. It was a drug dealer. He got caught. He was spending a hundred million dollars in a casino in one night. Money like that. Now people gonna tell me a dude with money like that can't get somebody spot water spot. Bro, hey, man, you, that's all speculation, man. At the end of the day, man. Brother, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm telling you speculation. I'm gonna tell you this right here. I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna tell you this right here. They've been tying folks up in the basement for years when it comes to these sports. This it ain't no games being played around here. When it comes to that money, since Amer America was built off bloodshed and money, blood money, and that ain't gonna never stop. Whether it's a boxing match or whatever it is with Tyson Fury or anybody else. How many times did Deontay Wilder night knock Tyson Fury down? Tyson Fury been knocked down seven times. Deontay Wilder knocked him down two times in the second fight, didn't he? Deontay Wilder knocked him down four times. Okay then. Now, if the fight was so-called fixed, Deontay, if, the, if it was a fixed fight, Deontay Wilder wouldn't have never knocked him down. But you see what I'm saying? He would have never knocked the man down. He knocked the man down twice. I'll, I'll be knocked him. I'll be knocked him out. Eddie, you know, if you want to, if you want to do the long count, Eddie, Eddie, you this, some, Eddie, this is you don't even understand. You don't even understand this. They had Wilder and Fury had three fights. The the one fight that Wilder didn't get a knockdown in. He said he got drugged. For some reason, that don't make no sense to nobody. Nah, he, did, he did get a knockdown in that I fight. I can't convince nobody why Deontay Wilder got two knockdowns in the first fight, two knockdowns in the third fight, but in the second fight where he said he got drugged. Now, let me tell you something. If he would have got drugged, if he went, if he, if he, if he, uh, if he would have went in the third fight and not got any knockdowns, it got knocked down the first round. Nobody would be sitting around. You know what y'all would have been saying? He didn't even get a knock that knockout in the set in the third fight. So how can he be drugged when he didn't he didn't even have power for the third fight? He what you mean? You acting like Tyson Fury getting dropped is normal now because him and Ngannou did it? Because him and Ngannou and uh Steve Cunningham did it. What you need to be asking yourself is 
why is Steve Cunningham and Ganu and uh Steve Cunningham a cruiserweight, a 200 pound guy? Why two 200 pound guys from America is able to knock out a 300 pound heavyweight and everybody else on his resume can't do it? Hey, I've been said that. I told Tyson Fury Eddie, ain't, Tyson Eddie, don't have no chin, man. Eddie, I don't want to get away from the point I just made, brother. I don't, I'm not trying to uh, go off on you or nothing like that. I don't want to get away from the point I just made. This man only getting knocked out by 200 pound Americans and a and an MMA guy. So his resume, Tyson Fury resume, is so good that the only the the only people that can knock him out is skinny leg uh, black guys from America and a, a MMA fighter. What? Who was he? He got in the ring with who? With uh, Watermelon Klitschko? He got in a room. He got in a ring with Klitschko. Okay, why Klitschko can get the, uh, three, two knockdowns like Skinny Leg Wilder could? That's right. Oh, why? Why for Vetkin and all these other guys? Why they can't get in the ring with certain guys and get knockdowns like Skinny Leg Wilder can? If he's such a bum, why? Why, why Joseph Parker ain't fought Andrew uh, uh, Tyson Fury yet? Why we still waiting on Fury versus uh, uh, Usyk? Why is Why is it Ganu fought Usyk? I mean, why hasn't Ganu fought Anthony Joshua and Fury? Do you know this? The only guy, do you know that uh Fury that Ngannou and uh Wilder they fought Tyson Fury before Usyk or Anthony Joshua? Usyk or Anthony Joshua still hasn't fought uh Tyson Fury. Yeah, that's crazy, man. And we talk, we picking that Wilder when all these dudes sorry as hell, Eddie. These all these all these dudes sorry as hell. Eddie Shoot. uh Without Wilder, I wouldn't even know who half these dudes was. I blame I blame Wilder for everything, man. No, I blame, I blame Wilder for making these dudes famous. I blame nah, Wilder ain't made, Wilder ain't blame, made, no, Wilder ain't made no Anthony Joshua famous, man. That man's famous over there. That's, that's what I'm saying. We think this cause in America that you know, America is just the cream of the crop. And, yeah, we do got some good fighter, man, but boxing is a worldwide sport, man. It's Eddie, where, I call, I call boxing, the boxing's always been big in the UK, man. Always, Eddie, even Frank Frank Bruno sell Eddie, sell I, a UK app. I think Andy, I think Andy Ruiz to draw Anthony Joshua. I, this ain't because I uh I thought UK yeah. sports was weak. I think Anthony, I think Andrew Ruiz, brother, getting dropped by Andrew Ruiz is is garbage to me. It's garbage. I don't care how Wilder looked in the uh in uh the Joseph Parker fight. Brother, when you look like I'm gonna tell you something, I'm gonna go down Anthony Joshua resume. And, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm glad you brought up. I'm glad you brought up Andrew Ruiz because Andrew Ruiz he would drop Wilder too because Wilder's trip tonight is short, guys. Every, every time he's ever been hurt was by a guy that was that was six two and six three. Those guys always hurt Wilder. John Molina, which was a goddamn school teacher, had Wilder on Queer Street, Stanky Leg, a math teacher. Andy Ruiz would have would have dropped Deontay Wilder. He would have put him down. I'm glad you said that. Let me go through the let me go through this real quick. I'm glad you said that. You said Andy Ruiz would have dropped Wilder because of what he did to uh Anthony Joshua. I'm glad you said that. The same Andy Ruiz that couldn't drop Joseph Parker. Hey, uh, but, but, but the same the same, uh, the same hold on, hold on. The same the same Wilder who got hurt, who got hurt by by uh by uh, Ruiz. I mean, I'm not Ruiz, but the Cuban guy uh Ortiz. Ortiz had Wilder out. So everybody why that, why, why Ortiz had thing? Wilder out. Why is that a bad thing? I mean said dude was old man. Dude was old Andrew, man, dog. Andrew, Andrew Ruiz had trouble with uh with him too. And Andrew Ruiz fought him years later. If he was that, old with Wilder fought him, how old you think he was when Andrew Ruiz fought him? I, but, 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 but reason why this is what I'm saying, the reason why I blame and, Wilder. Yeah, and people get oh, Andrew Ruiz oh, credit for that. That was a the reason, fight. The, the reason why I say Wilder is the reason for all this, Wilder gave birth to Tyson Fury. And Wilder would have did what he's supposed to do when he first fought him because he thought it was a cherry pick because he picked the man that was been out of boxing for two or three years who was 400 pounds sitting on the couch snorting cocaine ready to kill himself. He thought, you know what? I can beat that guy. It'd be a good name on my resume. Let me pull this sorry joker off the couch and beat him. And Wilder went in there. He underestimated him. He didn't train. Like I said, I ain't telling you what I think. I'm telling you what I know. Wilder mm -hmm. don't run. He don't jump rope. He tell the trainer what he want to do. Mm -hmm. He tell, when JD tell him do something? Nah, nah. This is JD. JD said, look, Deontay Wilder's not in a good mood today. 
Don't make him do anything he don't want to do. In quotation marks. I know what go on in that camp, man. I know why Deontay Wilder lost. That's why he lost. He don't put the work in. If he would have handled Tyson Fury, we wouldn't he be talking about this guy right now? Deontay Wilder dropped the ball when he Eddie, lost he, that ball. Eddie, why, Eddie, you don't even know that Wilder agrees with you. He know he didn't perform good in the last fight. He know he was even, uh, the, even the first fight, the first time he fought T uh, Tyson Fury, the Wilder was supposed to destroy him. I've been knowing Deontay Wilder for a long time. I know his camp. My old trainer can call this guy. We always he he would call JD and say, Hey, is Wilder training yet? No, he ain't in camp yet. I don't know where he is. That's in quotation marks. Wilder, Wilder runs his own camp. He does what he wants to do, man. That's why Mark Breeze said, I can't train him. Because I tell him to do something, he said he don't want to do it. Hey, let, let, let just say you, let, let's just say you're right, Eddie, because you, you're looking at it different from what I'm looking at. Because I remember when I heard about Deontay Wilder back in 2009, 2010, when my... uh. When one of my mentors was sitting here becoming a heavyweight boxer, and I was a fan said, of Deontay Wilder. I lost money on Deontay Wilder twice. I was a fan oh, of him, and I still am a fan of him. But yeah, I, yeah. I know why he lost, though. I know why yeah. he lost. Absolutely, but you got to understand this too, though. We have uh, we have Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua that still haven't fought each other. Let's just say Wilder never existed. Why the hell is nobody asking why these guys are almost forty years old? And they yep. ain't fought nobody because nobody Tyson cares. Fury. Tyson Fury, Tyson brother, Fury ain't causing brother, him. Nobody cares, brother. Nobody. Bro, they cares. Fought, if they fought in the UK, man, that fight is huge, man. In the UK, nobody cares, brother. Ain't nobody really clamoring for that fight like that. Hey, like, but you know what? At, at the end of the day, last time I checked, UK dollars spend just as good as American dollars, man. And a hundred, a hundred, a hundred thousand people in an arena. In the UK, it's the same as 100,000 people over here at Dallas Stadium. It's still 100,000 people, and the money still spend the same, man. I don't agree so, with that. They in Saudi Arabia right now for a reason. The only, well, the, only, the only fighters that's in Saudi Arabia right now is the UK. I think because you're seeing Deontay Wilder and Big Baby Miller over there in, the, in, the, in Saudi Arabia, you must think that everybody over there in Saudi Arabia is American, and, and they only got two Americans over there, brother. Everybody else over there is, is UK fighters. If they had, if the money was like that in the UK, you know this too. Why would you leave? Why would you leave your backyard? And we, we I ain't saying say the money, but it's not, it's an opportunity, man. I mean, at the end of the day, you gotta, you gotta capture an opportunity. It's called seizing the moment because the moment's Eddie, not gonna be there all the time. The Saudi, so Arabia, it, the, fight, the Saudi Arabia, the fight is gonna be in Saudi Arabia with Tyson Fury versus Joshua. So the money's still, they're still making money though. It's still, what's, the, what's, the, what's the problem? It's, I don't understand. This was supposed what, to happen. What's, what's the what's the what's the issue? <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying, do you? No, nah, it's called it's called it's called world champion, not USA champion. Because I mean, you fight all over the world. But Muhammad Ali fought all over the world. He fought in Germany. He fought in Japan. He fought in Ireland. He fought in all kind of different countries. We think that we ain't supposed to leave our freaking country. You a world champion, ain't you? Then That's travel not- the world and fight, man. That's not true, Eddie. One of Tank Davis' first, one of Tank Davis' first fights was in the UK for a title. Right. Earl Spence, Earl Spence first title fight was in the UK. Deontay right. Wilder has fought in the UK multiple times. Deontay uh, Anthony Joshua didn't come over to America till he lost to Anthony, Anthony Andrew Ruiz. He lost in one fight, and then he went back over there. Ain't nobody questioned. Oh man, maybe he went on the dope around that time. Ain't nobody said maybe he went on no dope allegedly around nah, that got time. His- he got his head busted. And he, I, obviously, 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 he was on. If he if he was on anything, he was freaking huge. That was the only, biggest. That's the biggest that we ever seen him. Almost 100, 260 pounds. So if any, if he was taking steroids, then they obviously didn't help him. You know what I'm saying? Because he still got his head busted. And he got whooped by Andrew Ruiz, bro. This ain't like he got whooped by uh. Glo- he, he Andrew Ruiz was considered a journeyman. Okay, let me 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 take you down memory lane real quick. It's called heavyweight boxing. Okay, now heavyweight boxing, all the other stuff, you know, A side, B side, uh, you ain't supposed to lose to this guy. That stuff go out the window, bro. Because you think you look at Ray Mercer, you look at Burt Cooper. Burt Cooper almost knocked out Holyfield in the in the Omni. Hey, Holy had dropped Holyfield. Hey, Holyfield looking crazy. Who would have thought that Burt Cooper could almost knock out the real deal Holyfield? Or Ray Mercer giving, you know, Holyfield fits. Or Ray Mercer giving Lennox Lewis fits. So this call, you know, uh, uh, freaking Jimmy Ellis beating freaking uh, George Foreman. 
I mean, oh, come on, oh. man. Somebody said I don't care. What I'm care about, Grant? What I'm what I'm capping about, Grant? Hold on, somebody in the comment wants some attention. What I'm what I'm capping about, Grant? Oh, you said I was capping. No, nah, because I was talking about I was talking earlier and Grinch Grinch had left. What's up? What, what I'm capping about, Grant? I, I think he think I'm capping about Deontay Wilder. He might be a Wilder fan. No, nah, man, he's a no nah, Eddie Eddie. He talking about you. Yeah, yeah. What I'll say, he said I'm, I'm capping. Not, no, I'm trying to figure out what we capping about. I thought we were. because what I what I said I, I mean as far as man overall bro because I be saying that's why I say people don't really want to have a real let me tell you something the, the same excuse you just made for a van again drop that's the same excuse I can make for Joseph Parker going uh, well Wilder going twelve around Joseph Parker that's not yeah, no embarrassment man. that ain't no embarrassment to me the embarrassment is a guy like Andrew Ruiz who's sitting around needed a fight. Was fighting nobody, turned around five weeks after he fought uh uh the uh Alexander guy from overseas. He, he went knocked, jumped he in the ring. He, yep. he went and jumped in the ring with Andrew uh Anthony Joshua, and nobody hey. knew he had a chance. Nobody Dude. gave Andrew Weeds a chance. They call him a bum, brother. I can tell you a lot of people that people running around right now talking about these some of the best fighters in the game. This is my favorite fighter, and they called all these guys bums. They call every guy a bum. Just the same way you talking about Wilder. Hey, like at the end, of, at the end of the day, man, it's not a bodybuilding contest, man. You you know what I'm you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, but, the, the dude, the dude, the dude's fat, but the, does does he have fast hands? Yes or no? I'm an Andrew Ruiz fan, brother. That's it, what, it, that's do, what do, y'all understand. Do, I pick Andrew Ruiz. He got fast hands. I pick Andrew Ruiz to beat Joshua. If I thought he was a bomb, I wouldn't be making videos about him on this channel. I'm one of the only channels on this uh thing to actually keep. I'm only one of the only guys on YouTube that keep yeah. up with what at Joshua. I, I announced Joshua, bro. I announced Joshua next two fights. I know everything that moves in boss. I know everything that's going on. And we're right now, Andy Ruiz just turned down Jilly John last year. Last year they said uh Wilder uh was ducking John. Now Wilder finna duck uh fight John June first. Ain't nobody saying nothing. I know where the energy come from because Jilly these John. dudes, these dudes over here, at, uh the Zong, the, the, the Chinese guy. Oh, oh okay. He, oh, I, I thought I thought he was doing a rematch with Joseph Park. No, sir. Joseph Parker don't want that. They want that. Uh, I already said that a long time ago. Uh, about Joseph Parker. He, Joseph Parker, not trying to fight. Um, he's not trying to fight Usyk. He's not trying to fight. Um, Fury. He don't want to fight Anthony Joshua. He ain't trying to fight Hergovic. He called out Dillian White. Then he said he wanted that Joshua rematch after some other yeah, crap. That, but I know. That, that be, I know that, he really wants Dillian White fight, fight for him. Yeah, but uh, uh, Joseph, uh Anthony Joshua already got his next two fights lined up. Anthony Joshua fighting uh Daniel DeBow, Daniel DeBow, and he fighting um uh, Anthony, Anthony Joshua only gonna fight one time this year. I Daniel he Dubois, Philip Hergovic. No sir, he fighting Daniel DeBois, Hergovic fighting Daniel DeBois, but after that, Daniel DeBois still gonna hop in the ring with Joshua, win or lose. They already got these fights scheduled up. That's what I'm trying to tell y'all. They already sense. man get if yeah, the man get knocked out. If, yeah, if he get knocked out, that ain't that ain't gonna be no good look. They just got you turn. They got a tournament already set up, the UK tournament. That's why you don't realize it. But um, people didn't. I, I noticed this too because I thought Joshua did an excellent job when Joshua knocked out Otto Violin. Most people were talking about how Wilder need to retire. He went twelve rounds. That's what I knew right then. I said, "Dang!" So we ain't gonna talk about how good Anthony Joshua look. No, oh, Wilder people? lost. I'm like, "Damn, okay." Yeah, I win mean, is the guy that loses like, is more important than the guy that won. That's like that's a Mike Tyson, and I seen Mike Tyson lose. In worse fashion than what Wilder does, and I, well, I'm glad you said that about Wilder too. Mike Tyson to admit admits to doing cocaine, uh, crack. You got people of admitting, uh, accusing him of um, uh, sexual assaulting people allegedly. You got trainers admitting him about all that, saying that he does stuff like that. You didn't have people making money off of him since way back when, since he was a kid. He got all kind of crazy, weird stuff going on, but people feel like Wilder ain't got it together. Man, I grew up watching Mike Tyson from day one. Ain't nobody got more going on than Mike Tyson. We know that. Everybody know that. Deontay Wilder is just a plus to boxing. Because right now, heavyweight, what's the big heavyweight we fight we looking for? Ngannou versus, uh, uh, Ngannou versus uh, Joshua? That's the biggest fight we had this year. Yeah, the really, fight ain't really, all, ain't really all that, man. Heavyweight it division. Ain't, ain't really. it, ain't, it ain't really. And that's why I'm trying to tell people, like, come on, man. Like, these names ain't really all that. This ain't the 90s no more. Like we really, I'm gonna tell you what's happened, what's hurting us, Eddie. 
what's what's hurting us, Eddie is Roy Jones when that guy when Roy Jones was that guy, like when he was like fighting Tarver, that's when we started giving Roy Jones the kind of credit we give in boots now. You know what I'm saying? When Roy Jones was hopping in the ring with trying to fight Hopkins and Tarver and all these guys, that's when we were like, ooh, Roy Jones is that guy right now. You know, before he started doing that heavyweight crap. I don't know why he when went he, heavyweight. When he beat James Tony, that, that was that was kind of solidified him a little bit. Oh, yeah. James was, yeah, James was exactly. looked at as a great fighter at that time. Maybe but what he was is a great fighter. But like you said, though, like like but some of these fighters, they get the great credit for not fighting anybody. But in Roy Jones' case, he had to be certain certain guys. But in these cases, in these days, oh man, that guy ain't getting no chance. That ain't my fault, homie. Everybody else getting a chance. It's people that look just like him that's getting chances. I don't know why he ain't getting no chance. I don't know why he going to this promotional company. And even with the heavyweights, without Wilder at the heavyweight, it ain't really not much going on. Like I said. People don't realize that Fury and Anthony Joshua still have not fought each other. These dudes finna fight each other past their prime, and everybody gonna enjoy it. And, and I, then, I, I, hold on, well, let's back up now. Now you got to. Well, this is my opinion. Yeah. That whole, I believe that Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury held up the heavyweight division for about two and a half, three years. That bull junk they were doing, just fighting each other. They, ain't, you know what I'm saying? Because. You know, this rematch. Oh, you don't rematch. Taking take the man to court. They held a division up for two years, man. Them two guys right there. They wouldn't fight nobody up with it but themselves. Instead of, instead of realizing in boxing, it don't have to be an immediate rematch. I mean, when Lennox Lewis lost or got knocked out by uh, Oliver McCall, and he he didn't go into an immediate rematch. He fought like two other fights and came back and fought him. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you when you lose the guy, yeah, you might not go right back into an immediate rematch. You might fight some other guy. That's what it is. People gotta gotta fight other guys, man. You know, you gotta fight, can keep fighting the same guys all the time. You gotta well, we, we, we trying to put all that response. Just like you said though recently, you were saying it's more people in the world in, in America. Shoot, that's what my whole channel about. I just I just posted a video about a, a Japanese guy yesterday. Yeah, I mean that's what this channel about right here. That's what I do. That's my expertise. That's why I'm breaking everything down the way I am now. That's why people, when they try to make you seem like these uh, boxers are mythical figures and they better than what they are, these dudes are regular men who got losses. They didn't lost the sparring partners and everything. These dudes definitely ain't what we think they are. Half of these guys are friendly with a lot of people at heavyweight. That's why Deontay Wilder is the one who's actually the only one fighting. I respect that because I see, I knew back in the day Mike Tyson was the first who was undersized, wasn't as big as Lennox Lewis. It was other guys, Lennox Lewis, to tell you right now that was ducking him at heavyweight. But nobody won't bring that guy up. Yeah, Riddick both. But, but if Mike Tyson went to jump in the ring with a Lennox Lewis, half of these people wouldn't even know who a Lennox Lewis was. But when when you're in a situation, that's why I know like the people when, when people say stuff about why they're losing, people don't care about none of that, man. Because I, I can name a million heavyweights that ain't never did nothing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying Mike Tyson ain't never did nothing. He was undersized in a lot of those fights. People ain't going to explain that to you. But he was a smaller man. Look how big Mike Tyson is now. Jake Paul taller than Mike Tyson, bigger than him right now. Mm -hmm. So how big you think he, how tall you think he was back then? He ain't growing. So that's what people got to realize. All these guys from America be undersized most of the time. Most of the guys Joshua fight is smaller than him. He just went 12 rounds. Let me say something. Joshua, Anthony Joshua just went 12 rounds with Jermaine Taylor. Do you know what Jermaine Taylor was doing? doing I mean, Jermaine Franklin. Do you know what Jermaine Franklin is? Not be, Jermaine Franklin's not a bad fight. He's from the Midwest, man. Just because you don't know a guy don't mean he ain't no good. No, nah, I'm a huge Jermaine Franklin fan. That's what you don't understand. Do you know Jermaine yeah, Franklin? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking in general. You know, I ain't, just, I ain't talking about you per se, but like a lot of times, the boxing fan, they go off a of name recognition. If they don't oh, recognize no. the name, the guy, the guy is an automatic bum. They, yo, hey, I ain't never heard of him. He must be a bum. What you mean? He, he, he from, he from the mid, he from the Midwest, man. You, you, you ain't never gotta, saying? you ain't never gotta have that conversation with me about who a bum or not. Yeah, that I mean, that ain't I'm, even no question. I'm talking about as far as this situation right here. Jermaine Franklin went 12 rounds with Anthony Joshua. Mm-hmm. Possibly beat, which I think he beat Dillian White in that fight. Yeah, everybody, yeah, yeah. everybody, yeah, robbery, robbery, you know, like Hitches, Hitches, that's robbery, you know, Hitches, he robbed, he robbed. What about the Jermaine Franklin fight? Oh, I don't like, yeah. I don't watch Boston like that. Okay, okay, you know, people don't watch Boston like that. Jermaine Franklin, he got robbed by Dillian White, 
Then the next fight, the same Dylan White everybody wants to see people jump in the ring with. That shows Not how big that. he is. Then and, and then he went 12 rounds with Anthony Joshua just 12 months ago. Do you know that 12 mm-hmm. months ago? 12 months, not 12 years, not 24, not it two years ago. 12 months ago, Anthony Joshua went 12 rounds with Jermaine Franklin. Mm-hmm. And you know that, and that goes back to styles make fights, man. You know, at the end Jermaine of the day, Jermaine Franklin was on the couch. Shout out to my boy Crotro. Yeah. Styles make, styles make fights, man. Styles make fights. Jermaine Franklin. Oh, man. Good. You see what he's saying, Eddie? What's that? OJ Simpson died? What? Dang. What? Bro, rip to the juice. I get, yeah, but you know, he was older and older guy, man. He was about 70 man. something, 80 years old. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, people, them people might have put the poison on him, man. man. Like you said, you a lot of stuff be recently. going on, man. You saw that recently. He got sick recently. He had cancer. Man, we know how skinny guys look when they got cancer, man. Come on, man. Wow. Oh, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, salute to the juice, man. Man, that's crazy, boy. That's a lot of legends getting up out of here, boy. And what real, happened, man? I, you know, but when you once you hit that 70, that 70 year old mark, 75, you know, you know your time, your time is ticking, man. You know what I'm saying? Time, your time, your time is ticking, man. So that's why life is so precious and valuable, man. When you you know, once you hit it, but not on that, you know, you just gotta always be mindful, man. Cause uh at the end of the day, don't nobody don't nobody know. Yeah. I had cut yeah. yeah, don't nobody know, but uh like I say back to what you're talking about, Jermaine Franklin. Jermaine Franklin, you know, he had um styles and they fight, man. He had a difficult style, man. He fights like a uh he fights like a like a small man. He fights out of that that shell. You know what I'm saying? That half guard, you know what I mean? Turn no, sideways. I, I'm a huge friend, fan of Jermaine Franklin. That's what, yeah. but people, but he, when he people, can fight, man. But people don't realize that Joshua just went 12 rounds with this guy. Like, and Jermaine Franklin was literally working a day job during the shutdown because no heavyweights wanted no smoke with him for some reason. Mm-hmm. Until Jermaine Franklin is on the couch now. Now, now, uh, Anthony Joshua, like, yeah, 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 for sure. I want Jermaine Franklin. So, how you gonna, how you gonna fight, a, how you gonna fight a guy who was just on the couch, but then gonna try to make it seem like everybody else ducking, ducking you in boxing? That's well, why a lot saying, of people don't go ahead. Yeah, the thing about it, when he's seen, he seen Deion, uh, Wilder, I mean, he's seen White, I'm sorry, uh, Dylan White fight Jermaine mm-hmm. Taylor. I mean, Jermaine, what's his name? Jermaine Franklin. Yeah, Jermaine then Franklin. That, that, yeah, then, then that's when he got interested in it. He was like, yeah, man, that, you know, he just went 12 around with White. If I, if I go out there and knock Franklin out, that's gonna make me look good. What he was thinking, but he did, he kind of he didn't realize that that guy could fight like that. You see what I'm saying? So he wasn't able to knock him out because his style, man, and he got a chin too. And he take a good take a good shot, man. I'm gonna give you. This is why I brought this up. Now Usyk, now Usyk is a cruiserweight. This is what I find out where everybody's on. Usyk is a cruiserweight. Came from cruiserweight. Nobody saying he was a killer. Usyk right. went up against. He went up against um. Uh, Derek Chisor. Usyk went twelve rounds against Derek Chisor in twenty twenty. This was uh October when the shutdown had first started. Everybody said Usyk ain't that good. Usyk ain't good. He, he lost to Chisor. He almost lost. Yeah. Uh, he ain't gonna be able to beat Joshua. I put right. money down on the Joshua fight. To uh, I put money on the Joshua fight. So for Usyk to beat Joshua, nobody thought Usyk was gonna uh, beat Joshua. I he didn't. Lost I, ain't gonna, I ain't even gonna lie. I thought Joshua lo- was gonna knock him out. Bro, I'm gonna tell you, ain't nothing more embarrassing than losing to a cruiserweight twi- twice and calling yourself the best heavyweight. And now you're trying to fight the loser. If uh, if uh, Tyson Fury loses to Usyk, now you're trying to fight the loser. You ain't even trying to fight the winner. Like, I can't even respect that. Like Wilder at least trying to fight Usyk and Fury. This man trying to fight. I just want Fury. Oh, okay, you ain't really that guy then. Like that's the reason why I don't even really want to get into a conference. Anthony Joshua right. fought a he fought an MMA guy. He yep. fought a sparring partner. So he just fought an MMA guy and a sparring partner in his last two fights. Then before that, he fought Helenus, who Chizora fought 50 years ago. And Wilder just knocked down the first round. And he couldn't which, knock him out which, to the which, seventh which, round. Which, which is Wilder's sparring partner. 
they say all these all these guys they got they really got they almost got all the same guys on their resume because you look at you look at john molina which was a school teacher who had wilder on on queer street have him doing the stanky leg and joshua knocked him out and didn't get hurt so we 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 can do we can do this all day with everybody. No, we can't. 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 We can nitpick resume. No, we can't. No, we can't. You can't nitpick no no cruiser. No, uh, Anthony Joshua being going twelve rounds of the cruiserweight twice. Can't nobody nitpick the air losing and you that guy. How much? How much? How much do we weigh? How much do the guy weigh right now? Two two hundred thirty pounds. Who does? Was it two twenty seven? Two twenty five? Who does? Uh, Usyk. He's a 227, 230 pound heavyweight right now. Oh, that's a heavy, th those are heavyweight numbers. Bro, that, this, this, all, all, all this super heavyweight stuff. This, this, this is something. If you, if you really know boxing, which I'm sure you do, all these guys that are 250, 260, these guys ain't always been. These guys are not the dominant heavyweight. Oh it's no, no, no. It's been the guys at 215, 220. Look at Evander Holyfield, 208, 212. Look, he gave he gave uh Riddick Bo the business man. Riddick Bo weighed yeah. in two hundred forty seven pounds. You know what well, I'm saying? Me, so at the end me, of the day, let me, the, let me break this stat oh. down to you real quick though. So Usyk weighed two hundred seventeen pounds when he fought Chizora. Right. He weighed two hundred fifty five pounds. Chizora weighed two hundred fifty five pounds. Mm -hmm. Did anybody sit up here and say that uh Chizora was a weight bully against him? What about when um Anthony Joshua fought? Usyk, that was two. Usyk was two twenty, two twenty one and a half pound. Joshua was two forty. That's the a next fight. Weight. The That's next a real fight. Weight. The next fight. Uh, Usyk was two twenty one and a half, and Joshua was two forty four and a half. Right. That's a heavyweight now, fight. Now, if you look at the pattern on most of these things, uh, most of the guys that Joshua gets in the ring with are smaller guys. But you're missing the point, man. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that these super big heavyweights throughout history have not been the dominant guys, man. But, you, guys know too, but you know this it, too, Ed. You'd rather fight a guy right now, 200 pounds, than you'll fight a guy at 275. Now, actually, when I was fighting, I'm, this is the God honest truth, I had more success fighting guys that were a lot bigger than me. I had a heart when I when I fought, when I, I did I, I had three pro fights. And then when I was fighting amateur, I fought as a heavyweight. I started my career off at 201. Those guys were easier to fight than the guys that when I dropped down to 178 pounds. I, I dropped 22 pounds lighter, and those guys at 178 were harder fights than the guys that I was mm. fighting at 200, 201 pounds. A lot more I, speed and power. Yeah, speed, power, athleticism. The guys, I, I mean, I, I can tell you so many. I had one shot. I had, I had a good move. I dropped. Three guys, and I'm only I'm only six foot tall. I dropped one guy that was six foot six. I dropped another guy that was six five, and I dropped another guy that was about six four with a body shot to the ribs. Mm -hmm. When they shot it, when they shot this shot, I would slide underneath and I hit him with a nice right hand right on the right on the rib cage. Delayed yeah. reaction, knee. And they take a knee because big guys they they were just too slow and cumbersome. So just just because a guy's big doesn't mean that he's good. He's big, but when you got yeah, really speed, that. speed, man, you got speed. That that's the problem, man. Usyk speed. Those smaller guys like Holyfield. How you think he was able to get over and being a smaller heavyweight because he had that speed. He was a, he was a light heavyweight cruiserweight coming up, and he th he still had the combination punching. He still had his athleticism. He still had enough power to get their respect, and he had the skill to go with it. That's how. That's why he was so successful. As a heavyweight, because he would outquick those guys. So those big guys that outweighed him 20, 30 pounds, you know, that jump don't mean nothing. I think that's why Usyk's having so much success. Because he's a cruiserweight, a smaller guy, and he comes in and he's letting his hands go, fighting these big old lumbering guys, you know, like Anthony Joshua, 250 pounds. You know, that's why I said Joshua and Fury, that's a that's a match made in heaven for Joshua. Because Tyson Fury is a big target to him. Can't miss him. Let me ask Usyk you a question. Usyk is a nightmare for Joshua. Can't let catch him. Ask, let me ask you a question, because this gonna show me a lot. So you, so in your mind right now, you think losing to going twelve rounds with Usyk twice is worse than uh, going twelve rounds with Parker, 
And you think that getting knocked out by Tyson Fury is worse than getting knocked out by Andy Ruiz, according to what I've gathered over the next, last couple of years, uh, um, hours. Over they the last get hour. Knocked, get knocked out by Tyson Fury. So according to what I've received right. from you over the last couple of hours, you think that Anthony Joshua getting knocked out, I mean, uh, jo Joshua going 12 rounds with Usyk twice is better than him going 12 rounds with the uh, – uh, then Wilder going 12 rounds of Parker. So that's why Parker don't have no value to me. Like when people say you went 12 rounds of Parker, that literally yeah. that literally means I don't care what nobody says with words, but that literally means you think Parker was a bum if going if, I don't care if Wilder got knocked down the fifth round. If you think going 12 rounds of Parker means Wilder is not a good fire he, fighter and he should retire, I'm gonna keep that same energy with a guy who's a specimen on this earth. And he let a cruiserweight European come in and destroy him twice. You can, you can say Wilder's a cruiserweight. That makes my point, uh, Eddie. You, you can say Wilder is a cruiserweight. That I is mean, my he, point, he, Eddie. That he's is my small, point. He's Eddie. smaller than he's smaller than Usyk. That's what I'm. That's my point, Eddie. A lot of these guys is fighting fight small guys. It, instead of Tyson Fury saying, "Hey, let me fight." 245 pound Joshua. Bro, but you miss it, but you missing the point. What I just what I just feel to you. I said just because no, you I'm big gonna... doesn't mean you better, man. The, no, the smaller, I, you know, the I... smaller guy having it a speed advantage, man. I don't that don't affect me and boss. I know this already. First of all, Wilder's the only guy who's actually fighting guys 40, 50 pounds more than him. So him and Usyk. That's why if we want to be real about it, is that really a conversation to have? Everybody ain't doing that. So why would we even talk about that? You know, and, and styles and styles make fights, man. You look at uh, you look, you look, you look, Eddie, you look, you look, you look, hold on, you, you look, you look how Michael Spinks came up and was able to beat Larry Holmes. You know what I'm saying? This guy was a light heavyweight, and he came up and beat Larry the Legend, the guy that we hold in high regard. It'll let you know that size isn't everything. That when you bring something to the table, when you coming up from a smaller division and you go into a bigger division, you bring in all your attributes. From that small division up to a bigger division, and Michael and Michael and Michael Spinks with a light heavyweight, 175 pound. Let me give you another example: Michael Moore, light heavyweight, came up and came and became a world champion at heavyweight division. So we can't we can't do this. Oh, he came from cruiserweight stuff. It don't count. That's bogus, bro. Cause we got guys coming from light heavyweight that's moving up and having success at heavyweight. Why well, Tank Davis ain't moving up five pounds to fight somebody then? Because he's little. Why? I don't. I don't know. You gotta ask him. I don't know why Tank won't do that, man. I mean, why? Why is Wilder the only person in Boston right now that's fighting guys forty pounds heavier than them? But I'm trying. I'm, I'm supposed to crown these <coughs> little dudes who ain't doing nothing in Boston fighting nobody. I'm not finna give nobody credit for going twelve rounds with Jermaine Franklin. I don't care how much respect he people want people to hand out and all that. Everybody ain't gonna get the same amount of respect in the Boston. That's just like life. That's how it goes. But why, why, who, who else fighting guys 40 pounds higher than them besides Usyk and Wilder in boxing? And that's going to be the that, – that, that right there ain't got no answer to it. And that's the end of the story right there. Boxing ain't like that, man. We need to quit hyping up these guys like they like. They regular. They regular. They are regular. They are RC Cola. These dudes are not – they are not like that, bro. We hyping up too many guys. That's why everybody – that's why every fight a pay-per-view now. And then I'm going to tell you something else. When the fight hit YouTube – it don't even go past 10 million views. That's how that's how little the fight is. These fights be on YouTube for six years and they don't even go past 10 million views. Ain't nobody trying to watch these fights. This ain't good fights. They ain't got a replay value. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Why would I argue about these dudes? They ain't putting on good fights. They fight MMA have, guys. You gotta have competitive fights, to, you know, uh for the, for them to have that same value. At the same time, you can do that with I mean Wilder's fights. His, his best fights were with Tyson Fury, though, were competitive fights. So people watched them. But before that, they wasn't getting no huge replay. When you go there and see Wilder knock a guy out in one round, that ain't. Well, I, don't have to, I, 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 I don't have to go back and watch that. This dude got knocked out in 90 seconds. That ain't nothing to go back and rewatch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, hey, Eddie, wasn't nobody watching Tyson Fury when he had a belt, my brother? And I know. No, nah, not nobody watching Tyson Fury. Hey, they, you know, they, they put on good fights. So there was a no, I'm about, I'm about, fight. I can expose America, bro. Like, America really low grade, bro, because I'm going to tell you. And you talking about everybody, all these fighters. Don't nobody care about all these fighters? Don't nobody care about no Tyson Fury. Nothing like that. I can prove that because 
when uh Wilder was gonna fight Tyson Fury, he was still uh leaning on champion, he was still the heavyweight champion of the world. And guess what everybody said? Wilder ducking Anthony Joshua to go fight uh Fury. How you that's why you know dudes didn't know boxing back then. So how could somebody fighting why uh uh Fury is a duck? And then Hold on, 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 hold on now. Deontay Wilder was supposed to flatline Tyson Fury. And when they fought, Deontay Wilder was the clear favorite in that fight. It wasn't no if and buts about it. He was a heavy favorite in that fight. Deontay Wilder dropped the ball by letting that clown hang around. He should have knocked him out. He should have knocked him out. And Deontay Wilder didn't, and that goes back to Deontay Wilder being undisciplined. Uh, I'm don't want to run, don't want to jump rope, don't want to do nothing he's supposed to do in camp. And that's why we have Tyson Fury. Deontay Wilder gave birth to Tyson Fury. Without without Deontay Wilder, there will be no Tyson Fury. You're proving my point. You're proving but, my point. No. But at, at the same time, Deontay Wilder fumbled. He, Deontay Wilder did not take care of business when it came to Tyson Fury. He was supposed to go in there, knock Tyson Fury out, and that was supposed to be the end of Tyson Fury, but it didn't happen. So Deontay, why? why you, I don't know why, why it why, didn't happen. Why did Why did Joshua have a belt the same time Fury did, but they ain't fight? But you ain't questioning that. Are you a bigger Are you a bigger Anthony Joshua fan and Fury fan than you are a Wilder fan? Is that the reason why? At the time, Fury was the. I mean, a Wilder was the man, brother. Why ain't nobody he, saying Joshua was he, ducking? Why they had no belt before all them guys had a belt? Why ain't nobody saying that they, they were ducking? He was the man. Wilder was the man. He the one that was that was that was Eddie. you know getting the knockouts, man. He the one Eddie, that he was just Eddie, fighting guy and hitting Eddie, weight. Eddie, 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 you just said Anthony Joshua was that guy already. No, no. At, at the time, at the time when Wilder fought Tyson Fury, Wilder was the man in the heavyweight division. When he fought Eddie. Tyson Fury that first time, Eddie, he they said the he was duck, they said he was ducking um before that fight, Eddie. And that fight was supposed to. Well, I'm reading why they say he was ducking because they offered uh <coughs> they said they gave uh, offer Wild a three fight deal for 120 million dollar fight, 120 million dollars. The man turned the money. The man turned the money down, dog. That that ain't that ain't that ain't no lie. That ain't no cap. It's on film. Shelly Finkel Eddie, said the Eddie, Shelly, Eddie. hold on, hold on. Shelly Finkel said the money was real. He said, but we don't like how they did business. That's why we didn't take the fight. Al Heyman told Deontay Wilder those slave wages and told him to bet on himself. He mm -hmm. bet on himself, and you see what happened. He left $120 million guaranteed on the table. That's why they said it was a duck. Now, and I got, I don't know, man, man, offer you got name. The hundred twenty million dollar guarantee, twenty million dollars to fight one of your voluntaries, and then fifty million dollars per fight with Anthony Joshua, and this dude turned it down. I can prove, I can prove that, I can prove that Anthony, uh, that Deontay Wilder been running heavyweight division. I'm about to prove it right now. I ain't, so, so that, I ain't, I ain't gonna rehash the past. Deontay Wilder is retirement. He he's at retirement age, right? This man, I'm a forty years old man. Brother, we seen we, we we seen the last of Deontay Wilder, brother. Brother, I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm glad you said that. I want you to be back on June first. June first, be here. Be we here. We seen the last of Deontay Wilder. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you why everybody got. I'm gonna tell you why everybody said. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me tell you why everybody said Deontay Wilder needed to retire. I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why. What I know from being around boxing my whole entire life. If you go back and watch that press conference, when they were doing the press conference, they were talking. Go back, and I want you to find it. Go back and watch Deontay Wilder. He's visibly shaking. Like he has early Parkinson's. His his body is shaking. He's trembling. Second of all, you go back and watch that fight. The the, uh, the uh, Deontay Wilder's balance is gone. He has no balance. His legs are shot. Deontay Wilder cannot take a punch to the side of the head. As soon as you heard him to the how side can, of the how head, how can you say that? Wait, how, how can you say that? He just went twelve yeah. rounds with Joseph Bro, Parker. No, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not listening, man. I've been watching Deontay Wilder forever. It's like, it's like you watch, it's like you watching a family member, mm -hmm. and then you watching that person deteriorate, and you comparing that family member to when you used to know them fifteen years ago, and you see in your mind, you see they're not the same person, and that's what I'm seeing. Deontay Wilder is not the same guy. 
They fought what about, these, what about these other fighters, though? What about these other fighters I'm bringing up? To be honest with you, you, you know a lot about Wilder, but these other guys you, you falling short on because – for, for now, I, I know I know Wilder personally. I mean, I know I know the guy. He's he, I'm, cool I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in Georgia, man. The guy from Alabama he used to come up to our gym, man. So of course I'm gonna rock with the home team. No, the man no, is a, he's an American fighter, man. No, I ain't saying that. I'm saying what you don't understand is you got different strokes for different folks because uh these same guys are doing cocaine and uh, all this other stuff, and when you look at it. If you look at uh, Deontay, res uh, Deontay Wilder, I mean, uh, Tyson Fury's resume since 2015, he fought Watermill Kitch Club, uh, a guy named Safari that nobody knows, Panita, uh, Tom Swartz, who people are familiar with, who got knocked down the first round, uh, second round. Tyson Fury's fought. a bum, man. Tyson Fury's a bum, man. He fought Wilder. I don't like, I don't like Tyson Fury. Me either, but he fought Wilder three times. The media, I'm telling you what the media and everybody else agrees with because most of the things that the fans say, and the guys on YouTube and ESPN and Twitter, they agree with everybody. Most people agree on the wider situation. I don't because I've I've seen people go 12 rounds with Joseph Parker. Ain't nobody say he's gonna he need to retire. Like we've seen Joseph Parker knock people out. If I would have seen not, Wilder, not, bro, they're not saying that he needs to retire because he went 12 rounds with Joseph Parker. I'm saying he need to retire because his health does not look the same. That's what I'm saying. I, it, it had nothing to do with him going. 12 round with Joseph Parker. It's the way he's walking, the way he's talking, the way yeah. he's trembling, the way he's shaking, the way he has no balance. Mm -hmm. I can see that. I can see that. That's what I'm talking about. He needs to retire. We, Deontay Wilder gave us a lot of great fights. The man's pushing 40. No, yeah, nothing, lasts for, nothing lasts forever. Yeah, I don't it's like over the, I don't, with. I don't like to put that kind of I don't like to put that kind of stipulation on fighters because when people's health and things like that and all that stuff, it, it, bro, it, they did the same. They did the same thing to Muhammad Ali. Everybody around them seen it. Everybody around them seen it, and they still let the man fight. Everybody around them seen him walking slow. They seen him talking slow. They seen him shaking. They seen him shuffling, and they still put him in the ring. You still making my point though. You making my original point for why you came up on here. Dudes like Ali got to get their face and head, neck, and kicked in. It, at the 50 years later, he got to sell his whole name. Did you know that Ali had to sell his whole name? Muhammad Ali had to sell his whole name for hundred million dollars when he wasn't yeah. even he, he wasn't even in his right mind. So somebody else did that, and we gonna sit exactly. up here and try to act like, uh, yeah, with the old days. This is the old days. Ain't nobody getting treated like no god around here. What are we, what are we talking about? Like I, I could tell you a, a fighter who ain't done with Deontay Wilder done. They kiss, they kissing the ground he walk on. Deontay Wilder can do whatever he want. Boxing went jumping like that before Wilder uh start boxing. What are people talking about? These dudes ain't that good out here to be trying to praise them. These dudes ain't lost to do man. Please, we can name ten fighters right now, and I tell you, ain't nobody thinking about none of these dudes right now. They already tell you that the dudes you name in Holyfield, people walk right past Holyfield at the fight. Ain't nobody yeah, trying to get a picture with Holyfield. They don't care. The fans don't care about none of this stuff. That's boxing. On, nobody man. care about nobody. It's what have you done for me lately? It's who's next? If, I will, if I'm wild, I don't care about nothing with nobody talking about. And I'm I'm one of the best guys on everybody's resume. Dudes is getting first place for beating me. How you getting first place for beating somebody who I already done, who can't box? The, if he can't box, why is y'all giving credit? Why the is he getting why? Why are these Europeans getting credit for being the American guy who everybody knows who can't box and got skinny legs? Well, maybe may, maybe it maybe it's because the heavyweight division is not the same. It's not as it's not as good as it used to be. It's not as it wasn't not, it wasn't it wasn't super elite. It's not, not nineteen ninety. It's, it's not two thousand twenty. I mean two thousand. These guys these guys are not as good as the heavyweights of, of the old. They had a few names in there, but overall, when we think of the nineties, we don't think of fifty different guys who were just amazing. It's a lot more guys getting mentioned. You know this. It's a lot more guys getting mentioned. Man, Joseph Parker when they got mentioned on ninety five. You know that. Come on. But, but box, that's but that's because boxing is being covered more. It's being you got all these YouTube channels that's covered boxing. Boxing is being covered more than it's ever been covered in in the history of boxing. You got multi outlets of people that cover boxing. So yeah, that's that why is true. That is true. But at the same boxing. time, like I'm telling you though, the standard of people that's the standard it's gonna start changing after a while as far as with these fighters because if you haven't noticed a lot of these younger guys 
Like Joshua said, Joshua already said he's gonna retire. He knows when he's gonna retire. Yeah, you know, he's he, he out. Mm -hmm. So he so he already checked out the game. But people people That's gonna right. take him serious. Oh, yeah, I, I bet on him. You're gonna bet on a dude who already planned his retirement. Okay. Hey, but then, I mean, that's, that's smart. You don't want to hang around too long, man. You know, hey, two years, I'm out. You got to, you got to have, you got to have an exit strategy. You don't want to be like one of these guys, like an Adrian Bronner. You know, sitting there, guy made millions and millions of dollars, and now he ain't got a pot to piss in. Now he's trying to come back. You know, fighting on the chitlin circuit. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, people hey, don't care about the uh, Anthony Joshua fighting Jermaine Franklin. When when when, Deont when Deontay Wilder going uh, a name an opponent, everybody all over. When when Joshua sit up here and say Jermaine Franklin my next fight and you don't hear about it, that's how big he is. He ain't no big name like that. A lot of these guys ain't big name. Joshua signed his name away for a hundred million dollars. He signed a hundred million dollar uh, contract years ago for for a lifetime. So he can't recoup. He can't redo nothing. And that fifty million dollars he just got from Saudi Arabia. Just guess who they all going to? Oh, Eddie Hearn. It, Joshua already got paid. He got a hundred million dollars. He ain't getting paid again. You don't get paid. I think he's a lot ridiculous, man. See, you talking about this man just signed a hundred million dollars every time he fight, he don't get none of the money. You don't know he got a lifetime deal, man. You need to stop, man. You don't know he got a lifetime deal, bro. That don't make that. That's a that's a cap. You don't know he got a lifetime. What, no, deal. he he had he had a lifetime endorsement. He had stock in the zone. He had stock in Matro. He didn't sign a hundred million dollar deal. And so let me get this straight. I signed a lifetime hundred million dollar deal. So if I generate three hundred million dollars, I don't get none of that money. It all goes to my promotion company. Man, that's that. Nobody in their right mind would sign that. Man, you need to stop, bro. Hey, yeah, that's cap. That's super cap. I'm glad you said that. So Terrence Howard they, they just come out and said they owe him one hundred twenty million dollars for having the biggest television shows in the world. He was on the first Iron Man. He was just on Empire. They got all these boys out here sweet. So how, what are we talking about? He made a hundred. Terrence Crawford ain't tell you he just made five. Oh, captain. What are we talking about? A boxing bro, match or just, Iron? What's, what, bro, what, 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 what's bigger? What's bigger? A boxing match or Iron Man? Because it's all entertainment. Bro, what, what you're saying? What you're saying makes no sense. It Brother, makes no how, sense. How does it make? How does it makes no sense? Because when, you got when, you got your facts. Your, 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 your facts are wrong. Your facts are wrong. My facts. You saying that the man signed a hundred million dollar deal for all his next fight? He's only gonna make a hundred million dollars. So he just fought when he fought Usyk for ninety and made ninety million dollars. You tell me he didn't get none of that money. I'm glad you said that. Now well, I'm, I'm asking you. No, no, I'm no, asking I'm asking, you. no, no. You, you look, you ain't, you ain't getting to my point. Why is all these artists right now in music? If they can make a hundred million dollars off music, why are they selling their music? All they rights to their music for sixty million dollars. No, nah, no, nah, I ain't talking about music. I'm talking about boxing. I'm talking about life told, period because I know the industry. Yeah, I'm you, telling no, you, I know the you, industry. Well, you did, you just told me that this guy signed a hundred million dollar deal, lifetime deal for a hundred million dollars. When this man already knows that he can generate 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 million dollars. He, he fought Usyk, he made 80 million dollars. He fought Andy Ruiz, he made he made what? Million he when made he fought what? Andy, and he when he fought Andy Ruiz in the rematch, he made 70 million dollars. Hey man, did y'all do y'all hear it? Do y'all hear this? Go back and do your research, man. Do your this? research. Do your research. Y'all hear Go this? Look. this? Anthony Joshua ain't never sold a million pay per views in his life. You're not listening, man. He, this when man he, when is, he, no, you ain't listening. No, you no ain't you're listening. not. You're not. You, 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 let, 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 let me, let me, let me, let me back up, back up, back up, back up. Let me tell you something. When he fought in Saudi Arabia, then the rematch. Million, it, in, in the rematch, in the rematch, when he fought Andy Ruiz. In the re, I'm trying to tell you, in the rematch, Andy Ruiz made 14 million dollars guaranteed in Saudi Arabia. Anthony yeah, yeah, Joshua yeah, yeah. made plus 70 million dollars to fight that rematch in Saudi Arabia. Plus 70 million to fight that rematch in Saudi Arabia. He just made 50 million dollars guaranteed in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, before yeah. that, he was making 15, 20, 30 million dollars per fight. And you trying to tell me this man signed a lifetime deal of a hundred million dollars, and all my money goes straight to Eddie Hearns? That was that what you just said, bro? That don't make no sense. Why would that not make sense, man? Because it's dumb. Nobody would do that, man. You said nobody does that, man. I don't man, you no better sense, go, man. you better go you better go send you better go get Jerron Ennis on the phone, man. 
You better go get Jerron Ennis on the phone. Why the hell you think Jerron Ennis messed left PBC? Why would I sign a hundred million dollar lifetime deal when I just made seventy million dollars in one fight? Come on, Eddie. Man. You, you telling me somebody, you, Eddie? You, you telling me this, Eddie? You telling me right now somebody come to you and say, Eddie, hey, for all this you doing right now, we give you a hundred million dollars right now. What man Bro. on this earth? What what man on this earth right now? A black man on this I'm, earth right now? I'm 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 gonna go ahead and shoot you shoot you a little argument in the foot one more time before before all that when they uh offered Deontay Wilder 120 million dollars he already know the deal Joshua already know he can get 50 million dollars per fight why would I sign a lifetime deal when I know I can get 50 million dollars per fight what you saying what you what you saying doesn't make any sense man. If they can get fifty, if, if Anthony Joshua can get fifty million dollars fighting uh, Ruiz and all these other guys, if he can get fifty million dollars fighting Ruiz and all these other guys, why everybody else ain't jumping in the ring to fight Anthony Joshua then to get paid? Why? 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 Why, why, is, why is Jermaine? Why is Jermaine Ortiz? Jump, I mean Jermaine Franklin jumping in the I ring. You, I want you to go that one hundred million dollar yeah, that, that one hundred no. million dollar lifetime deal that you that you're referring to is actually stocks and holdings in the match room in the zone. It's a hundred million. That that's what that is. It's not for my fights. It's not my future earnings. That that's not what that deal is about. So they gave it's him a hundred million dollars. It, it, it's and it's okay. stocks and earnings and distribution in the company. He bought into the company. He it, it's not it's not for my fights. That doesn't make any sense. You acting like this guy is just like a an artist that just been selling CDs out of his trunk. This guy already made fifty million dollars per fight. In one yeah. fight, why would I sign a lifetime deal of a hundred million dollars when I already made fifty million dollars in one fight? It doesn't make you any sense. You don't, you don't understand the business, then, man. You think nah, you nah, think you don't, you, you don't understand you think, the business? If you, think, er, if, you think, if you think everybody, if you think everybody seeing Anthony Joshua made fifty million dollars and Jerron Ennis just now walking over there, yeah, okay. Like convince convince anybody you want to that that that's a real thing. Ain't nobody Peace. sitting around. Ain't nobody sitting around. This man had to go to Saudi Arabia. You already told me uh, that uh, UK doing the same numbers as America. But for some reason, you got UK fans right now. I mean, UK fighters right now. You had a guy that was on Blue Blood Channel just a couple of days ago who's a UK fighter, one of the most popular UK fighters in the world right now. They asked him, hey, where you want to fight? Anywhere you want to go? Oh, I want to go to Vegas. M MGM Grand. Not uh Manchester, not the O2. Not Wembley, bro. That, that's, fine. That's, that's fine. That's fine and dandy. I'm just, I just had to. I'm just refuting oh, that. I mean, I'm, just, you, I'm just refuting. I'm just refuting your fallacy of saying no, that this man's signed a hundred million, because a hundred, a hundred million dollar lifetime deal. That is not true. You try to make that's, it seem that, like that's wrong. You try to make it seem like, bro. You try to make it seem like Joshua was at the level Ricky Hatton was when he fought uh Floyd Mayweather. What Obviously, part, what what I, what part what what part? Hold on, what part of this man made seventy million dollars to fight Andy Ruiz in a rematch. Don't you understand? Where's the money coming from? Where's the money coming from when he's getting? They pay. They pay. It does, look, Saudi Arabian business model is not like this. They don't care. They've been losing. They lost money on that other fight. They Do you did, not they know did, why Eddie Hearn is in Saudi Arabia? They're doing. The, Saudi Arabia is putting these fights on the, for publicity for their country to try to end the, end the stigmatism that's against their country. It's not to make pay. These guys are freaking billionaires, man. So, so like I said, do we go back and do your research? Seventy million. Seventy million. Okay, seventy million dollars to fight Andrew. That's what he ain't made. Seventy, $70, 70 million dollars. That's what he made, bro. Ain't nobody made seventy million. That's because yes, he did. Your... You know what? I ain't, I ain't gonna see the count other man because first of all, you don't see the contract. I didn't see the contract. I no, know. That's, what so I'm trying to tell you. that's not realistic. No athlete, he's not on the Forbes list, brother. He's not no top athlete. Ain't no soccer player in the world. Bro, but, 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 what, but what but what you saying, mate? You act like you you saying this man signed a hundred million dollar lifetime deal. You're trying to act like this nigga's Tiger Woods that, or something. And that's wrong, bro. Million? This nigga ain't bro, he Tiger did, Woods he, making seventy million. He did make se did, okay. Did he not just make fifty million dollars to fight to fight France or Ngano? Yes or no? Yeah, he did. Just. Okay, okay, fifty. Fifty million dollars. That you agree on that, right? Yes. I'm telling you for a fact. If you go back and do your research, you will see that Andy Ruiz got paid fourteen million dollars to fight Anthony Joshua in the rematch. You will also see that Anthony Joshua made seventy million dollars to fight 
Andy Ruiz in a rematch. Not telling you what I think. It's a fact. Go do the research. You don't want to believe it. Fine. That's on you, brother. I'm no, just telling no, no. you. Let's just, just say I believe that. Why hasn't anybody else jumped their ass in the ring and got that $14 million that Andy Ruiz got? Now, every time most people, when they fight Anthony Joshua, it's their biggest payday. Uh, Why rip. everybody ain't jumped their ass in the ring and got that 14 million that Joshua got because he got the plug. Uh, his pr promoter is putting all the fights on in Saudi Arabia. Well, so what's called uh, Francis Ngano did he got 20 million dollars. So Francis Ngano jumped in. He, he fought an MMA fighter who got a loss. He still got 20 million. He still got 20 million. Are we talking about competition? Or are we talking about money? you talking about money right now. So what? Which one is it? Competition or money? No. So right now, saying, right now we just we're discussing finances. No, and the finances saying, are that he got twenty million dollars. You're, you're saying that he jumped in the ring with Andrew Ruiz and made fourteen million dollars or whatever. Andrew Ruiz made fourteen million dollars. Yes. That's okay. A fact. Cool. So now I go back and I look at the uh, the Usyk fight and the um, the two Usyk fights. So they went Usyk. to the. They went, they went back to the O2, they went back to um the UK or whatever they was at, somewhere over there, in um for the Usi fight. Yep. So if they made $14 million against uh Andrew Ruiz, right. why would they go why would they go back and have the uh the Usi, the first Usi fight in uh UK? And Usi made a lot of money in that fight. No, Usi didn't make that much money in that fight. How much did he make? You think Usyk made the same amount of money in the second no. fight with Joshua he made in the first fight? I said, how much? I said, I asked you how much did he make? Since you know everything, I'm asking you how much did he make? I don't know how much he made. Okay, so, I, how, so I, if you don't know how much he made, how can you say it's not a lot of money? Because the shit was at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. They don't, you can't pay half, no, you can't pay no, uh, no, uh, contender or no B side fighter $14 million to fight in the UK. Everybody in the UK knows that. Sir, well, let's, let's, and let's the fight and Usyk, and Usyk ain't got no damn fans. They don't they, do people it. people let's, don't even know how to spell his name. Let's do a little research. Hold on one second. And then the second that. fight was in Saudi Arabia. So why they had the first fight in Saudi Arabia, but the I mean uh second fight in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia, but not the first one. And then how did did Jermaine Taylor make a million dollars? And let me know that because everybody get paid who Anthony Joshua fight. So in Gano, he got he got the same amount of experience that uh Jermaine Taylor, uh, Jermaine Franklin got. Because I, I know what this deal is. It's a lifetime deal. And he signed it in 2021. What happened in 2021 when Joshua signed this deal? Joshua lost to Usyk. Joshua knew he was going to lose to Usyk. Why he signed a lifetime deal around the same time he lost to Usyk? Do everybody know that? Nah, Zom couldn't knock out Parker. And Parker got knocked out twice. I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think John can knock out Andrew Ruiz right now. That's what I'm saying. A lot of these points ain't real, man. A lot of these points ain't real, brother. Everybody ain't getting paid. Like this man just said, Anthony Joshua made seventy million dollars. And everybody think that guys want to still fight in Vegas. We got guys in the UK saying, I want to fight in Vegas. Nobody's saying, hey, I want to go to Saudi Arabia. You got guys in America saying that. But 40 I mean, 70 million? Come on, man. You think Tyson Fury said, he knows that Joshua giving out that type of money. And he said, nah, I'd rather fight. I don't think these people understand what's going on for real. Joshua bring a lot more to the table, but it ain't that. He ain't making no stars. It ain't nobody, nobody uh, that Joshua fought that he didn't make a star, except the guys he lost to. The only people that became stars is the guys Joshua lost to, and they ain't that big anyway. That shows you how big you are. When you look, when somebody, when you lose to somebody, you figure out how big they are. When Joseph Park, when Wilder lost to Joseph Park, Joseph Park a star now. Everybody thinks Joseph Park a knockout artist. Everybody thinks Joseph Park a knockout artist now. And he get a lot of knockouts. Got knocked out and everything. 
I think that Joseph Parker fight gonna have a lot of people lose some money, bro. I mean that uh John fight. A dude who can last six rounds. I'm actually I'm actually gonna put everything uh I'm gonna put everything on that fight. I don't think people really see the the real truth behind these fights, man. Oh, down you left again. Hey. They're right there. Hey, delete that one. No, there you go. What's up, Eddie? Yeah, my fault. It got uh got connected, man. Hold on one second. Yes, yeah, so I did. Some, I did some research real quick. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, you good? You good? You good? It was on that twice. You good now? Can you hear me? Yeah, you was on that twice. You good? Oh, okay. Yeah, man. So it said it said Usyk made seventy five million dollars in that Anthony Joshua fight. Mm hmm. And it said Joshua made seventy five million. So both of them. So they split one hundred fifty million dollars. Who reported this? It's on the internet. They say Usyk made seventy five million dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you if you on, you can pull it up for yourself, man. I, I, at the end of the day, that's all we can do. We we we're not in the room with these guys. We're not in there, you know, looking at the contracts. The only thing we can do is pull stuff up off the internet. And, that, and that's Joshua all we can do. Usyk to make seventy five million dollars plus the bonus because sponsorships. That was the Saudi Arabia fight. I don't know which one it was. I don't know if it was the first one or the second one. I didn't know they got oh, this paid. Is, this, 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 is Saudi, money, this, this is Saudi Arabia for, fight. I don't think you understand what, we're saying, what I'm saying. You were saying the fights that was in. You're talking about Saudi Arabia fights. That's not breaking news, bro. We're talking about two different things right now. The only thing I'm saying, that, I don't think I'm, the only thing that I'm disputing is that he, didn't, he did not sign a $100 million deal for a no, lifetime we, deal. That's what I'm what we, what we were saying was... Oh, he definitely signed a hundred million dollar deal. Well, we, it wasn't we, for the, it wasn't for no fight because this this is what you said. If that was the case, he signed that in two two thousand twenty one. That's what you said. So that fight, that seventy five million dollars that Anthony Joshua made, you saying that all one all seventy five million dollars went to Eddie Hearn. That's what you're saying. Are you a fan of Derek Chisora? You know, you know anything. I'm saying you know who Derek Chisora is. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah. Do you know that Saudi Arabia had to pay for him to get on a car that uh Matron put together? But what that guy do? What are we talking about? We talking about money and stuff. We talking about money. I'm, I I asked you a question. I said you said that he signed a lifetime deal back in 2021. Mm -hmm. And I Usyk the Usyk fight was after 2021. So you're telling me that that 75 million dollars that Anthony Joshua made that he gave all that to Eddie Hearn? That's what you're telling me. That's what you told me. That any money think? that he makes goes to, goes to Eddie Hearn. That's what you who said. You, who you think working the deals out when they when guys like Al Heyman and all these people are doing deals? Who you think working the deals out? When okay. the, when when Javante oh. when, when, when Davis, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Uh, this, OG, this is real talk. When Javante Davis had made a hundred million dollars, right? I mean, uh, when they made a hundred million on that fight with Ryan Garcia last year, right? That was the biggest fight in boxing, right? Yeah, sold a hundred something, right? Mm-hmm. So you telling me Usyk them with no pay per views? Of course they got the Saudi situation, but we talking about the, the UK fights. You was talking about. See, you we talking about two different things. No, I, I don't think I'm not talking about. I don't think I'm talking about this one thing, one specific thing. No, I'm just, you, I'm, I don't you, care. But I don't think I'm disputing is a one a hundred million dollar lifetime lifetime uh, contract. That's what I'm disputing right there. That's what I'm disputing, which makes no sense because Canelo Alvarez signed a ten fight deal. For three hundred and thirty million dollars, you think Anthony Joshua is dumber than in Canelo Alvarez, a guy that found a ten fight deal for three hundred and thirty million dollars? You think he's going to take less money than that? That's all you I'm think, saying. Doesn't make any sense, bro. That's all I'm you, saying. You doesn't make any Canelo, sense. You're you, you telling me that Joshua doesn't is make making seventy? So you let me tell you something right now. I'm gonna tell you something right now. So you telling me Joshua getting seventy five million dollars to go in his pocket, right? You just seen it. Tyson Fury ain't never made $75 million in a fight. 
Mike Tyson ain't never made 75 million in a fight. Uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather ain't never made 75 million in a fight flat. Uh, all these fighters you can name. Conor McGregor, all these guys, $75 million. They ain't made not seven, 75 million in no fight. You do understand that, right? So when you say $75 million, that means this is the highest paid fight of all time. I have I have never heard nobody say, hey, man, this is the highest paid fight of all time. Have you seen anybody running around saying that's that, OG? The highest paid fight of all time was Floyd Mayweather with the pay-per-views. Exactly. I'm glad and, you and said actually, that. Actually, I think Floyd Mayweather had like a hundred hundred million dollar over hundred million dollar guarantee in that fight. Eddie, you know, you, bro, Eddie, you you seen when that uh Floyd Mayweather fight was, and, and I was in Georgia the same time around that fight. Eddie, you knew around that that around that time Floyd fought Pacquiao. Man, it was it was like it was it, it was. I ain't never seen that many cars on the street at night, man. Like you know yeah. what it looked like. You know what it looked like with somebody fighting a seventy five. A hundred and fifty million dollar fight. You know what that looked like, bro. I'm, I wasn't in Saudi Arabia. I don't know what they. I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you was in America and Floyd I, was fighting. I don't Pacquiao. know. I don't know. I don't know how they paying. I don't know what they paying. But we no. You we said know, but that's not the point. That's not the point. They, I'm, not Saudi. I'm not talking about Saudi. I'm talking about UK. I'm talking about the UK. You said why would you leave the UK when you can? Uh, why would you leave the UK when you can make the same amount of money in the UK? That you can't no, you can't make the, you can't make the same amount of money. Eddie, in the UK. you said that. You said that. You said why would why would uh Joshua leave the UK when he can make the same amount of money? You said the American dollars are just like the UK dollars, and no, they not. Wait. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, brother. He had to go to Saudi Arabia to get that bag. He's on a career yeah. signing a deal. Why would he sign a lifetime deal, a career long deal, if he's fight to fight basis? You know this, sir. You ain't got to be fight to fight, but you can you can be fight to fight basis. Everybody's fight to fight basis. Tyson Fury is fight to fight basis. Ennis is. I, I think oh, he gets, only thing. Only thing I'm disputing is hundred million dollars. I'm not. You you get you going. You you're chasing. You doing. You going all around. The only thing I'm saying is not a hundred million dollar lifetime deal. That's the only thing I'm saying. All the other and stuff I'm, pocket watching. I don't know what the man made. And, all I know is what's reporting on the internet. And I'm telling you that it's not a hundred million dollar lifetime. Trying to tell you that deal. Joshua had the same type of deal that Nike gave to LeBron. Well, LeBron had a, a lifetime deal with Nike. It was $100 million. I said around that time, why would he do a deal like that when I feel like he he, gonna, he can make over $100 million selling Nike? And people say, because well, he, he got his sales it. and all that. Why would he get $100 million off front when he going to get $100 million anyways? He LeBron James. He on TV every day. Ain't no, it ain't no – like, why would he sign – why would he lock himself in with a contract when t things change, you know that. Why wow, you ain't finna lock yourself down? You ain't even got a hundred million dollars. You know you ain't finna lock yourself down on no one contract, Eddie. Eddie, if you get seventy five million dollars a contract, would you set, sign a career long uh, deal, knowing that people nope. giving out seventy five million dollars? Nope. So come on, man, you can't make it make sense, brother. It, it's fluff. All these dudes putting out fake numbers now, and I'll get my ch channel shut down trying to explain that. But I'm trying to let you know that they not finna sit up here and say, um. That certain guys is really they not really paying in Saudi Arabia, they paying money like that. They are because you heard what they said about Tyson Fury. 10 million. If he don't fight the fight, he did you hear about that? Was that oh, Tyson yeah, Fury, I heard about you heard about if that. Tyson Fury don't fight him, he, he gotta pay 75 million dollars. I mean, he gotta pay 10 million dollars. Yeah, I heard about that. Ten million dollars. So in Saudi okay, Arabia, that, that's hold, real hold money. Hold on. Okay, now, this this is a hundred million dollar deal that you that that you was that you was referring to. I found it. The move the move means the end of Joshua's deal with Sky Sports, which has been placed throughout his professional career. The deal is reportedly worth one hundred million dollars a year, not lifetime, a year to the thirty two year old fighter. From Wofford, who has become global ambassador for the zone as well as special advisor to the group. I told you it's not a lifetime deal. It's $100 million a year deal. Do you know that that man gonna fight Tyson Fury in Saudi Arabia and not the UK? Not the UK? Hey, yeah, I don't the care fight. where they fight at, man. He's still getting paid. You, you don't matter where they fight at. You don't understand the point I'm talking about. His fight, Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn ain't. 
let me tell you something. Eddie Hearn ain't over there making putting no deals together to put seventy five million dollars in, in, in Anthony Joshua's pocket every time. Because Anthony Joshua, he ain't even doing bigger. It's more people. It's more people talking about Devin Haney around the world right now than they is talking about uh, uh, Anthony Joshua. And that's a fact. Because I announced his last fight. Don't nobody care. I mean, his next two fights. Don't nobody care about that. That for real. They don't really care it don't about matter, that. It don't matter what we care to me. He's not out out of Yeah, he getting paid, it's, but he, he getting paid. It but really it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't what we think because Eddie Hearn dad been doing deals, the same type of deals with a lot of people. Why you think it, uh UK boxing running the way it is right now? They got the whole network, the zone, all that stuff running around here. They built the whole network it's, off uh Anthony Joshua. Anthony it's Joshua, a, it's, a hundred, it's a hundred. It's a hundred million dollar per year deal. The whole per app, year. Anthony Joshua, a whole per app. year, per he year he, deal. It's a hundred million dollar per year deal with the zone. That's what he signed. Not so you think, lifetime. So that that will make him have that will make him have the biggest a deal in uh in, uh, in sports, right? Bro, I'm just. I mean, if you don't, I'm know, asking, you don't I'm believe, asking, if you, I'm asking. That will make him the most. Deal, I didn't. I didn't know oh, this is a hundred million dollar per year of deal. Time talking about it then. That's a waste of time. Because because it's a hundred million, hundred million dollar per year deal. It's a waste. So, it's a waste so, of so time if you about. so if you were referring a hundred a hundred million dollar lifetime, yeah, maybe a hundred million dollar lifetime per year deal, but it's not a hundred million dollars for the next ten years. That would that would equate to ten million dollars a year. Who does that? Nobody. So what? What guy know it's that hundred million dollar per year deal, man? What guy know that Anthony Joshua's opponent making seventy five million dollars? A fight, man, and he's saying, know "You know what? Hey, bro, Let me throw all the all, 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 all we can do is look at the internet, man. You, oh, you sitting there arguing is. about, we sitting there arguing about some millionaires, bro. This man oh, making money. This man, this man making a hundred million dollars, man. Man, hundred million dollar year per deal, bro. If you don't like it, it is what it is, man. You it ain't, it ain't about, it ain't about the it, deal. Hundred million dollar per year deal, man. It ain't about the deal, man. I think, I think you, you, you getting uh, away from the, the, the exact point, but." If you think nah, I'm it, just telling you that you're you, wrong, man. I'm just I'm just telling you that you're wrong. You right. Let's just say you are right. Let's just let's just say you are right. Information, bro. Let's just say you are right. Information. Let's just say you're right. If Anthony Joshua getting a hundred million dollars a year, America, American boxing ain't shit. So you're right. You're right. Yeah. I don't want to hear about nobody from America no more. That's why I don't even be reporting on it. If he getting a hundred million dollars a year for what he been putting on on his resume, again, not uh not being able to be the cruiserweight twice, yeah, he deserve everything he get. He the first black man I actually heard get a deal like that. So, for him not to be from America, yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, that, that's I, I right. I don't right. believe I don't you're believe right. this hundred million dollar deal is is no, right. all about this all about him boxing. There's other things involved, not just boxing. No, you're right. You know, you're right. If he getting if he getting a hundred million dollars for uh, a year for for the deal he got with the resume he got, yeah, that's why I, that's why I talk about boxing the way I do. So you're right. You're right. If that's going on in boxing for him. Yeah, I'm doing the right thing on this channel. I don't know what everybody else talking about, but he ain't he definitely ain't fought no hundred million dollars worth of nothing on his resume. Not no MMA fighter, uh, not these guys who ain't even good enough for U to call out Usyk and Fury. I mean, it ain't it ain't really that good no more in boxing to be honest. Hey, with but, me you know, you got you got to remember, man. Yeah, he Josh was not a star in the United States. Facts, but when he when he's over there. This guy's selling out arenas, man. 50, 70, 80, 90,000 people. If you just charge at 90,000 people, if you just charge $100 per ticket, and you know they're more than that, what's, I mean, what's 90,000 times 100? That's a lot of cash, bro. You know, I don't know what the exact math That might be 90 million. I don't know. I don't know. I don't break my calculator out or whatever, but that's a lot of money, man. And I don't, the dude gets, the dude got sponsorships and everything else, man. No, I believe the uh Saudi Arabia money is real. I'm talking about the UK money because what I'm trying to explain to everybody is they wouldn't save all their big fights for the UK. I mean for Saudi Arabia unless the money's not there. You know what I'm saying? That's what people don't have to realize. They have to get their money back from the money they have lost. The money that has been put into Canelo fights and stuff like that. The fights, the money they let they spent on Canelo, they have to go back and try to get through Joshua's situation. That's why Eddie yeah, Hearns in Saudi Arabia. I, Eddie Hearns in Saudi you, Arabia. You gotta, let, me, let me tell you what I let me tell you what, what Matt from is and his own is. It's a front for a crime syndicate. That's why it doesn't matter how much money they lose or make. Because they they use it to wash money and money laundry. 
That's what and it that, is. And that goes back to my point about Wilder. Dude, dude be hanging, dude be dude be let dudes be having organized crime syndicates set up fights. That's why when the fight, I'm I'm gonna be real with you. I thought Wilder, it looked like he wasn't gonna make it out the ring, period. With a gun. I thought somebody was gonna try to Mal Malcolm X him in the ring because I'm like, dang, so the dude who why they got the guy without the belt coming out last? When I seen that, I knew he was gonna lose. So I haven't, I haven't really, I, I didn't really have no kind of animosity towards him getting beat up or anything like that. Like, since, since I, was, since I was a child, you know what I'm saying, a guy like Rodney King getting beat up and everybody kind of making a big fuss about it. That's kind of normal to me. But the other way around now is, it's a certain guy. I mean, it always been, it always been some quicker stuff going on in boxing, man. Boxing always been mobbed up. Yeah, at the end of the day, and like I say, for the zone to keep losing money like they have been. The only explanation that I can come up with is that it is a money laundering company. It's a, it's a front for something else. There ain't no way in the world you can stay in business and continue to lose money like that. And now I think, and then another thing too, Eddie, they spent too much money on the Canelo situation. That Canelo oh, yeah. and Triple G situation, that thing that's crippled. They hadn't they had had recouped recoup none of that money, man. Because I was wondering around that time, I said, why are they dealing with Devin Haney? And you just signed Triple G and Canelo to all these deals. So why would you try to sign him? And that's around the time they try to do the same thing with Boots Ennis. And that's the point I'm trying to get everybody to make. Like, to be honest with you, Eddie, instead of trying to, I'm not trying to win an argument. I'm basically trying to tell everybody, if Boots Ennis ain't getting 75 million, Anthony Joshua ain't got nothing on his resume. He ain't got nothing on his resume to the point where he should be getting $100 million a year over no Spence. Uh, Spence, Spence has had bigger fights and big fights in UK. That's that fight Spence had with uh Kel Brook. That was a huge fight. I don't know if you remember that one, but yeah, I remember. yeah that was a huge fight. You remember how they were building up outside? Night? That was a huge fight. Like, to be honest with you, uh, uh, Eddie, I don't know if they had like an out, like you know, how they had the outside when they had all the fans outside. I don't know if they had something like that, uh, since then. So that's why I'm kind of like questioning a lot of things because I'm kind of like, okay, man, they kind of making these fighters in it. Over in the UK, mm -hmm. seem like a pick of uh Pavetkin fighting these guys like they can get you a hundred million dollars. But in, oh, in no, Saudi no, no. now Anthony, Anthony Joshua ain't he ain't made a hundred million dollars every time he fought. Like something when he fought, I think Jan, uh Franklin he got ten million dollars. So I, I'm not saying by you know that he every time he lays up he get fifty million dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's not yeah, yeah. That, that's the point yeah. I was kind of making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, saying the yeah. same thing. That's why I'm trying to explain yeah. it to you because um oh, I got yeah, ten million. Yeah, that sounds about right. But I yeah, think he got he, 10 million for Franklin. I think he got like 12, 12 or 15 million for, for Vecchin. You know, something I'm gonna like that. Because I'm going to tell you something else, too. He don't look like he's been enjoying himself lately. I don't like know even when he's not, I know, know that fool getting paid. I know that, man. Even when he got, I'm dead serious, man. Even when he knocked out um uh the dude Otto Wallen and then he knocked out uh Engano, you know, usually he'll be kind of like fired up, but he kind of just like. I know people was like, yeah, he's just cool like that. He ain't, he ain't got that. He, he he don't he don't really feel the same about the game like that. I feel like he feel like nah. he is a um uh, he got he got a lot of pressure on him when he stepped because you know without him actually being the the the, uh, the man at the forefront, that company ain't finna run the same without him. So he got a lot of pressure on him every time he stepped in the ring. I don't I don't know if he feel like he you know fight he, he shouldn't be fighting on under pressure to where the whole business is, un, is under him. Then you got your promoter every fight saying, "Oh, I'm nervous." You know, I don't know. So you know, what I'm saying, not even confident in you sometimes. Yeah. So uh, well, you know, that right there, that, 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 that weird out. Yeah, that's why. That's why I'm not explaining to retired. people. And I don't. I don't think the money is even at a problem right now. I think it's just overall his psyche and everything else is wore down. Like he's, it's a lot of guys like that. It's like whole bit. The heavyweight division has really carried these guys the last couple of years. We got the other fights right now, but. With Joshua and Fury and um and Wilder kind of making all the drama and everything over the last couple of years, that's actually kind of built up to where we at right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even with last it's year, time, it's time for these guys. You know, they they on their way out. You know, um, mm -hmm. Fury, Wilder, Joshua, them guys. You know, it's, it's time for a new crop of guys to come in. You know, they they on their way out, man. But at the end of the day, man, like you said, bro, man, this. The man probably just looking at himself like, shoot, man, when I was on top, everybody was praising me. And then when mm. you know, I got knocked off, everybody was down on me, talking bad about me, saying I wasn't this, saying I wasn't mm. that. So he probably just like, man, I don't even care what people think. Now I'm just going to get my bread. 
And and that's that's the only thing that's important to me is getting Ooh. my bread, man. Eddie just made a perfect point, my guy. Hey, Eddie just made a perfect point. We probably gonna end that on that one because and what Eddie just said, that make a whole lot of sense. Because even after the um, I don't know if you remember Eddie after uh Wilder had lost when they interviewed Eddie Hearn. They were saying, I don't know why everybody keep asking Joshua why he's uh not confident, why he don't got no uh why he don't feel like himself. And then no. and I'm like, I said, who questioned that he don't feel like himself? I was like, what? So then that's when I knew then I'm like, dang, they saying this back home, I guess, because you know Eddie and uh, Anthony oh, Joshua knocked him over here. So I'm like, they putting pressure on him like that. I think I think I thought he just got knocked out of Helena or something like that. That's when I knew then. Even though I mean, he'll accept, he'll accept the, the the praise from them now, he knew he yeah. knows now like they ain't all in on me like that. Well, no, I mean, you got you got to remember, man. I know I'm gonna let you go after this, but you got to remember, man. Uh, Joshua, just, you know, sometimes people put expectation on, and we and we do this in any sport. You see a guy that's big in basketball, friends. You see a guy that's big and tall. He got expectations, man. Mm -hmm. And as soon as he don't live up to the expectations, no, nah, man, this dude ain't this. He ain't that. You know. Same thing with him. The way to do, he big, strong, muscled mm -hmm. up. He's like, man, this dude should be a you know a champ. He looked like a champ. And then when he lost to Andy Ruiz, man, everybody, man, that man was the loneliest man on, on, on earth, man. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, they man. treated that man like like dog crap. You know, Wilder was rejoicing. He was happy. I look at it, I told you he wasn't no good, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. I mean, everybody was down on this guy, man. So now he back on top. He like, man, I remember how y'all treated me. You know what I'm saying? And now. I ain't worried about y'all. I'm gonna do what's right for me, because if I lose, it's gonna be the same thing. That's true. I ain't nobody. I'm a bum. I'm washed up, overrated. You know, you know how it is, man. Same thing they did to Wilder when he lost. Ah, oh, man, he ain't no good, man. You know, he washed and, up, one trick pony, everything. And I'm glad Eddie said that because Eddie kind of understands what I'm saying. Eddie gonna have a dis he gonna have a dis different opinion. That's not gonna uh, matter. But Eddie said a lot of facts in this. If everybody listened, especially what he been saying. But um, that's true though because that's kind of why I'm in that situation now, Eddie. Because um, the public still is kind of big on Wilder versus Joshua. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, one of them they ain't gonna let go. They want to see and that fight. Yeah, they want to see that fight bad, bro. I'm talking about bad, but um. I feel like if we don't kind of if we kind of tear those guys down on the way, it probably cannot happen. Or Joshua won't, won't be looked at the same because even though he won the last couple of fights, I don't think they look at him the same as he he can't could be looked at. You know what I'm saying? As far as before that yeah. Fury fight, because I think in, going into that Fury fight, if Fury fights good against Usyk, they're gonna have you know people gonna be present in the moment. They're gonna have Fury to favor. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, he'll be back on top then. He'll be back on top. Man, but I think the Daniel Dubois fight, that's supposed to happen in September. So I think with that fight, that's going to have enough buzz behind Joshua to the point where a lot of people in the U.K., you know, they got a nice little plan. They're going to have him fight a U.K. guy who's a top guy, get that win, and then he can ride that way right into um the Fury fight. Well, yeah, and, and the, the, shame, the, well, the shame is you know, if Wilder Joshua does happen, now I'm gonna keep it. You're not. You're not getting the best version of Wilder. I mean, I'm just. I'm not trying to downplay him. Mm -hmm. Just being. I'm just yeah. being honest, man. The man gonna yeah, he's be. Old, he's older now. He's older now. The man gonna be 39 years old. And then I didn't know Joshua was that old. Joshua about almost 37. I said, yeah, he's thir he 30. He's 34, I think. You know what I'm saying? So he's younger than younger than Wilder. But like I say, he's not gonna. He's not gonna have the same. He, I, I don't think whoever wins not gonna get as much credit. If yeah, it I don't like happen, that. It, it, it's a fight would have happened, you know, when it was supposed to happen. Yeah, you know, I don't you, like that. you know what I'm saying? Because if Joshua go out there and uh beat Wilder, they're gonna say, Well, Wilder was washed up, you know, a Tyson Fury, mm -hmm. you know, messed him up, or he wasn't the same guy. And the yeah. same thing, if you know if Wilder beat Joshua, well, you know, he wasn't that good anyway, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know how they always do they move the goal post, man. Yeah, they, they definitely gonna do that, bro. I I see that coming <laughs> all the way because you know. He's not really getting praise for um kind of the stuff he's doing now, working with um Fury's trainer. But I feel like um these next couple of months, we actually man, that next fight gonna be huge for Wilder though. Like I can't I can't disagree with you on that. Like well, it's a must win, man. It's a it's must a, win fight. Man, we gonna hey at this point right now, I'll to be honest with you, we're gonna find out who he is. 
Yeah, it's no. it's a must it's a must win fight. He got to look impressive. You if gotta look, look anything. If you look anything other than impressive, then people gonna be like, nah, it's, it, they're not gonna like his chances. Going to so be I, yeah, like I understand Anthony what you're Gotham. saying on that point. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like he gotta he gotta he, he gotta be serious around this time when he's stepping in. You stepping in this time when you just running around chilling and hanging out, you are gonna get dropped, man. And you gonna they, they gonna get your career ended. Cause John, he can still hit. Yeah, dude, big. He he got a fast left hand too, man. Man, that, hey, when I seen that dude, let me tell you how big John get. When I seen him standing next uh next to Joe Joyce, I thought Joe Joyce was small. Man, yeah, Joe Joyce is. huge. Joe Joyce bigger than Chazor. I'm like, man, this dude, that dude, John, he a big Chinese guy. That guy huge. Yeah, he like, gonna have to be careful with that guy, man. That dude got a sneaky left hand. It's quick too. And but the only thing about that, like I say, he don't have no stamina. So you know what I'm saying? If it turns into a firefight, both guys got the potential to knock each other out because that dude can't punch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for sure, for sure. I agree on that. Oh dang, oh, I was yeah. uh, Grinch. I'm finna uh, get up out of here though. Me and Eddie. Oh, okay, hey, hey, bro. What, what, what? Uh, what's your name again? I know, I know your name and your channel. Oh yeah, you can just call me. Uh, call me Jay, man. Jay. Okay, okay. Hey, man. Appreciate you having me, brother. Hey, I, oh, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share your channel, man. Hopefully, oh, yeah. some more people to you know stop by and, and chill with you, bro. Appreciate oh, yeah. it, man. I've seen you across uh in my chat uh, comments, Eddie. Appreciate that for the support, man. I, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But, uh, I, I definitely uh you know more than I do in this life, so I'm I'm definitely gonna lean on uh your age and ex ex experience. So that's definitely something I, I respect everything you uh your opinion and everything you. Oh no, you good, you good too, bro. You know you bring you bring some good facts and good points, man. Just keep keep doing what you're doing, brother. Appreciate that, man. You know it rough oh, yeah. on me out here. Oh, yeah. That's all right. You're you going to grow just one brick at a time, man. Yeah, appreciate that, man. Thank you for everything. All right, my brother. All right, you too. Yeah, Grinch, I will. Grinch, you want me to go in one minute, man, or you want me to get you later? I don't want to get you while I'm rusty, Grinch. I was going to get uh you a Debo on here. Yeah, Grinch, I will get you a deep ball here. I don't be doing that thing, like the talking thing, but I'm going to do it a lot more. You want me to get you on here next time, Grinch? Or you want me to get on here now, bro? I'll get you next time, man. I wasn't supposed to be on it. I was supposed to do like an hour. I'm gonna get you next time though. Next topic. Hey, what next topic you want me to tell you about? I mean, you wanted to be, and we can just uh, debate about that. Yeah, I got. I was. That's why I came on here early. I've been on here since like this morning. So yeah, I'm gonna definitely uh talk to y'all later, man. Hey, hit me up uh, next time, uh, uh, Grinch. I I do uh, I drop a link next time. You a Devo. I know Devo came back late. But appreciate it for the support, everybody, man. I'm going to probably do another uh, video tomorrow or something like that. But uh, that's all I got, though. Yeah, 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 you know. Yeah, I yeah, I don't like the debate, but I do it sometimes. Because, you know, it's hard to kind of get to the real nitty-gritty of everything. Usually debates take three or four hours, so I really, why I really don't like doing them. But yeah, some people like to voice their opinion. You know, this channel is not just for me, it's for everybody. So I'll definitely get everybody on here next time. Shout out to Go Good, man. Yeah, I ain't want to do a debate, but everybody kind of was looking for it. So yeah, Debo wanted to debate me before that. So I gotta I gotta send him a link, man. Uh next time I come on. I'm glad. Well, hopefully everybody learns something in the debate. That's what it's about. Uh, it's not a like what I had last time. It wasn't an article. It was more so a uh, like the website. The thing, the the article I had a couple of years ago. I don't really have it no more, but it's more more so the website. Oh no, Anthony Joshua, no. Nah. I mean, what 
I mean, what Eddie kind of Eddie kind of seen what I was saying on that. Me and Eddie agreed on that as far as the money. I knew what Eddie was talking about. Eddie was right about that. We actually were both right. Eddie was definitely right about the Saudi Arabia money. Now Eddie Eddie agreed on what I said. It was just two different things we was talking uh, saying. Now Eddie definitely right about the uh the seventy five million and everything like that. Because the seventy five million he reported was uh the Saudi Arabia uh seventy five million. So Eddie was definitely right about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was Gucci on that. Yeah, he definitely um was right about the seventy five million. But in the UK, the money kind of different. But Joshua eating in Saudi Arabia right now though. That's that's something I already knew though. He definitely eating. That's why a lot of people like tanking all these guys trying to go over there. That's a lot too much sauce though. I ain't want to give Eddie out all the sauce. Yeah, shout out to Eddie though, man. I definitely um uh, learned a lot of things talking to him today. Shout out to Go Good too, man. Yeah, I was on here too long, man. I know people be thinking I'm gonna be on here four or five hours all the time. Nah, I'm just trying to 